Hello everybody, how's it going? It's been a little while since I've been here for a stream. I missed my previous one, so apologies for that. And I almost, well, I did miss yesterday's one as well. And that one was totally unpredictable for me at least. Uh, so apologies for that. The previous one, I actually chose to miss it because I had a video out that same day for Satisfactory and I just felt, I don't know. <laughs> I just felt if I started streaming, it would have been before the video was like ready to go. Oh man, it's just getting dark, is it? It's turning into nighttime. Anyway, long story short, it just seemed like it was just better just to put the video out, and that way the stream wouldn't be, like, showing what it was already in the video, kind of. And uh, yesterday I just had a, a doctor's appointment just going for a bit too long. Uh, a lot longer than I thought. All good, though. All good now. And we're back. And we're live. So, today, um... I wanted to just show some of the stuff I've been working on a little bit, and then also we're going to go and continue, if you remember the previous stream, it was doing up the Crystal Oscillator Factory that I have. So, Crystal Oscillator Factory is changing from 60 oscillators per minute to 105 per minute, and basically we're going to make that happen. So the manufacturers are actually in place, I've done a little bit more since the previous stream, but it still has to be kind of activated and stuff. So on the right side of the screen we have the Oscillator Overview. Uh, so we want to kind of check the situation out. I haven't looked at the factory in a little while. Then we're going to do manufacturer logistics. So a lot of them are in place. They just need their belts fed. Power and activation. So we want to see those 105 per minute coming out at least. And then maybe update the train station if we have any time left. So yeah, that's going to be pretty much it. All right, just one thing. I wanted to turn up the audio on the game a bit. It's gone very quiet. There we go. All right. Excuse me. Okay, so the first thing is that um, I've put in, if you r recall from a previous video, I was doing the oil extraction up here in the northern part of the map for Big Shell. I've now outlined where the different struts are so we can kind of have a look at it from a, a bird's eye view. But also I've set up these oil extraction sites, and I'll talk about this maybe in the next time I do a video for it. But effectively, I've just gone ahead and blueprinted... Can we actually fly here? I think so. Yep. Just gone ahead and blueprinted a sort of a... the way I had mining enclosures before, but this one is an oil enclosure, I guess. So it's fully blueprintable, uh, just without the actual oil extractor in it. And uh, it's pretty simple, you know, nothing too crazy. Just, it's a nice way to just get these done uh, fast, because so many of them had to be built, so couldn't make them, like, all unique or anything. Um, and then I just used my sort of bridge to carry the pipeline all along underneath, feeding power along the way uh, into these different places, and then just joining the pipes into it when they're needed. It is not Monday. <laughs> it should be Monday, but yeah, I missed Monday, unfortunately. So I just mentioned that at the beginning, but just to reiterate, yeah, that was that was just my bad. I mean, I went, I had to go for an appointment somewhere at one o'clock, and I thought I'd be back by three. Three is the time I normally stream at. And uh, I wasn't back till like half four, and I just felt like I would kind of missed the, missed the window of opportunity for it. Uh, so I thought we streamed today, though. All right, so anyways, um, yep, just, so I decided to come out a bit further. I was told that there was oil out here, so I just went out a little further looking for it, grabbed it. We have a little extra oil then being fed along this pipeline and into one of the struts. Um, so that's just going to basically travel all along this bridge here. And it just continues on one pipe. It's 600 oil that'll be traveling along here, and then it merges with another pipeline to have two pipelines underneath. Both doing, I think one's 450 actually, and one's 600 going into strut F, which you can see there on the compass. Hey, Claustopher. About to be catching a live stream again, says Tiberius. Thank you very much. Yeah, good to be with you guys. I, I missed it. I don't like going so long without streaming. Have you gotten to. No, update 8. Yeah, the performance is still the same. So we're, I'm stuck on update 7. I, I don't mind though. I say stuck on it. I don't mind. The only time I mind is when... It, actually, you know what? I need to go the other way. So we're just going to go back off and go this way. Uh, the only thing that bothers me with it is I don't have nudging blueprints. And I've been using so much blueprints lately. And we're about to be using them even more. It's just going to be frustrating not being able to just lock them in place and look around it. To make sure they're in the, you know, the correct place, position. Morning, Matt. Yeah, a happy 4th of July, I guess, if anyone's in America. I know it'll be very early in morning for you guys. Uh, for me, 3 p.m. roughly at this time. And we'll just, uh, I'll just get in the car. Did I leave the car here? Oh yeah, it's there. Just hop in the car and then we'll kind of reiterate what we're going to be doing today. So there's not much else to show you, really, in this place that you wouldn't have seen already. You know, there's nothing up there anymore, uh, or at all, still. I've updated the piping a little bit in one of these struts pillars. And then, like I said, 
Oh, hello. I've gone out and collected oil and like brought it along these pipelines uh, to clean it up. So previously I had it looking a little different. I just wasn't happy with how it looked in the video. Now I think it looks a lot better. So we have the, the unified bridge platforms and then we have the oil the oil enclosures. I really need to give it a proper name. Oil enclosures, we'll just call it that. The oil, oil enclosures and the bridge platforms are all connected together now and they feed into the struts properly. So that makes things look a lot better. Yeah, so it's just these things. So the, you'll just see these over and over again. One of them's there in the blueprint designer uh, where I first made it, I guess. And uh, yeah, they. I feel like they look fairly good and they kind of hide the pipes nicely. And then I effectively just cut down any trees that were in the way of the actual bridges themselves. But I tried to let trees spill over a little bit every now and then to make it look kind of nice. So this is the main strut, I suppose, strut A, which carries the pipes up. So we have the two giant pipelines going in here. And it's actually nighttime, so they should be sort of lit, yeah. So this is what I did in the previous episode. We have all these pumps in place, we have all the pipes in place, and now I've got a sort of a generic sort of layout just letting me know what they're going to be carrying. So we have three water, three water, and three oil. Uh, that's at least the plan. I haven't grabbed any of the water yet, so we just have uh, the oil laid out there on the bottom, and the same goes for on this side as well. Although the numbers of this aren't probably super accurate yet. Oh no, I think they... Oh yeah, 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 it's water there. That's the confusing bit. So 600, 600, and then 450 on this one. And that's the sitch. So maybe we'll just fly up and I'll show you what it kind of looks like up at the top. Huge hello, hello, angry pacifist. Looking so good. Thank you. Hey, Mezar. And hello from Austria, Belgium. Wow. People all over the world. Whoops, about to hit my head off the thing while reading chat. Yeah, so now the pipes kind of come up this way. This is how I've got them fed up. So I think it looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. And I was going to extend the support pillar just further up. Just mostly for aesthetics. So this is where I've sort of left off for the next proper video episode, right? Not live stream. I'll be dividing up these pipes into buffers. This is strut A. So this is where plastic gets made. It's where all the oil gets used. Uh, at least that's the idea. So all the oil kind of gets handled in here. And uh, plastic gets resent back out this way onto those belts. Now there's pipes there because initially the original plan was to bring oil into this place from the core, but instead we've changed it so that oil comes up from this place. So what these pipes are going to be doing is transporting water instead. So water wasn't really ever meant to come into this place. This doesn't need it for anything. Uh, but because all the pipes are now localized together, the water is going to come up this way. We're going to separate it out and send it on that bridge, that bridge, and that bridge because it's actually needed in all three places. So. It'll work out really nicely after a while. All right. Uh, so yeah, just to catch up again on what we're going to be doing today. So the plan is for updating the... So I'm not going to be fixated up here for much longer. I just wanted to show a little bit of what I've done. But the plan now is to go down to the Crystal Oscillator Factory. If you remember, when we cut off the Computer Factory my radio control units stopped working because they used to get delivered. Computers used to get delivered here. And then for the build for supercomputers, the idea is that we pull in crystal oscillators, 80 per minute. I only make 60. We have to bring that number up. A lot of the legwork's already been done on the previous stream of mine. So we just have to finish what we started, really. All right, smooth. <laughs> Forgot that that was like this the floor of the hex that we're under. Anyway, guy, right, please get a shout out, Darcy Ord. Yeah, absolutely. Shout out, <laughs> shout out to Darcy. All right, let's uh, head on over. I can show you actually one last little area that I thought might be kind of interesting really quickly. So I spent a lot of time just uh, trying to hide away all these pipes and make them look somewhat more natural. So I'm pretty happy with how that looks. Um, but we need to head over this way as well. This is on the way to where we're going anyway. And then we can get started properly. Have many of you guys been opt- have you opted into update 8 and is it working for you? I know some people, it, the performance is fine but they feel like it's a little buggy anyway so they don't really use it. 
But for me, yeah, it still runs really badly. I've tried a lot of different things people have suggested, but nothing seems to be working for me. Yeah, so basically this is the situation here. So I've got an, another oil extractor and oil enclosure right there. But then I had to like kind of build this odd stair well configuration to kind of get up to this bit. So I'm actually pretty happy with how it looks. It is a little strange, but the pipeline just travels down then through these floor holes. That continues over from the two oil deposits that are out this way. So I like the look of that. I think it's kind of cool. I think it's fairly elegant. Oh yeah, and I thought this was kind of a nice touch, if I do say so myself. But yeah, just building around, trying to keep the vegetation there. This tree is connected to... It actually would destroy the three other kind of trees. It's all connected. That the, the roots are all one. So I really didn't want to get rid of it because I just thought it looks nice, you know? So I was like, oh, I'll just build around it then. And that can kind of look natural because it does just come through the actual scaffolding. So it's kind of cool. And then we just have two more enclosures up here. All powered, all working, all good. Uh, everything's just stalled at the moment though because there's nowhere for the oil to go just yet. All right, so that's pretty much it. Yeah, update eight is a bit laggy. Turning on Lumen brings my PC to a standstill. So the frustrating thing for me is that um, I can turn on Lumen or turn it off and I don't get any frame rate change. <laughs> I can turn on and off TSR, no frame rate change. It's just the game running bad. The, my save file is like running bad. But I don't want to go on about it too much because we talked about it a lot last time. Um, but yeah, it's funny just because it doesn't matter. Lowest preset, no global, global illumination. And I get 20 FPS. Turn it all on, get 20 FPS. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It's just like decided that it's not going to run well. All right, so this is the Crystal Oscillator Factory. I'll just remind people of what's changed here because you may not have either seen the last stream or don't think I actually covered it in the previous video either. I'm on update 8, but if I move across the map at any high rate of speed, there's a lot of lag. My PC isn't maxed when running the game either, so there's something with the game. Hmm. Yeah, I can play a new a new save at like 180 FPS, all maxed out graphics and run around just fine. But once I start adding a lot to the world, it does take a lot. It takes quite a few machines before anything is noticeable, but then it starts to slow down quite significantly. All right, so this is what we added on the previous stream. So before all of this, before this supercomputer factory, this place, sorry. This place made 60 crystal oscillators per minute. But in the previous stream, we built out uh, several more rows of refineries to add to the... You know, basically to add to the volume of stuff we make here. So I haven't really tucked it away and made it look too nice. I did finish off the wall here, though. We expanded this out. So previously, we used to only come out to about... Yeah, where you can see the um, modern rail end. So that's where we used to come out. So all of these are new machines. The black ones, I guess. Yeah, because they haven't been painted yet either. They don't have any signs either. Anyway, so that's all extended out and it's looking a little bit better now because the windows are back on. So pretty happy with that. Everything's piped, got its water, got its logistics going. So I need to just kind of have a look around, see what needs to be done here. So that's why I said oscillator overview is the first kind of thing we need to do. I'm noticing as well that with the stream, the game does lag as well. So I'm just apparently not cut out for it anymore with this PC, even though it's pretty much top of the line. But I think my CPU is just having issues, kind of doing different things. I've got a good CPU though, but I don't know. Anyways. So yeah, these are the extra water extractors that we put into place, so that's all good. I don't think I needed to do any more of those. Just check over here for a second. Uh, running 8 here, all... But all bat, the all but the odd stutter, like autosave running fine. Oh, that's good. Capped to 60, mainly to stop my GP running at 99. Mm -hmm. It lags a lot, but it's the same with update 7 since my laptop is a potato. <laughs> Lumen offers it like to see what I'm doing. Yeah, I kind of, I like Lumen. I think it's kind of cool. It encourages you to actually use, use lights, I guess. But I think they need to add more lights to the game. My only complaint with the lighting is just I just don't know why there isn't like smaller lights they're just massive everything is like huge in the game <laughs> I'd love more point lights just similar to like you know you know the way people are like faking it with like the little LED signs these kind of things like just more like that would be nice that are that are actual lights not just screen space reflections 
Alright, so, anyways, so this place is getting its Kateria more. Yeah, that was the other thing we did. We buffed the Kateria more that was coming from here. We added Mark III Miners for the first time. So that should be good, too. So I'm just trying to assess what needs to be done. I think we just actually can get pretty much started on... Oh, yeah, and that's what I did. In between episodes, I added another tier, <laughs> another whole floor of constructors. So I basically duplicated what was going on down here, just stacked them. And, uh... Basically just added another line, you know, just added a second line just feeding all these. So these seem to be all working just fine. And they're making AI limiters upstairs. Uh, so yeah, I guess we'll go back upstairs and we'll get building. So next up for me then is going to be really doing the manufacturer logistics and making sure everything is getting its stuff. So assembly is the same situation and now it has a wall on it in this place. And I just added another floor of the same type of machines and two rows of everything instead of just one row. So it used to just be one row, now it's two, and they're all making AI limiters, but the AI limiters all feed onto one belt. So these ones are coming down this way, and then going down this way, and then out. But I'm still only consuming 60, so now we make 105, so they're just backed up. So all working well, I think. There we go. Yeah, this is the area I wanted to get to. So I had to add a second line of, of quartz crystal. Actually, that's something I haven't caught up on yet. We need to make more quartz crystal, so that'll be something. Um, and that's going upstairs. All right, so yeah, I'm just, just looking around just to assess it. I think I've got it now. I think we know what's going on, or I do anyway. Uh, I think the signs don't emit real light. It's just visual. It's true, but in update 8, they they sort of do. It's hard to explain, but you can put it down and it'll actually seemingly light the area around it. It looks quite nice, but I think it's a it's a global illumination. It's a trick. It's like superimposing the light onto it, knowing where it's coming from. But it's, yeah, basically taking what's called screen space reflections and adding it into the world. And that's what Lumen is doing, basically. I have to go up another floor. So we got to build this. That's what I have to do now. Big logistics floor. So wrap yourselves in because we're going to get pretty heavy with the belts. These are all the manufacturers doing the regular crystal oscillators. These are all the new ones that are hooked up to power and they're all in place. They have the right spacing, but they haven't been fed anything yet. So that's what we got to do today is hook all these bad boys up. And I think they can all be hooked up from pretty much like one line. So it shouldn't be too bad. I think so, anyway. What do we have? What's the one that consumes the most? 18.75. And if I was just to quickly have a look. Yeah, my frame rate's always bad. Specifically in this factory is the worst one because I'm between two biomes. So it's like constantly loading stuff in and out. The frame rate goes really bad in this area. Quite, quite frequently. But in my fused frame factory, which is a far more complex factory, it's actually totally fine. These guys not have power. No, they don't. Not bad. Wondering why I couldn't fly here. There we go. Alright, so 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. So 24 times, what was it, 18, I think? And that's what we got. So yeah, so one belt will be able to take everything. Great, so that makes life a lot easier when doing the logistics downstairs. Okay, so yeah, let's get to it. By the way, I'm from Australia, Darcy. Hey, that's cool. I've never been. My cousin lived out there for quite a long time. She loved it. Obviously, it's a massive place. I, I couldn't even tell you where she was. I think she was in Brisbane, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Is there any way to know when you're building over a biome border? No. Unfortunately not. But in the next update, there will be no biome borders. Uh... Knockout round to lighting, only had the game a month. Yeah. That's true, actually. It's a good point. You don't even unlock lighting till later. Hey, CED TV. Do you watch Formula 1? No, I don't. I'm really boring. All I You can talk to me forever about games, but I don't know anything about sports or very limited knowledge on movies and TV even. It's all just games for me. <laughs> all right. So this is what we need. Manufacturer splitter arrangement. And we'll just lay them out the same. So as long as they're in the in line, I think 
Can I actually fly? That'd be nice. Yeah. Should be easy enough, actually. So we just line it right up till we get that green line. And then it's one, two, three. I think it's three. Let's just make sure that one line is right, and then we can do the rest. Don't know why that's got a Mark 5. That seems overkill. It should be Mark 1. So that's the output of these ones. Yeah, okay. Just making sure. Oh no, looks like I was off. Oh hey, yeah, that's strange. I wonder why I got that green line then. Whoops. This is why oh, this is why it's so annoying not being on the new update because it's like, ah, uh, blueprints are a pain. You can't mass dismantle them. That's why we gotta get our placement right the first time and then they all kind of line up after that at least. I'll just wait for that autosave. All right, um, it's pretty cool. I'm in Ballarat. I recently went to Melbourne and it wasn't my style because I live in the country. I heard that. I grew up in a really, really rural place in Ireland. What are my favorite games? Um, well, at the moment, I, I like all, like so many different types of games. Um, like my favorite games of all time. I think people ask me that almost every time I stream. But basically, it's a cross of things. So Rome Total War is one of my favorite games ever. The Last of Us, the first Last of Us, one of my favorite games ever. Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater. One of my favorite Metal Gear games. Love Final Fantasy. The old Final Fantasies anyway. Final Fantasy 7 specifically. Also really like 9. And I like 10. Which is a controversial opinion. So you know. Those would be some of my favorites. Lately I've been playing games that I really enjoy though as well. Like Anno 1800 is one of my favorite more modern games. I really like Satisfactory. Obviously. Um, I'm playing a game right now. I'm playing Octopath Traveler 2. And I think that's for me probably my game of the year. I just love it. So where... Yeah, so I have a green line there. How is this not lined up then? These are lined up with each other, right? So weird. Maybe it's giving me a green... Oh, there's multiple green lines. That's why. So I'm looking for that one. Okay. Just need to keep that relatively in position. <laughs> and then I need to bring this over. And then it's one, two, three. Okay. That should be it. We'll just grab an elevator. Just make sure these are lined up. Good thing I made sure it was lined up. Comes from a lot of experience of putting so many things down before realizing nothing is lined up. All right. So now that that's aligned, it should be easy enough to do the rest. So we just line up with that one. And go this direction and bring it towards me until we get our line there. Okay. Uh, my closest neighbor is half a mile away. Oh, <laughs> wow. Living out in the middle of nowhere has its perks. I personally would rather living in a city. I feel like you always want what you don't have. I thought the same for a long time, but now I've had enough. I never lived in a city, to be fair, but I lived in a built-up town. And um, I'm eager to get back, you know, to the countryside to some extent. All right, good. We are lined up. So let's just pop all these things in then. What I like about your content is after school I can chill and watch your videos. Yeah, a lot of people like to pop it on while they're playing games as well. I think it's good side content. <laughs> um, people say it's very chill, so that's nice. I, think I consider it a good compliment. These are all Mark V, are they? Whoops. Yeah, I think if you're playing... I'm doing a City Skyline series at the moment. You know, it's a perfect companion to that. Or Anno, or this kind of game where there's a lot of, like, building and things can just take a lot of time. I think it's good to have a little buddy with you, talking talking you through it. And every now and then you gleam a few ideas and stuff. And you use some of it. Then other times you get mad and say, why is he doing that? Doesn't he know that this doesn't work or there's a better recipe or something, something, something? <laughs> Oh, there's so many of these to do. <laughs> We're going to be here for quite a while. But it's got to be done. I hope you reach 100k because your videos are fun. Thank you. Yeah, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Um, but yeah, we just I just passed 80,000. So 
I put music up when I play the game. Yeah, I often listen to podcasts, uh, or I watch Twitch streams when I'm doing games like this. Closest neighbor is half a mile away? That's too close for me. <laughs> yeah, I say I grew up in a rural place, but we I lived in a village. It wasn't like one house in the middle of nowhere. It wasn't that extreme. It wasn't that far off. I went to school, as I've mentioned before, with seven people in my class, my year. And one of them left in the last year, so we were down to six. All right, so we just got to do the next year. Oh, so many rows, but we, it's got to be done. All right, pull this towards me. At least I got the formula now, and I know it's the second green line, not the first. But not that one, but that one. And then it has to go one, two, three. And then we just come along here. Get the second green line. All right, should be lined up nice and smooth, nice and quick. Looks good. Um, I watched the series. Oh, congrats. Thank you very much. Yeah, appreciate it. Hey, from Norway, do you play video games in your spare time, not recording? Yeah, so these games that I've chosen to become a content creator for take an extraordinary amount of time even when I'm not recording them, right? Because I try to do a lot of planning and put stuff down in between episodes. And then you're all often just competing against... Like, you want to make sure things look good and be doing something original. So it's not just like taking the quickest way to build something, you try to do it in a nice way. Um, so it leaves me very little time, generally speaking, to play games uh, not for work. But I've actually, as you can imagine, someone who's a bit more maybe data-driven, I made an Excel sheet to track all the games I've played this year, so I can show you those if you want. Um, but yeah, at the moment, I've been not playing too many things. I've really just been playing Octopath Traveler 2. I'm also trying to do something where I really just focus on one game at a time. Because it's easy to see a Steam sale and buy like 10 games for five, fifteen dollars or something like that. You know, I was going to say five dollars each or something, or fifty dollars in total. And then you end up playing like one or two of them where you play bits of them and stuff like that. So I, I just feel like it's real wasteful doing that. I want to be more meaningful with the games I play because my time is becoming more limited. Um, so I heard really good things about Octopath Traveler. I'm a big fan of old school Final Fantasy games. I think the game looks beautiful. I played a little bit of the first one and I heard the games aren't really connected. So you can just kind of start it whenever. And I'm loving it. It's easily like game of the year for me. So I'm playing it on a combination of Steam Deck and also just on my... PC, but on my PC I play it through uh, into my living room. So I just have a, a controller, I flick a switch, my HDMI goes into my living room TV, and uh, bada bing bada boom, I'm sitting in there with a controller wirelessly playing Octopath. It's awesome. So I'm really loving it. I'm about 30 hours in at the moment, 35 maybe, and I just think it's great. It just has me smiling from ear to ear, and I, I didn't never really thought a game like that would do that for me because I'm a little bit of a graphics snob. I mean, it does look really, really good. But I kind of never really thought like a 2D game would get across like the range of storytelling that you could get in a full 3D game. But it really does, at least for me. Because I think it's probably because it's also really well voice acted. That probably helps. Anyway, bit of a digression there. I spent a couple hours yesterday. Oh, I just realized I'm doing something wrong. So easy to get distracted. I forgot to nudge them over. Close one there. Uh, there's a lot of upsides and downsides about living in the country, but as you get a lot of space, you can get a bigger house. Downsides, all the basic needs are far away. Yeah, a lot more burglaries, apparently, in the country. Oh, I don't know about every every country specifically, but in Ireland, apparently, there's a lot more robberies and stuff if you're living in the country. And there is if you're in a town, because people can kind of get in, get out, get away with it. Less surveillance and stuff. My parents live in the country now, and they're always really worried about that, and people... Basically, almost every house around them has been robbed. They're really lucky at the moment. Anyway, that's what I do. Jump from game to game. Yeah, look, there's no, you know, each to their own. But I feel like... I feel like you'd get better enjoyment from actually finishing things. Unless, obviously, if you just do not like it. If you're playing it for a while and you're like, look, this just isn't speaking to me. That's obviously fine. But I do kind of feel like there's something to be said about seeing something through to the end, you know? 
Um, so I got a PlayStation 5 maybe a year ago now, actually, quite a while ago. And uh, every game I'm playing on that, I'm getting a platinum trophy in. I'm just going to like do every, like get 100% and be really deliberate with it and only play the games that really speak to me there. And just, yeah, manage my time a bit better. I'm loving it. It's so much more fun to play that way. At least for me. And then I have to choose a game based on, like, what I think. Do I really want... Like, is this really something I'm really looking forward to? If not, I should play something else that I am, you know? Because there's so many games that I still haven't got to that are on my backlog for the PS5 that are late-gen PS4 games, uh, such as Ghost of Tsushima. Fuck, I knew this was going to be off. I saw that one being off. This one's on, though. This is correct. Okay, not that bad. Just one of them's off. Well, I need update 8. I need it badly. Anyway, message retracted. Sorry, I didn't see that. Is the it is the opposite in Australia? <laughs> Update still doesn't work for you. The updates. Uh, no. My last stream. They haven't updated it since my last stream. I've gone on holiday. That's what I said last time. I was like, yeah, there's not going to be any more updates for a while, so it is what it is. <laughs> uh, but no, it does not work for me yet. Same issue. I don't know, actually. I haven't checked, but I don't know if my issue was ever upvoted. I might go check that, actually, really quickly. So in the last video I did, I told people that I posted the satis like the, the specific bug report in the Q&A site for Satisfactory. I don't know if anyone went to upvote it on my behalf, or if people have the same issue or not. But hopefully they'll see it when they get back. It's a real shame. I've taken, um, I'd say my viewership is halved pretty much since the update. Which is uh, pretty much almost the opposite of what I thought would happen. Because I assumed, obviously, oh, if I go over to update 8, and I'm there with it day 1, talking through some of the features, you know, get a little boost of traffic, maybe. But unfortunately, it doesn't work for me, and it caused issues, and it took me a while, and I missed an episode, and now, it's, I gotta say, this series is kind of struggling a bit. Um, it's kind of hard to justify putting so much time into an episode. And the, the issue is, you gotta put more and more time into it the further in we go. And less and less people are sticking around the further we go. So it makes it really like a real problem. <laughs> so I'm trying to think of ways to keep going because I do not want to stop, obviously, before hitting the end. Um, I'm just trying to look to re see really quickly. Let's see. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's got 12 upvotes. Mm. Yep, it's just got 12 upvotes. One person commented on it 25 minutes ago, actually, and says they have the same issue, but nothing else. So, yeah, I don't know. Alright, I was just checking that really quickly in the background there. <laughs> what music do you listen to? Again, um, not to be a complete loser. What the hell is wrong with me, dude? I can't seem to get this to line up. <laughs> it's like the fourth time putting it down. Uh, I just listen to video game soundtracks or movie soundtracks. I don't know why that is. It's just what I do. I actually just recently went and saw Hans Zimmer Live. My girlfriend, for my 30th birthday back in September, um, booked tickets to go see Hans Zimmer Live. I was kind of skeptical about the idea of going to see something like that, to be perfectly honest. See, I'm getting a green line here and here, you know, so it's a little tricky to know which one's the right one all the time so that's why it's been going in the wrong position anyway i uh, went to see Hans Zimmer live love Hans Zimmer it was awesome it was such a an, uh, probably my favorite concert almost ever <laughs> it was really really good so loved it would definitely do it again or would recommend it to anyone who is interested sometimes my mouse does this one sec there we go all right don't worry i'll stay in your channel to the end of time <laughs> heard that before <laughs> hey no it's all good you guys have all showed up don't worry about it if you're hearing this you've showed up that's all that matters <laughs> 
even if you're watching it in the VOD later on, you know? I was just lamenting on the fact that the views just seem to be dropping significantly. Like, if you just look at the satisfactory playlist, you can see it used to be about 20,000 views on a video after about a week. Now it's about six. So, 6,000 views. I don't know. Might be like $15 or something. Not much. It's just, it's a little difficult to justify it sometimes, but we'll keep going. The absolute worst case would be if it got much worse than that, then I would probably just really speed through the rest of the series and just wrap it up. Uh, but maybe start a new one or something in the future when the game runs good again. For me, anyway. Alright, just two more rows to go. Alright, so I can remember where that needs to be. I, it's easier probably to line it up this way, I think. I think there? It's so hard to know, but I think there. Oh my god. I didn't get a green line, actually, so I should have known better. Anyway, by the way, things on the channel are great, just FYI. I don't mean to sound doom, doom and gloom. And I really love the game, but I'm not burning out in the game or anything like that. Just need to find a way to get more people to watch me. <laughs> Alright, so... That's the line we need. Is it? I don't know. It doesn't look like it. Is this lined up? God, if only uh, there was a way to nudge this into position. <laughs> Actually, just don't. I'll just have to trial and error it. So, one, two, three. So that's three. And then that's the line there, I think. It looks like that's too close to me. But we'll go with this one as a guess. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, it's so driving me crazy. It's so fucking annoying. <laughs> Building in 3D. Whose idea was that? Uh, it is the voice that keeps some of us. <laughs> yeah. How many people have make it this far on YouTube? No, that's true. I know, well, actually, it's almost like I just don't want to let people down by not finishing something. That's more than... I, I don't know, actually. I actually genuinely do not know anymore how to line this up, because it's just not... When it is lined up, I'm not getting a green line, so I'm just seriously doubting it. That looks lined up to me. It's almost like... <laughs> the the floor holes are too spaced out or something. Are they? No. It can't be. <laughs> it wouldn't make any sense. It's got to be there, right? That's it. It's got to be. And then it was just in over the edge of the tile. I think there? I think that's it. Alright. From there it should be easier. Now I can always know where to line it up with. Alright, so we just look at the green line on the right and we know it's lined up, so now we can just space it out ourselves. It's so funny how there the one on the far left just does not look like it's lined up with that floor hole. But it apparently is. You know? <laughs> Isn't perspective crazy? Uh, hey, Lady Ha! Huh? Just remember where a snackable pole should... Yeah, I was trying to do that. I was trying to do that, but it was just hard to see, because if I backed off to here, it was just it was just a little difficult to see, but I was trying to remember. I said it was just one over from the edge. I was actually trying that. Oh well. Anyway, is that the last one? It's always... Uh... No, there's one more to go. Okay, one more after that. 
To be fair, at least thanks to blueprints, we're still putting these down way faster than if, if we didn't have them, so... Count our blessings with that. Alright, let's join these up. Okay, one row to go, but we need to also just link these guys together. Uh, anyway, sorry, uh, your stream got 100 people watching. Yeah, we used to get 200, <laughs> not to be super negative. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know, when you do this job full time, it's a little, you can't just compare yourself to people that don't make it or whatever. You gotta kind of compare yourself to the base level of being able to be, you know, make a uh, living wage. But yeah. Anyway, let's move off the topic because it just sounds like I'm complaining. I I'm actually very happy with how generally everything is going on the channel, especially. Um, I was just saying, like, it's a little difficult going further and further into a series knowing it's going to take more and more time. It's like the graph of time demand is going up and the graph of return in views is going down. So it's, like, it's just difficult, you know, that's all. Great to catch the stream. Hope you're doing well. I am. I'm actually doing very well. Thank you. And you too. Hope you're doing well. Alright, we got our last row of machines to be added in here. And then I can... Oh, we're actually short now on Alclad. Alright, we can go out and get some. I think there's some just down here. Oh, not from that edge. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like, if I was facing the other side, I'd be able to see things a bit easier. Yeah, that actually makes sense. <laughs> I'm looking into an area where I can't see the other machines. There we go. There's not much. It might be enough. If not, we'll have to just make a quick run. Yeah, let's just, just make a really quick run. I could just do this quickly. Just get back over to my war chest over that way towards the big shell area. Uh, perhaps try diverging into a blueprint tutorial. Nah, yeah, I'm just probably not going to do that. Because um, those videos would take quite a long time as well. You're right, though. You might... So basically, I used to do edited most of my content back in the day. I have another channel with 120,000 subs. Um, and it did reviews and guides for different games. Anno and a few other games. And um, guides actually do really well. Not many people subscribe for guides. Usually people look up a guide and then they move on with their life. Um, but yeah, I'd have guides with hundreds of thousands of views. I have a guide with nearly a million views. So they work, but I feel like they are not good for building an audience, at least in my opinion. Unless you are literally built for one game, like your channel is built for one game. And mine just isn't. I, I don't want it to be, personally. Um, hey, Sneedler. Thank you very much for the super chat. And they say, Happy Independence Day from the US of A. Can't watch the stream today, but I'll watch tomorrow while I grind out the new Deep Rock season. Oh, nice. Deep Rock Galactic. Awesome game. Haven't played it in a while, actually. So, yeah. I'd like to go back to it. Uh, the problem is I have no friends. Uh, is that the Metal Gear Solid 2 platforms? It is indeed. Big shell. It's late night in Vietnam. Basically what I'm saying, you look at this from the side, you need to look at it from the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I understand. It's midnight in Australia. Yeah. I do it at 3 p.m. my time because it seems like it's kind of in the middle of everyone's time zones, if that makes sense. You know, it's like a little earlier for America, but it's a little... And obviously, yeah, it's like a little later, I guess, for the further east you go. I don't know. Well, the further east you go, it's, ev it's still ultimately going to be earlier from them. I guess it's later for Australians, maybe. Anyway, um, let's see... Oh, the, oh yeah, I came here to actually get stuff. I <laughs> forgot what I was here for. Uh, let's go grab the... Oh no. There it is. Yes, good. I just needed some extra Alclad. I was a little short. Just take it all. Why not? How much iron plates do I have? 
Yeah, it's got loads. Ah, uh, we can always take a tiny bit more. All right. Just joined. Hey, Swifty boy. It does get a bit harder the more you get into the game for sure, but it's fun. Oh, yeah. No, in terms of the game, I'm loving it. I was just c kind of complaining about um, YouTube stuff, but it, it's totally fine. I don't want to be complaining. Um, but, yeah, I, I actually like the increased complexity. I'm really looking forward to getting into nuclear nuclear stuff. I think it's going to be super fun. I'm a little nervous about it because people have warned me so much about how it can kind of go wrong, how you can mess it up. So I feel like I've done enough research where I know what I'm going to be doing now. Uh, the game gets as hard as it does get complex. What I've always been told by people who've played a lot of Satisfactory is take your time. Yeah, exactly. That's what I tell people. If you just break it down into like smaller manageable tasks, you won't get overwhelmed. And if you try to vary what you're doing a bit, um, I mean, ultimately, it's a game where you're supposed to be having fun. Some people only look at the goal, but you're supposed to be having fun while building and figuring things out. That's part of it. So if people just get stressed out or they look at those things as, yeah, not fun, I feel like it's probably not the game for you. You have to make that more fun for yourself. Like, I find it fun figuring this stuff out, building it. What's not fun is tearing it down to redo it because you did something wrong. So it's like, yeah, better planning is often rewarded. So just take your time. And that way you can kind of look back on things and be happy with it. And it was kind of fun coming into this factory and adjusting it and changing it now to support extra stuff. And because of the way I built it, that wasn't too difficult. It wasn't too complicated to add a few more machines in onto the same kind of belts. Um, and a few of them had to change. I had to add a second line to certain ingredients, but other than that, it didn't get too complicated. All right, here we are. Uh, so if anyone's just joining, basically this what, what I'm doing at the moment is this factory produces 60 crystal oscillators per minute. We're upgrading it to do 105. Um, we're at the final stage of that, which is building, doing the logistics for the manufacturers. So just above me, there are 24 new manufacturers. These are brand new ones that have been added. They've just been hooked up to power, and I'm just hooking up their belts now. I think we make all of the raw ingredients we need, except for quartz. So I'll just have to go fetch some more quartz. And there's some nearby, so that shouldn't be too difficult. But the quartz at the moment comes from, yeah, just over here. Again, actually, we could maybe improve these miners, although I think they're already doing 600, are they? They'll be able to do 600 each, yeah. So I suppose that's the best it's ever going to be. Oh, no, it's not. What am I saying? Belts can do 780 now. So it'll be interesting. Maybe, yeah, I haven't looked into numbers. We'll do that in a bit so I don't get distracted. But 780 times 2, what's that? 1560. So, yeah, if this place requires less than 1560, we could still stick with just those two, which would be nice. But if not, we can go venture out and find some more. There's some to the west a little bit, just over here, I think, underneath the in a cave. Does something seem familiar about my profile picture? Can I just get called Swifty? No. Swifty Boy 5. <laughs> now, I'll call you Swifty if you want that. That's fine. Excuse me. There's too much math in the game for me. I prefer watching. Yeah, that was an initial turn off for me. I'm not a mathematically minded person, I would say. Um, but I found the math in this game is actually fairly manageable. You're not really... Like, you multiply it by the amount of machines you need. That's kind of like it. You don't really ever have to do too much else. I've chosen to build it into, like, an Excel sheet to kind of do all that stuff for me. But it did mean I had to spend a bit of time doing that the first time. All right, so needs to be lined up like this, and then it's got to go one, two, three. So that's where it's got to be. So it's the conveyor belts are one grid space over from the edge of the foundation, so that's fine. We'll just get them where they need to be. I think is there. Yeah, right. Uh, nope, it's too close. I thought it was over, but it wasn't. It was on it. I don't want to do that. 
do it from this direction. I'm gonna try it again. See how long this takes. Uh, one, two, and three. Okay. That should be it. Alright, just making sure. Alright, let's just keep doing that then. So this can just join like this. And then I think it should be the... It's just two tiles out, isn't it? I think... I don't know, man. I'm so unsure. Not that close. That can't be right. That's probably it there. Alright, I think I got it. That should be the last row. Alright, just have an autosave coming in. I think Anno and CS is my math limit. I never do any math in Anno, personally speaking. Don't ever, ever think of numbers in that game, almost ever. You open up the, for me anyway, I open up statistics, and I just look, if the green line is bigger than the blue line, it means I'm making more than I consume, and that's all I need to know. Because you don't need to make exact nu exact numbers in that game. At least in my experience. In this game, it certainly saves you a lot of time if you do. Um, so it's, it makes more sense in this one, I think. Um, could you please show us in a video or stream how you create those Excel, Excel sheets? Uh, no. <laughs> I just think it'd be too boring. Go look up an Excel tutorial. That's what I would advise. I know that's like a... A really passive aggressive thing to say like oh go look up a tutorial but seriously a, a very very basic excel tutorial will teach you how to use how to do a formula in excel like how to make a number multiply by another number i mean that's that's like kind of it you know um i made a guide recently on how to get your graphics it's a lot of people ask me like oh i'd love to know how you get your graphics like that in city skylines so i made a video doing that and um has really low views you know it's like, yeah, 100 people might ask me, but it's not, not, not going to be enough to really warrant doing it. I, I don't really want to make a video doing a tutorial on Excel. I just feel like people should look to actual Excel tutorials themselves, you know? Because they're out there. Really good ones. Nothing I'm doing in Excel is complicated. I'm a novice at Excel, so I, just, I should not be making tutorials in it. <laughs> Plus, most people use Excel, um, Satisfactory Calculator or something like that. Much more user-friendly way of getting your numbers correct and stuff. I just use Excel because I know how to use Excel brief, like a little bit. And I like controlling it myself, I suppose. I'm sorry, but that's going to have to be my answer on that one. Good YouTuber for advice and satisfactory in building other games. I got the idea of making content from you. However, I can't upload every day because I have a lot of stuff going on. Dude, I can't even upload every day. And I do this full time. I wouldn't worry about it. But if you're doing um, content creation as a hobby... I would say whatever you can do, just be consistent. That that would be my... I can't even do that, but it's what I strive for. But be consistent. And spend time on your thumbnail. Thumbnails are actually really important. Um, but yeah, even if you only did two videos a week, but if people know, hey, every Tuesday and every Thursday, that's when that guy drops his video. Eventually, even if you're only getting 10 views, those, you know, eight, nine people or whatever, will expect and wait and, you know, want to see your video on those days. So I think, miss, and I say this as someone who just missed a stream, right? Um, so a stream of mine, I can't remember what. Yeah, I can't even see my own viewers right now, but I think it was on like nearly 100. But yeah, two weeks ago, it was like 200 every stream. And then I missed one and I missed another. And now it's, it's like halved. So it's really important, I feel like, to be consistent with everything you do. And I, I just know in terms of my habits, in terms of watching content, that I'm really bummed out when the people I like to watch aren't there. Uh, when they say they will be. It, it kind of ruins your day a little bit. <laughs> Especially if it's someone you enjoy and you really want to see, you know? 
Are you going to get wine gums for the 4th of July? Um, no, I don't live in America, so we don't celebrate the 4th of July here. But, um, I do love wine gums. But no, I'm not going to be having any today. At the moment, all I've got for sweets is chocolate biscuits. Choco Liebniz biscuits, which are really, really nice. But, um, trying to cut back on the amount of junk food I eat. It's getting really crazy. Also, I'm trying to save for a house. I'm just trying to save money generally, and I'm like, look, I don't need to be eating junk food. The amount of money I'd probably spend on it, it adds up. For some mouth pleasure, you know? <laughs> okay, so. That took a little while, but all our... I mean, it's good work, though. All of these things are now in place. Pretty happy with it. We don't have the outputs hooked up yet, but the inputs are all there. The important thing. Outputs can all go onto one belt, which is good. So now we need to feed all of these correctly. So if I recall correctly, the way this works, I think... Oh yeah, let's see if we can just go downstairs and take a look. Kind of interesting. Chucky hobnobs is not junk food. Hell out to your weighing scale, your your scales. There's 103 viewers right now. Awesome, it's great. Hey, I appreciate everyone that's here. By the way, it's totally. I I hate to sound ungrateful at all. I feel like I should never talk about this stuff because I always, it always just comes across as ungrateful. Very very happy. I'm in a great mood actually, and things are good. Have anyone watching me play Satisfactory is a blessing, and it, it it really is great. You guys have helped me helped me. I've said that with City Skylines and other games as well. It's like. I wouldn't be nearly as good at the game if it wasn't for all the people that have like commented and told me on things I could do better. And then I get that knowledge and then I relay it back to people. So it's a symbiotic thing that we got going on. Uh, so just to mention this really quickly, looks more complicated than it is. As far as I remember, all the materials are fed up through here. And then some of them just go straight through. Half of them specifically just go straight through. And the other half go upstairs. What I was going to do is just split this again further, and I think through Manifold it'll all work itself out, although there is a second line for the extra quartz crystal. The other ones don't need any second lines. They have everything they need now. This one might need to be sped up because... Yeah. It's doing 60 per minute, but we need like 105 per minute. So this will need to be a Mark II belt. But other than that, I think we're totally fine. Oh, and then this will be a Mark II belt on the way out as well. So yeah. We should have enough rubber and enough space for all the rubber we need. I'm just going to check my Excel sheet on this one, actually, as well. So, 56 manufacturers. How much rubber do we need? 735. So, it's still enough for one belt, one Mark V belt, because it can do 780. So, we're good. All right, we'll go back upstairs. Right, it means that we could just split off of this, um, and it's just worked out really well, because for whatever reason, I just decided to split it this way and go forward, and it's left, it means that we can come off this way now, so it's really worked out really nicely. Because if I had just gone straight, it would have been like, oh, you got to curve and come out, but we don't have to do that, we could just split it right off the back. Um, okay, so let's do this thing. So we'll feed it in, I suppose, somewhere like here. That makes sense. Yeah, a little bit of ramping around, I suppose, will have to be done. So we're on the line. That's the easier thing to remember, actually. We're on the line. Oh, sorry, my chat's gone for a sec. One sec. There we go. It's 10 p.m. Why do you keep telling me the time it is in Vietnam? What time is it in my country? It's 3 p.m. Did I not read that before? Sorry. Yeah, it's... Well, I suppose it's nearly four now. I live in the UK, southeast of UK. Southeast England. I know you're asking... Darren. Oh, sorry. If, did I miss something? Is there one thing to avoid when you start Satisfactory? What will it be? So, Shimo says, My advice, as someone who's played the game for 400 hours, is to avoid letting things get messy. In the beginning, that's hard, but making it clean and nice helps. Yeah, so my advice to anyone starting a game in Satisfactory would be to try to unlock 
foundations as quick as possible. So just do whatever you need to do to get to foundations, which I think is one of the first or second milestones. Uh, or tiers within them. Uh, once you do that, just like Shimo says, just always build on foundations and try to keep things at right angles. That way things will just stay a lot more organized. And when you go away and you come back, you will not be confused or overburdened by what's there. Uh, so I would agree with that wholeheartedly. The other thing is you kind of want to get to coal power so you can automate it quickly. Uh, and that way you don't have to be constantly running around and getting biomass. So my advice would also be to not build too much early on. Just build the, whatever you think is kind of the bare minimum to get you the components needed so you can start making your first coal generator. So a lot of people tend to go, okay, uh, I'm going to really build for the future here, you know, tier one. And they go crazy building tons of stuff, which requires a lot of power. And that means they have to run around like crazy, spend half the game running around getting power all the time, trying to grab, grab biomass and all that. And that's just a waste of time. You just want to build a bare minimum, I would say, to get you to coal power, and then your power is automated. You can just leave it running. You can walk away, and your power won't trip. And when that happens, you're then free to kind of design and build interesting and organized factories. Whereas before that, you're not. So I wouldn't worry too much about being a little messy in the beginning. But just don't overbuild. Just get what you need until you get to coal. That would be my advice. What's the UK like? I'm not trying to play, like, let's game it out. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You obviously don't want to go too crazy. <laughs> uh, what's the UK like? It's alright. I don't know. I don't really have much to compare it to. I, well, I grew up in Ireland. And the UK and Ireland are pretty much the same. It's just there's more people in the UK. And more infrastructure here. But generally speaking, the people and the vibe here is basically the same. Uh, I'd say people complain a lot more here. <laughs> um, things are a bit more easygoing, I think, in Ireland. At least in my experience. I've lived in three different places in Ireland, and that's always been my experience. Alright, these are all hooked up now. Uh, but as for the countries themselves, England has nicer weather. Weather's pretty good where I am. I'm in the southeast of England, really close to the, you know, really close to the southern coast. And the weather's great. Um, people complain about it a lot, I think, in general, but they sort of complain about everything. Uh, if you come from Ireland, where it's noticeably worse, it rains a lot more. Um, it's like, oh, they actually have a really good summer here. It, there's a, a heat wave every year, and uh, it's kind of nice. <laughs> Not just the heat wave, but like you actually get sunshine and stuff. It doesn't just rain all the time. At least in the south. I think further up north it does. And uh, yeah, things are good here. Things are nice. I live in Vietnam and I'm 13. What's it like being 13 in an age where the internet was around your whole life? I always wonder that. It must be weird growing up with that just there. It was such a crazy thing, even just being 7, 8, 9, 10 years old, getting a 1 megabyte connection for the first time, being like, holy shit, you can download like songs in seconds. That was crazy. It used to be even crazy just to be able to download songs over the course of like a week. It's like, oh, I could download a full album over like three days. It's like, oh my god. This is insane. Just stuff is coming down through the internet and then I play, it plays music. Right, I'm just trying to figure out which one should go into which. I don't know if it really matters. These are supposed to be Mark 1, actually. Uh-oh. Oh, no. I think my game crashed. No! Oh my god. God damn it. Yeah, it crashed on me. Whoa. You can see my OBS screen. I'm supposed to be looking at the other screen. There we go. Also live in the southeast, and it's true, we complain so much. Yeah, I can't. I, I mean, I hate to complain myself because it's like a, a negative feedback loop but I it's staggering how much complaining is a part of the culture I think in England I don't know if they admit it or not but it definitely is and it's like people bond over complaining about everything 
complain about each other, complain about their neighbors, complain about the NHS, the services. It's just everything. The weather. <laughs> everything. It's like the way people kind of come together and, and talk in England, in my experience, is they immediately start dragging someone, something, or some problem they have. And that's um, very unusual to me. See you later, Swifty boy. Swifty, sorry. <laughs> sorry if I missed any chat, by the way. Might go to Italy. I went to Italy just last month. It was great. It was really nice. I wouldn't want to live there, though. Oh, I only went to Rome. And it was really nice to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there, personally. Yeah, now I'm complaining about the complaining. That's what I was saying. Negative feedback loop. But we had to go to the doctor the other day, uh, yesterday. And, um... The NHS, like, the health service in England's free. You know? Which is great. And people are waiting to get their prescriptions... And the lady behind the desk says it's going to be 20 minutes. And for a lot of people, for some reason, multiple people were told, like, you got to wait till three. And, you know, it was like about half past two at the time. And, you know, people do a big sign. They turn around, they go, oh, it's terrible. And they roll their eyes and it's absolutely terrible. It's a disgrace. And one person's like, I'm not waiting. And there was a queue. There was a queue of six people. Not, not a big queue. But there was a queue. And the guy at the back is, I'm not waiting here. And he just walks right up to the front. He starts, like, yelling at the lady. And it's like, I don't know, man. I think people have it pretty good. But it's all relative, I suppose. But it, it kind of got me down. I almost wanted to say to the... I didn't do it in the end, because I was actually worried what other people would say to me. But I wanted to say to the the person behind the desk, I was like, I think you're doing like really, really, really good job. And I think people are treating you really badly. Uh, and that's unfair. Because I thought she was doing really good stuff, and it's not her fault if things are late. Anyway, so, yeah, I don't like that complaining culture. <laughs> it gets me down. I just feel like people should treat each other nicely, a bit more nicely, for minor things, you know. Look, if someone does something really bad or if someone really inconveniences you, then sure, you know, people have a right to complain. But if we're all in the sort of same boat, I just don't see the benefit of complaining about it. But anyway, um... I've thought long and hard about it, and I think you should go for a straight doubling and make 120. It's too late now. I'm not doing it now. <laughs> You've thought long and hard about it, though. Doubling probably would make the most sense. It depends. How much crystal oscillators do I need? Or not, um, quartz crystal. 1,050. So I already need two lines of that. See, if I add many more machines, I'll need two lines of rubber, not just one. And that would really bother me. That's one of the reasons I'm not doing that. I currently need 735 rubber. What would I need? I'll just, while this is loading, I'll show you. Um, if I needed 60 manufacturers, let's say 64, that would be 120 crystal oscillators. I need 840 rubber. And that's two separate lines, and that's just a, that's hassle. Just hassle. Too much hassle. I might need to, though, one day. If I need the extra oscillators, I'll have to just add the other machines and then make a new line for rubber, I guess. But we're going with 56 manufacturers, 105 oscillators. That leaves me still with a decent amount I can use for radio control units. In the future. That's at least the plan. It's all due to microwaves. You had to wait two hours for a baked spud. Now five minutes is too long. <laughs> I don't use a microwave, actually. Not anymore. We have one, but I find I rarely use it. I just, I have a little air fryer and we tend to use that quite a bit and super fast. It's great. But yeah, I know what you mean. It could just be a general impatience, but I don't know. I think it's, I think it's more than that. If you want to go into a deep level, I think it's more to do with the fact that the service is free and it's run by the government and it's taxpayer money. So people feel like they have the right to complain about it, right? It's like, I'm paying my, my, my tax money is going towards this and I have to wait in the line. They told me it'd be, it'd be ready at 2.30, and now they're telling me it's 3 p.m. They don't even know what they're doing. Everyone, like, it's like everyone else doesn't know what they're doing. But you guys, uh, the people complaining, they're, they're excellent at their job, I bet, right? They make no mistakes ever at all. Hey, we didn't have to go too far back, which is good. So I have to put, re-put these things back in. So, I don't know. There's a lot of that, in my opinion, where it's like... People complaining about each other. My neighbors are, like, unbelievable. Gotta keep my voice down, but... The neighbors just complain constantly. And they're like really... They're really nosy. Not against me, but they'll start taking photos of like 
into people's houses and stuff and start posting about them in our like little building discord or um <laughs> whatsapp group and be like can you believe this person they're after doing this or something it's like they're parking in this spot it's like oh i think they complained about me parking here and so it's like geez you're so nasty to each other why don't you just go over and talk to them and ask what's going on and then they were like cheering and celebrating when someone was like moving out or something so it's just weird someone put up a for sale sign in our apartment block and they were like trying to find out who was selling and then it was someone in our group and they were like it's me you could have just asked <laughs> it's just i just don't get it all right good all right sorry we have to do this again but got a crash Oh yeah, and then they'd be complaining, this delivery lady, who um, was new to the area, I guess, so I guess didn't have our address correct or something. You know, I think she had a few missed deliveries, which is annoying, to be fair, I do get that. But the way they would talk about her, they call her like, well, things I don't want to even say on the stream, to be perfectly honest, but they just call her like an idiot and stuff, and call her real stupid and things like that and it's just so mean you don't know her like you don't know what the reason like maybe her gps thing wasn't working like w would you know where people's houses are in with pure intuition i'm sure she can follow her sat nav but they, it's like a new development and you know people are just so hasty to be mean to each other very uh very unusual anyway <laughs> good looking school derp if they had the medical bills we have in the States, they'd complain less. Well, that's the thing. I come from Ireland, so it could just be part of that, right? It's like I'm not used to having everything just given to me for free, at least in terms of healthcare. And it's a great service, but man, you know, you think you'd be more grateful for it rather than so. Like, I, I was just talking to Rosie on the way out of the place, and I was kind of saying, like, they, they were really, in my opinion, and I'm not a super sensitive person, but they were really quite mean to the person behind the desk. She was young, maybe 24-ish area. And it wasn't her fault that people's stuff was late, you know? She was just explaining to them what was happening. And they just wouldn't treat her like a human. They'd just be really mean. And I remember thinking, like, you know, people should be thankful that she's doing that job, in a way. Certainly better than what I'm doing. <laughs> and uh, you're discouraging people from taking a job like that, you know? There's kids in there, and they might look at someone behind the desk there that's trying to help people, ultimately, uh, who is a pharmacist. And then you see them getting just like ragged on and treated like shit. Like, why, why would you do that? I just don't get it. That's why I felt so strongly. Not to the point where I said anything, but I was really contemplating saying something to her. Like, just being like, man, it's really unfair, like, how you're being treated. But anyway, whatever. It is what it is. Everyone has the right to complain, I suppose. I was just surprised so many people do for what I'd consider unnecessary things. Um... I'm just trying to think how we're going to get these in. So that's the oscillators out. So that's fine. We have only three components going in. Oh, yeah. What? We really only need three things. Why have I been hooking up four then this whole time? <laughs> Not that it's a big problem, but it's just like, why did I do that? Oh, yeah. Only three lines. Well, I'm after hooking up four. Well, good to know. Did more than I had to. I was just confused. I was like, why? Yeah, anyway, it's all good. All right, so yeah, let's just grab this bark, uh, belt mark five. One, two. This will start feeding the whole place with. Oh, no, it won't. This is the one that comes at the bottom. So this is the oscillators first. Sorry, not oscillators. I always call it that. Quartz crystal. Rolling in. There we go. Rolling in hot. Dividing all the way down. Then we're going to get this one coming in next. Actually, you know what we're going to have to do? Yeah. Alright, let's get the stackable pole. This doesn't even need it, actually. This could just go straight from here into there. It comes out a bit, I guess. Uh, that's a shame. We get it to not do that. Don't really think I can, actually.
Yeah, it would have to go further in, wouldn't it, to not do that? Just to see. I just want to see if I can kind of do that. But I guess it wouldn't connect, actually. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. This this wouldn't make any sense. Just get rid of that and put these back on. Alright, just bear with me. Think this will work? Yeah. All right, so there we go. And then I'll read chat in just one sec. Sorry, hard to keep these things in my mind at the same time. And then this one along the bottom, right? So that's everything going in. So we just had to rehook these ones up because I just disconnected them, didn't I? <clears throat> All right, there goes our AI limiters. Alright. God, it's very dark in this place. Alright, so rubber is now flowing. Quartz crystal is flowing. Um, these are all going to get backed up, and then they'll be fed up to the machines. They're going to make their crystal oscillators, but we haven't actually... Oh, yeah, so... Th oh, that's why. The fourth line is needed along here, but it's not needed as part of this place. It's needed to take the output out, and it'll have to be sent into there. That's okay. We can do that in a moment. Alright, let me just catch my chat. I've missed it quite a bunch, so sorry about that. Uh, I prefer not to join house or street WhatsApp groups. Not really interested in reading passive-aggressive text messages. Yeah, it's a long story, but we actually kind of have to. I didn't really want to either. Uh, it's hard to be consistent because I have a lot of stuff I need to do, and it keeps on coming before I can finish it. Well, if I were you, unless your videos are n necessary to be done immediately, bank a few. You know, bank a few ahead of time if you can. Um, Pre-plan for switching them to something else in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of true <laughs> for the uh, manufacturers. Uh, you need the fourth line for extra rubber. <laughs> Possibly, actually. Yeah, that's a good point. Was there a gap in one of the uh, in one of the lines halfway down? I think I saw a brief glimpse of it just after you reloaded. I'll have a look. Yeah, we'll go over it just to make sure. Uh, worst case, we could check upstairs for the machines. I just woke up. <laughs> uh, people are just really impatient these days. So what I do is my best to be as patient as possible because I can't change what others say or do, but I can control what I do. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, I've never gotten mad at any other people. I'm just a little... Surprised sometimes how people treat each other, especially when those people are trying to help you anyway, you know? Um, but either way. Is what it is. Right, so. This is getting really complicated now, so we'll just check these lines. So there's our connections all there, all there. Yep, everything's flowing the whole way down. Yep, seems all good. Those are all connected. And, oh, yep. You were right, there's a gap here. And the end bits have not been cut away anymore. So we'll just cut these away to save on, get some of these materials back. Hey again from Australia. Wow, we have a few people from Australia tuning in today. AI limiter is not making it past the first row. Okay, we'll check again why that might be. Alrighty. The AI limiters are coming out here, going that way. I'll just reconnect that just to make sure.
Yep, that's working. At least it seems to be. Okay, good. So let's just uh, configure the outputs then. So the outputs have to go into here. And it's at tier 4. So yeah, so it'll be going this way. So I'm going to have to get rid of this line. And this will be reversed. Okay, so it's not a splitter, it's going to be a merger, and it's facing the opposite direction. I'm confused. A merger has three inputs, does it? Oh yeah, I guess so. Okay, cool. Damn, we're just slightly lower than where the power is. Um, that one actually doesn't need to be there. It's gonna come out there. Yeah, I guess actually, ugh, this is gonna be so annoying, but I have to do it. I need to line them up with the actual exits here. But those exits come out, so it's three tiles over from where they are. So it'll be sort of like this. One, two, three. So it's straight on the middle of the line. God, I feel like I'm fighting the frame rate. Alright, sit down there. And I can go. And then we can just rehook these back up. Huh, you still have the same gaps in that row you fixed between each blueprint group. I might be misunderstanding. I feel like there's no gaps. Uh, you did not reconnect it after you deleted the first splitters. Okay, we'll just leave it for a moment. <laughs> I'll get to it. We'll, we'll, I'll see which machines aren't running because I don't. The way people explain things, it can be a little difficult for me to understand what you what you mean. You deserve more subscribers because how good your videos are. Thank you. Go tell your friends. <laughs> tell anyone. That's how I get subscribers. People tell people. All right, so this in a line here is on the line. So this is where it's got to be lined up. So about there. And it's four, so in this direction. I know things are dark right now. I'll have to just wait until it gets a bit brighter, but... Correct. Two, three, four. All right, and then this one. All right, so we can get rid of these, get rid of those, get rid of these. And now we just do mark one. So the output's going to travel in there. Output's going to travel there. There, and then it'll join into here. Cool. So, oh, we've got another one on the end. Didn't realize. Um, the last set of blueprints you put down. Okay, I'll have a look at it. And thank you. I might go to Mexico. Are you okay? Alright, so that's one line of outputs handled. Let's see where you think I am missing some stuff. So, the last set of blueprints I put down here. Ah, yes. So, all these lines are not connected. I see. Got it. Thank you. That doesn't need to be connected, just for posterity. We'll make sure it's hooked up correctly. Okay. Just in case.
Receive it. Ah, uh, darn. Thanks, mate, for all the vids that you make. I'm in love with Anno 1800's playlist. Being... By being from Latam. Every time you get the intro out, you have the like. Funny to watch your Anno T Y. Thank you very much. What is L A T A M? By being from L A T A M. There we go. That was a long save, but just better to be safe than sorry. All right, so now we're just doing the outputs, right? That should be the inputs all sorted out. We can already see out, um, oscillators are flowing out. I won't connect up these belts until we do all of the outputs first. So again, similar sort of thing here. We have to come over by three. So it's one, two, three. That's so going to be along that line. Yeah, so that will give us a nice line to work with now. And then we can just use this. Oh, yeah, actually our... Mergers are going to line up with each other now, which is great. So that'll make things a little easier, too. Actually, yeah, this is nice. It's easy enough to track. One, two, three. I thought it was going to be really painful lining these ones up, but it seems pretty good. Uh, Latino America. Latin America. Oh, cool. I never heard it being called that before. By being from Latam, every time you get the intro out, you have the like. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate all the kind words. I get nothing but like extreme positivity on my channel. I was saying to Rosie recently as well. It's just like I open up my phone, and the comments are just like so ridiculously positive. It's almost it almost feels fake when people are like, "This is like the best thing ever." I'm like, "Okay, we we can calm down a little bit, you know." Um, but it's I mean, it's nice. It's really nice that people are so so kind. Because I hear such negative things sometimes from people where they're like, oh, you can never read your YouTube comments, you know? Mine are, like, super positive. For now. <laughs> uh, okay, so we'll have to just chop this away again, unfortunately. Now, which way do I want to go out? We want to come out straight, I guess. Oh my god, no. Oh, that's going to cause such an issue. Fuck. A little bit of quartz crystal fl just went into machines. Although, thinking about it, actually, is that such a problem? Because it does need quartz crystal. But it's going to go into a different slot. Yeah, it's probably never going to get used. Uh, I was hoping maybe it would just get, you know, kind of consumed somehow anyway. Oh, it's so annoying. I'll have to track where they went, possibly. Unless just one or two go in, they'll get fed into the correct slot, like, in the machine. Because it moves it. Yeah, so as long as they can just keep producing things, it's okay. It might be alright, because only a little bit went through. Alright, cool. So that's uh, one row of outputs done. And now that's two rows of outputs, right? There we go. Two rows of outputs. And there's no outputs on this side. Nope. This there. All right. Yeah, uh, you can clear the buffer on the machines upstairs. Yeah, I'll, I'll just have to go into this row and just make sure they're all empty. I if something seems amiss. My bad. All right. So we're along this line. We have the line behind us that will guide us to where we need to go. So we'll just have to line this first one up. I think. One, two, three. Oh, I guess not. That's... Oh, yeah, no, we do. Yeah. All right, so there. Damn it. Oh, this is going to drive me crazy. So this is the line here. We need to go one, two, three. So it's between the center of both of these. Okay, cool. And then here, it's going to be there. All right, progress. Good. All 
All right, we can get rid of the redundant mergers and then hook these guys back up. Whatever happens to overclocking things? Happened. Uh, well, overclocking things takes a lot more power, so... Um, I don't want to. I do overclock things though where I need to, sometimes. Especially when it comes to power itself, I'll overclock power. All of my oil extractors are overclocked, but when it comes to default machines, I'm like... I really rarely see the point. It's just kind of, you know, if you want to call it this laziness to overclock your own machines. Uh, whereas you've got a lot of space in the world, I feel like you can just use the space to put down more machines and save on the power. Now, if power's not an issue for you, then sure. Go for it. Some of my machines are overclocked. In the fuse frame factory, I underclock or overclock usually one machine. Okay. All right, let's hook these up. It's usually better to have an extra machine underclock than overclock one. Yeah, I agree, right? I only overclock at the point of extraction. Yeah, so I... Exactly. I'm pretty much the same way. Because otherwise it just costs you exponential power, doesn't it, really? So if you've got no power concerns, somehow, let's say you've nuclear set up and you've got way more than you need, overclock the crap out of everything. What do I care? <laughs> but water extractors, oil extractors... Resource extraction, they can be overclocked in my opinion. Maybe water less so, because there's, again, so much water. Alright, so how many outputs left? So two more outputs, oh, three more outputs. Okay, I'll try to speed up a bit. I'm really slow. So the first thing, I need to get them lined up this way, right? So... One, two, and three. So it's in the center of the foundation. It's easy to remember. We need to use mergers as well. Okay, so center of the foundation. One, two, three. Let's just do three and we'll stack the fourth one last. All right, so now we can face the direction correctly. Good. Get rid of their little buddies. Connect the lines and then put in the lifts. All right. Progress is good. That was a bit quicker. Looking good. Uh, that's also a nice quality of life update in A, th that the mergers do not turn around automatically. Oh, really? Oh my god, that is such an annoying thing in this game. It drives me crazy that they do that. <laughs> so, for that to be fixed, that's a huge time saver. Enough vaccine for me. Uh, sorry, 105 oscillators doesn't fit on a Mark 1 belt. Yeah, but 105 doesn't come out on this belt. This is one floor. There's another floor of oscillators down below me. So, one, uh, Mark 1 belt is totally fine for here, but downstairs... I have to upgrade the AI limiter belt and the oscillator belt to be marked to you. So don't worry, haven't forgotten it. But this isn't 105. This is this is a, about a third of the machines that are needed. There's 56 manufacturers in total. And above me, you know, all of this in front of me is just 24 of them. So yeah, there's 12 in the two other rooms. So there's 12 over there and then 12 on the floor below. It's a really uneven amount the way it's uh, worked out, I guess. Um, so yeah, just to save again, getting a little distracted, but I want to get rid of this top layer.
it'll look cleaner visually afterwards and my lag in this area is serious so I'd rather have less stuff going on all right good all right so what is it two more lines to go all right so we start here we go over three spots so one two and three so we're in between the middle of the foundation and the edge of the foundation so that's fine one two three we're not aligned so that's fine I'm starting out my wood heater and waiting for a big flame. So many, yeah. Is this a uh, big shell or are you re retrofitting? I'm retrofitting somewhere else. This is my crystal oscillator factory. I could do another little bit of a recap in just a moment once we're done. We're almost done just hooking up the outputs of these machines uh, as to what we're doing. But yep, it's just getting the crystal oscillators to be 105 per minute. They're currently at 60 per minute. Big Shell needs 80, so we have to make a little extra than we currently were making, or were previously making. Alright, looking good. Like this, bring it down to its buddy. I feel like progress is actually pretty good. Alright. Up we go again. Thanks for the little hearts and laughy things. I don't know... I didn't know you could do that. Is that like a new feature for YouTube streaming? Because I thought, thought that was like an Instagram only thing. <laughs> I don't know if it could be turned off. I don't mind it, but I feel like other people might get annoyed by it. Um, I wonder does it count as like engagement for the stream or something? Like, I don't know. Thanks again for that super chat, by the way. Earlier on. All right. One last line to go. Alright, it's just these ones. And then we're almost done. Then what the last thing needs to be done here then will be actually getting the right amount of quartz. There isn't enough quartz going into these machines just yet. That's a one, two, and three, so it's on the line. Sleep is for the week. Sorry. Might need you to get some sleep soon. Me? No, I'm good. I got good sleep. Although I haven't slept well in a very long time. Like, properly good sleep. So I always wake up during the night now. I'm an old man. I wake up to go pee. <laughs> there we go. Alright, good. I'm on episode 54, you build this for your first time. Oh, where I start building this, episode 54, Crystal Oscillator Factory and the Radio Control Units. Yeah, I'm now I'm expanding it out. I'm glad that I made it to the stream, but it's almost 2 a.m. Get to bed, Darcy. Get to bed. It does block chat every once in a while, so I wish it could be moved. Yeah, it didn't used to happen on any of my other streams, so I feel like it's a new feature. They're kind of strange. Well, that sucks. What sucks? Sleep. All right, there we go. Auto save complete. All right, cool. So just link these guys up, and then we'll just add it to here as well. Excuse me. Oh my god. I got hay fever. <laughs> Hey, Hunter Gladden. Holy shit. Thank you so much for the super chat. It's massive. Absolutely huge. Way too much. Thank you so much. I'll read that in just one sec. Dro dropped a $50 super chat. Wow, that might be the biggest one I've ever gotten. So thank you. Thank you very much, Hunter. Appreciate it a lot. See what he said. So, just wanted to catch you live. Thank you for the Anno 1800 series. It's been a great watch. And I can only imagine how much time and effort you've put into it. From humble beginnings, war and trade route bouncing. Yeah. True completionist grind. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Hey, man, that's a huge amount, so really do appreciate it. Thank you. And thanks for the kind words. 
Yeah, I loved, loved it the whole way, though, you know? The thing is with that series, never anticipated it to get so much DLC. That's the thing. So I just never could have predicted it would have went on so long. But loved it. Loved it either way. Right, so we're all hooked up with the mergers now. What I'd like to do this is just remove the lines that we don't need. I'll try to just do that kind of quickly. Um, just to save on the materials, we could use it for something else, I'm sure, without me having to run back and forth, uh, even just on today's stream. But also, just because this place's frame rate's just really bad, and I feel like just removing a few things will help <clears throat> a little bit. Alright, so that's one line. And it also just cleans it up a bit, makes it look a little bit more simple. Elegant, refined, dignified. Oh my god, wow, thank you as well. Vincenzo donating, gifting, sorry, 10 memberships to people awesome do you get to i've never actually thought about this before but i'm assuming those are tier one does it ever tell you does it tell you when you're doing that but hey look at this all these people are after getting a membership i've got to call them out Pato 6450 danny merov christoph baziak tyler miller mario mai adrian clear werner lee shubham shubham thakur and Lissandro Brenna and Dexasaurus. Welcome. You guys have all just become members. Thanks to Vincenzo. So appreciate that. Vincenzo, thank you very much. Yeah, boost those numbers, man. Helps. Helps a lot. Appreciate it. <laughs> I really do. And hey, guys. If, I mean, everyone's welcome to join my Discord. Discord.gg slash WDP. But if you do join my Discord and you have a membership, you'll have one of those lovely blue names now. Okay. So this line is totally clear as well, right? And as well, Gaming Trucker became a senator for one month. And they just say, hello, everyone. Thank you very much. Gaming Trucker. Makes me think of SnowRunner. But I'm guessing you're just a trucker who also plays games. <laughs> Although some people I know, well, I don't know them, but they've said that, like, um, you know, people who are actually, like, delivery drivers and stuff will play things like Euro Truck Simulator, which is quite funny. I didn't get one. No, I didn't deserve it. Didn't deserve it. Oh. I'm kind of confused. These things are popping up now saying Tyler Miller has renewed their membership for two months. Two month streak. Same with Adrian Clear and Mario Mai. Maybe they were senators before or something. Well, either way, I appreciate it all. Thank you, Vincenzo and Hunter. Thank you both. All right, so that's... Which lines did I clear? I cleared... Yeah, I just want to make sure I cleared those two. This one's gone as well. Okay, cool. We're on to the next one. We're almost done. Oh, that one's done as well. That's great. Pretty quick, actually. With this one. And then we can just check that each machine had made something. Let's make sure they're all getting stuff. All right, looking a little clean and cleaner. Our crystal oscillators are looking for somewhere to go. Oh, this music. Darn, have you touched the game Space Engineers? No, I've never played it. Um, people have told me it'd be really great, but I've just had my hands completely full with games that take a very long time right now. But, um, yeah, maybe when it leaves early access, I think it's still early access, right? So maybe then it'd be a nice time to visit it, see what it's like. No problem, man, considering season one and season two of Anna, that's not even 50 cents per hour. Yeah, it's a hell of a deal. <laughs> yeah, true. Thank you. I would say, though, in your defense, there were ads on those videos. Unless you had a, an ad blocker or something, I guess. In which case, pay up. <laughs> Alright. I think we're looking good. So. Oh, that's wonky as well. Let's make that not wonky.
So I think you can get to about there. And that's a nice feature in the new update as well, where you don't have to... It'll let you know where it can fit without having to raise it yourself. Alright, should just make it look a little bit nicer. Okay, so there we go. Alright, so these guys... This has to travel in there, so just in order to make this line it up correctly, we'll just get rid of this line again really quickly. Face it straight out. I don't know why I was doing that. You have to face this one straight out. There we go. Did I not do that right? Let's just check again. Oh, this is... I see. Oh my god, I'm going to kill myself. Right, hang on one second. It's still off, yep, of course. Okay, so I have to reattach that line, reattach this line, but that should be it. We're just about done. Absolute chaos of not being able to position things correctly. All those issues should be gone in the next update when we get it. There we go. So that's going to be 20... F I don't actually know how much crystal oscillators that is, because it's 24 times whatever these machines make. Alright, there we go. So, that's it. So just to get a clean UI and look back at it really quickly. We now have... This is where we had the old splitter system, right? So the splitters divided the rubber... AI limiters and quartz crystal to be delivered amongst 24 or I want to say actually 22 hmm hang on one sec there's 12 machines in here right goes up to 32 yeah oh no so 16 oh So we just needed to build 22 of these. Did I do 22 or did I overdo it? I might have overdone it. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 21, 22. So we don't need to power on two of these at the moment. We'll power two of these down. Okay. Uh, yeah, I still can't play Update 8, unfortunately. Hey, Matt. Can I have a membership, says Swifty Boy. Space Engineers is out, I believe. Oh, uh, maybe I'll give it a shot at some point, but... It's, like I said, I'm just... I just do not have the time at the moment. Uh, but I like space games. I like No Man's Sky. I was kind of thinking of doing a Starfield playthrough, but I feel like that'd be... Not a good idea for the channel overall. Uh, it is fully released, yes, but it's still as janky as ever. Yeah. There's other games like Dual Universe I was looking into, Star Citizen. I was watching videos about that recently. No Man's Sky is actually, unironically, my favorite of the lot, probably. Uh, gotta have a good, go have a good day. See you later, Swifty. Thank you. I will. I'll keep building. Alright, so, just let's mark this. Let's manufacture logistics done. The oscillator overview, we had to look over everything as well. So, power and activation. Power is online for it all. What we need to do now is really sort the... The mechanics of everything out. So let's just go downstairs another floor. And we can have a look at the logistics setup for this place. We need to improve. So logistics too. So there's 16 machines. Oh, one thing I need to do. Let's just type manufacture. Actually. So it's this recipe. So it's 1.875 per minute. 1.875 times 16. We know that 30 are coming out on this belt. 30 are moving out there. They're going to here, and then for whatever reason, they're joining onto a Mark 1 lift, right? So that's 30 on that Mark 1 lift. We now have 22 on this one. So that's 30 plus 40. It's going to be too much, so this lift needs to change now to a Mark 2. At the very least. Okay.
All right, there goes our Mark II feeding things down. Mark II again. All right, Mark II. Got a little secret one in here that always trips me up. Then we arrive down here. Mark two. All right, I'm just gonna be a crystal oscillator for a minute. <laughs> See where we go. All right, so we j that's pretty much it, right? So we just go out into the other room. Okay, cool. Okay, so this is going to be the target anyway. I'm out of iron, reinforced iron plates. The target here is going to be 120. Sorry, no, 105. Sweet. All right, I'll have to get a few more materials before we can continue. Let me just catch chat, see what I've missed. Um, Steve, No Man's Sky is great. Yeah, I love it. I've spent hundreds of hours in the game. Love it. Never finished it, though. Never went to the center of the galaxy, although I think I know what's there. Uh, Starfield would be a great playthrough. I hope so. I think it would be. I just don't... My channel is increasingly focusing on sandbox builders, builder type games, and uh, I just don't know if Starfield will really fit that. Uh, anyway, I have an issue with update 8 in OBS when streaming. Seems like I'm running out of VRAM. I've got 24 gigs of VRAM, but I'm hitting frame rate issues anyway. I'm not one to talk about performance. I have no idea like how to improve performance in this game. It's getting demonstrably worse for me over time as I build out and out and out. My PC is pretty good. Um, I've got a Ryzen 9 5950X. I'm experiencing no issues in any of the games. And I recently just bought and used 3D Mark, is it? I think it's called, on Steam, just to run some benchmarks and tests. And I was like, yeah, my benchmarks are good. So it's not it's not me specifically. I've updated my BIOS settings, chipset drivers, graphics drivers, obviously, and loads of things to make everything run as smoothly as possible. But uh, yeah, the game is just demanding a lot, especially while streaming. Um, one of the benefits of using a Ryzen 9 5950X was supposed to be that, like, for creators, it's great because it can do renders really quickly. And that's true. But it's supposed to do multi, like, do multiple things well. So streaming can be handled by an entire core while letting everything else do everything else. And it doesn't seem to, I don't know if my OBS settings are wrong, but it doesn't seem to be the case. Like, if I actually look at my performance right now, I'll show you what I've got. You know, I'm rocking half the amount of memory, just regular RAM, and I'm using about 50% of my GPU, or sorry, 40% of my GPU and 50% of my CPU. Feels like I've got room to give, but I don't know. It's just the way it is. I mean, actually, I say that my stream's not lagging. It's just the game is, and the game lags more while streaming for sure. So I would have hoped that this could have just been separate, you know, somehow like this my CPU would just go and like, no, we'll put OBS over there and we'll put Satisfactory over here and they do not need to affect each other whatsoever, but they do for whatever reason. Doesn't seem to really do that much other games, but I honestly don't really stream any other games anymore, so I don't really know. It's been a long time. But when I streamed Warhammer 3, there was like no performance impact. I have a Ryzen 5, 5 600X and a 6650 XT with 64 gigs of system memory. Yeah, so I've got 32 gigs of RAM and I've got 24, I've got an RTX 3090. So 24 gigs of VRAM. But it's not the graphics that's doing it. It's the logic. It's all CPU stuff, for sure. Because if I load up a brand new save and there's nothing going on in the world, the graphics are the same. And it runs fine. It's just the uh, complexity of the world that's doing it. And it can be sort of an issue when you've got lots of like the coordinates and stuff on screen, like, the, um, like all these little grids that are being drawn. They can cause a lot of performance impact. Things are checking all the time where they're snapping to and stuff like that, so that can have some effect. Anyway, um, never managed to play Elite Dangerous. Yeah, I've never actually played that either. I used to play a lot of Arma. 
which was why Star Citizen looks like it was kind of cool. It gets a lot of hate, to be honest. Every game has issues, some more than others. Yes, but if you're willing to deal with them, the more power to you. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Star Citizen, it's the monetization model that I have an issue with. But I've been watching videos on it. It seems perfectly fine. It's just a for buggy early access type game at the moment. Still people asking why I don't use Update 8. Yeah, it just doesn't run well for me. I know. Well, so, in fairness, a lot of people today are just asking if it runs yet, and it still doesn't. Um, but they haven't updated it since last time anyway, so obviously not going to be checking until they come back into the office. All right, so let's uh, do a little recap of what... So I need to get more stuff. What am I lacking? I'm lacking reinforced iron plates. I think there's some over here. And we can continue updating these belts. And then we have to go source some more... Oh my god, raw quartz. And then we should be good. Can I really only get one of these right now? Yeah, I'm. it's very choppy. I, when I'm playing on my own, it's not choppy at all. So I'll have to look into that as well. See if there's anything I can do to make it go a bit smoother. While streaming, I mean. That could just be OBS settings. Also, this area is noticeably more laggy than any other area I know in the game. I don't know why that is. I think it's because I'm between two biomes, probably. Um, because when I'm out in other places, it's just not nearly as bad. A crate was dropped. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, so let's just keep updating. i got to trace that back. So the crystal oscillator belt needs to be Mark II. And so does the AI limiter belt. That's Mark II. That's Mark II inside of there, so that's okay. That's the overflow. And that's the storage. So all of it's just going to go into overflow. For now, until it goes up to Big Shell. But in theory, we should see this... Well, not maybe not that belt, but if I made that belt a Tier 2 belt, we should see it totally full. As it goes into our awesome sink. Seven hundred coupons. Doing doing okay. Okay, so next thing then is to change the AI limiter belt to Mark II. So we'll have to go trace where the AI limiters come from. It's in here. They merge on this belt here and then move out. So that seems like it's Mark II already. Mark II. That's Mark I. Well, there's an issue there. Well, well kind of. I'll make it Mark II just in case, but I don't actually know if that is an issue. All right. Okay, so that's Mark II the whole way down. And as long as that stays Mark II, as it goes in there, we should be okay. Yep, looks like it's Mark II the whole way. All right, in it goes. So let's just see, is it Mark II all the way out? No. This now needs to be 105 as well. It matches the output. Every AI limiter gets fully consumed to make a crystal oscillator. This will be 105. And we just got to follow this belt up. Uh, sorry. So, question. Is the alternate recipe for iron and copper ingots that you use for the foundry with any good? Um, not sure I've known which one you're talking about. The alternate recipe I use for iron. This one. Is this the one you mean? I don't necessarily know. I, my answer, actually, even if I did know, is I don't know. <laughs> the only one I can say for sure that is a really great recipe, if you can manage it, I feel like, anyway, is the steel ingots I have that use Petro Coke. Yeah, so I, I really like this one. You get a lot out. So if you can do the petroleum coke, 75 per minute, 75 per minute iron, so they're one-to-one -one with each other, you get 100 steel ingots out. So for 75 iron in, you get 100 steel out. I guess it's actually the same as this if you just used coal. The 22 gives you 37. 
That's a pretty good one as well. 40 to 60. Yeah, I don't know. I just like this one. I had a lot of excess petroleum coke, so it was like it just felt like it gave me a lot of steel. But I'm not I gotta be honest, I'm just not very good with knowing like what's optimal. I just kinda do what's fun. I try to make use of different recipes when I come across them. If they make sense for me. Um But yeah, I couldn't I don't know, I guess is my answer. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, Armour is a military simulator type game? Yeah, Milsim. Never heard of Arma. Yeah, Armour is a third person slash first person multiplayer focused military sim game. Um, Battle Royale genre was invented in an Arma mod. So, the creator of PUBG, player unknown, he made a mod for Arma 2 that made it Battle Royale. So you have this big open map. Uh, like 16 kilometers or something map and um he basically made a mod for the game where like there's a circle and it collapses in and everyone gets forced to come together but normally in the game if you play vanilla you're kind of doing these like military operations you've got a squad of maybe six seven people and you're driving vehicles around and you're like okay over at this outpost there's like terrorists or whatever we have to go there and kill them but like you know one one or two shots to the arm and you you're out so you have to be like really careful with what you're doing and it's, yeah, like a little milsim game. But then Armour 3 came along, and uh, it's a bit more updated, and there was servers that run for that that are slightly modded, one of my favorites of which will be Exile. So Armour Exile was almost like you had this big open map as well, but on top of everything, you can build bases that were persistent, and you can get, like, keys and different vehicles and put them in there, and people build their bases. It's almost like Rust or something in that way. Um, but you've got this, like, milsim backdrop to it, so... I don't know. Just it just felt really really cool, and then obviously DayZ and stuff emerged uh, out of these projects as well. Um, what else? I was gonna say something. Oh yeah, so I was relating that to Star Citizen. Sorry, just because Arma can feel a little janky, and you can do third person, first person. It it very much feels like when looking at Star Citizen. I haven't played it to be fair. It feels like it's an Arma game, especially with like the in depth flight controls and all this kind of stuff. Like it just seems like. That was weird. I couldn't crouch there for a minute. It just feels like that kind of game. Anyway, um, am I all right? I am all right. Yeah, thank you. I'm good. Hope you're good too. Have I tried Forever Skies? I played it in a Steam Next Fest demo and I thought it was okay. I didn't feel the need to go back for, to it, to be completely honest. Um, you guys are talking about CPUs. Yeah, my PC was originally liquid cooled, but it was custom liquid cooled. Like, I got a company to do it and it just broke every time. So. I had to send it back several times, and now I just use an all-in-one cooler. Alright, sorry, I'm getting distracted. So, just to focus back up, so here we are, Crystal Oscillator Factory, and I'm just updating the belt so that it's Mark II, carrying AI limiters out. That's one of the final things I need to do, and then we'll have to go source some more raw quartz. After that, we can maybe have a look more at the updated um, Big Shell build, for people who are interested. I know people like to look at it. At least they tell me they do. Alright, so this is just going to be Mark II the whole way. Alright, great. Can we fly here, maybe? Kind of. If we can skim around here. I don't know if it'll let me. Ugh. Grab on. There we go. Okay, that's Mark II. And then we just continue up, if I can. All right, we should be moving faster now with the AI limiters. And if all things are correct, I've already increased production of AI limiters, so that should be okay. Okay, so there we go. Let's just give this Mark II as well. I don't think it actually needs it, because some of them get split, but just in case. Uh, if I can hover all the way... I can't hover all the way up. I can go up just another floor. We'll just continue and keep doing that. Tomas, thank you very much for the membership, for becoming a Tribune. Appreciate it a lot. Thank you. So here we are. Mark 2. Okay, there we go. So that's now improved. So maybe just to claim back a few materials. I don't know if it'll... Yeah, we've got some space in our inventory. This really only needs to be Mark 2. I'd like to just do that. 
just so I can kind of keep an eye on how these things move to some extent. I just noticed something. This is facing the wrong direction, isn't it? Hey. This is just a visual trick. It looks like it's going backwards, doesn't it? <laughs> it totally looks like it's going backwards, but okay. I think it's because my frame rate's low. It's not keeping up with the shutter speed of, like, the belt movement. Thanks again, Tomas. Love your satisfactory city. Thank you. Appreciate that. The pure alts are good, but they take up space and water, which adds to the complexity. Yeah, well, I would say, I certainly know that if you get something like Caterium, uh, I, I would fully wholeheartedly agree that mixing water with ore to get more out is definitely the way to go. Totally do it. Obviously, it's a bigger power demand. Power to the output, maybe not as good. But ore to the output, excellent. Best you'll get. So definitely do that. And water, I mean, there's so much of it on the map, like I wouldn't really consider that a big blocker, you know? So totally, if you can mix copper with water, iron with water, or caterium with water, whatever, definitely do that. It's certainly a, a great way to get way more out of an ore, out of a node. But it is going to cost you power. Oh, shit. What did I just do? Just upgraded something. Oh, that bit there. Hey, Etheric Bard, again, super chat. Appreciate the super chats today. Really, 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 really does help. So thank you so much. And he says, hey, glad you're streaming today. Thought there wasn't going to be one this week. Yeah, so apologies for that. I had a doctor's appointment yesterday that I went to. And it ended up taking not just the appointment, but we ended up being in uh, the town for just much longer than it was initially anticipated. Uh, so, yeah, I was supposed to be back by three, but I wasn't. So I decided to push it till today. Excuse me. Apologies for that, but I didn't want to leave people hanging, so that's why, excuse me, we're streaming on a Tuesday rather than a Monday, but we'll be back on regular Monday streams going forward, hopefully. Won't be any issue. I did miss last week, but it was, I actually was here. I could have streamed, but I just chose not to, and I told people that it was because I had a satisfactory video ready right at the same time, and it just didn't feel right to stream on top of the video going out, so that was the main reason for that. It's just the way it worked out. I wasn't planning on having the video for that time. It just happened to be at that time. That one didn't pop up, did it, in terms of notifications? I see it in the chat, obviously. It's obviously in the chat and everyone can see it, but it didn't actually alert, I don't feel like. Maybe it's delayed. Uh, all, yeah, exactly. All those from the States. Happy July 4th, Independence Day. That could be another reason. Maybe viewers could be a little lower on a day like this. Obviously, it's a holiday for a lot of people, hanging out with family. Well, actually, I guess July July 4th is more just like a celebration. It's not like Thanksgiving, right? Do you... You obviously have, a, I'm assuming, a day off work. And there's usually fireworks in the evening, right? Depending on where you go. But is there any other kind of tradition that you do for thanks or for uh, July 4th, like, during the day? Or is it just like, hey, it's a day off. We celebrate in the evening. You know, some of us anyway. Or am I missing something? Is there something that you traditionally do during the day? I was just checking on something. All good. All right. How are the driving lessons going? Thanks for asking. Yeah, so um, someone... Basically, I'm with a, like a kind of a semi-private instructor. It's not with a driving school. But he uses like an... Well, I'm getting way too off base. But basically, um, he had someone else who was pregnant, who he's teaching, doing driving lessons, give birth. Not like in the car or anything, but it freed up a bunch of pre-booked lessons. So he was able to give me a lot more. Um... So effectively, I had four lessons in the space of about eight days. It was great. I loved it. So I'm really enjoying it. He says I'm doing really well. He thinks I'm good. It seems like, like I'm only doing automatics. So to be fair, it's like driving a go-kart. So he says like my car control, speed control, all of that's great. So he says you're coming along really fast. Every time I do a lesson, he's like, yeah, I think he was initially saying like, yeah, we could aim for your license somewhere in December. Then he was like, actually, I think like, you know, October-ish. Then he was like, actually, I think maybe even September. So he's kind of been bumping it up all the time. So I seem to be doing well. I'm enjoying it. I think it's great. It's really fun. I like driving. Uh, and it's super simple when you're doing automatic. When I play video games, I normally um, do manual. You know, I, I have a steering wheel, a Logitech steering wheel, and I'm playing Dirt Rally, or I was a couple weeks ago, and I'm, I'm switching gears left, you know, all the time. 
Love it. So I, I feel like I would know roughly how to drive that way, but it's super simple not having to worry about like clutch control and switching gears or hill starts or anything complicated like that. Just doing straight up um, straight up automatic driving is super easy. It's just rules of the road. That's all I got to really pay attention to and just make sure I'm not like going too fast and I'm indicating, you know, stuff like that. So it's easy. Lots of alcohol cooking on the grill. Oh yeah, barbecues and stuff, right? Yeah, you got to do that. Parades, picnics, parties. Nice. Barbecues, yeah. Uh, if you have any projects for when Anna or this run out. So at the moment, I just started a City Skylines playthrough about two weeks ago, which is going really well at the moment. Um, so that's going to take up a lot of my time. When Anno ends, I was thinking of streaming an Anno campaign um, with all the DLC and stuff just from scratch. So I thought that could be kind of fun. A difficult one to stream, actually, because you can't pause it. So I don't know how it would go with reading chat. But no, nothing else really planned. At the moment, it's Satisfactory, Anno, and City Skylines. Those are the three big games. I was thinking during the Steam Next Fest, I was like, I'm going to do a video every day covering a different game every day from the Steam Next Fest. And I got to be honest, I played like maybe 10 or 11 demos. I just did not see anything I thought was worth covering. <laughs> so at least for me. So I was just like, oh, well, I guess I'll leave that idea. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. So... Honestly, at the moment, nothing else. Games I'm looking forward to coming later down the pike would be Frostpunk 2, Manor Lords, Falling Frontier. These are games I think would fit the channel to some extent well, and certainly I'm certainly interested in. Oh my god, I'm gonna die. Oh my god, oh my god, I'm so, so close to dying there. I'm fine though. I realized I had no power for the uh, hover pack, and you can't glide with the hover pack unless you initially had power. So I'm getting distracted. The AI limiters have been fed up all the way correctly now, right? That's done. Yeah, so that is done. The oscillators have been fed down correctly as well now. The rubber's okay. We just need to basically improve the amount of quartz crystal we're making. So I need 1,050 quartz crystal, which means I need a raw amount of 1,750 raw quartz. 1,750. So... That can be achieved in a couple of ways. What's... 780 times 2. Oh my god, is 1560. What do I need? Ah, 1750. I'll still be short. So ultimately, I've got to tap another node. Because um, I was thinking I could get away with it. Just upgrading to a Mark III miner. So, there's two of the re resources here, which is basically everything I need. But I'll have to tap another one. There's some underground out this way. And I could feed it along, and it'll come out the cave here, and I could actually join it onto the bridge that's next to where the copper comes from already. So that would just feed nicely into the factory already. So that's, I think, what we'll have to do. All the quartz, indeed. So the majority could still come from over there. I just need, like, a hundred to trickle on in along this bridge, basically. Because it's going to come from over there, so... Yeah, let's um, just see what we need to get that done. I'll need encased industrial beams, a portable miner. Alright. In Anno 1800, which DLC uses the silos? That's going to be Bright Harvest. That is a must-have DLC in my opinion. Anno 1800, of course, is on sale right now on Steam, if you, haven't, if, if you don't have it there. Or if you have it there, um, the DLCs are all on sale as well. So I highly recommend it. Great game. All its content is fully out now. And I'd recommend getting the Land of Lions DLC and Bright Harvest. Those are the two that I would start the game with. All the others, I feel like you can add yourself at your own discretion. But those are the two I would start with, personally speaking. Um, and then if you like the game, get more on the next Steam sale. <laughs> Uh, Skylands 2 will be out this year. Yeah, Skylands 2, obviously, yep. Definitely keeping an eye on that. That's supposed to be October 24th, I think. So, looking forward to that. I've been watching, following, the, they're doing great marketing with it, i got to say. They've got, like, little developer diary videos out, and they're explaining, like, the improvements on the game over the previous ones. Kind of, so far, it's been kind of perfect how they're talking about it. Um, so what did I need? I needed 10 of these, but I need portable miners, so I always build that instead. I need the equipment workshop. Here we go. Two of these. Do I have room for it? I do not. If you're not making fused frames and turbo motors yet, you can use tickets to buy them. 
I don't want to waste tickets on buying resources. It's, I can't believe people do that. <laughs> tickets are so precious, aren't they? And to just give it away on something as temporary as a resource that you can make. I mean, if you're speedrunning the game, I get it. And each to their own. But I just feel like... Until I get to the ticket number where I have all the statues, and then tickets literally mean nothing to me after that, there's no way I'm burning a ticket on something that I can make myself later down the line. Or just make right now with a bit of crafting, you know? Uh, is that it? Portable miner? Yeah, I've got all that, right? Oh, yeah, and I needed slots. That's what I came here for. Yeah, cool. And then basically, I'm going to put a bunch of these machines on top of each other. And then just hook them up in the exact same pattern. That's the idea. Alright, we got them. Hey, the Seraphur. Nice to catch your live stream after catching up with your series. Really enjoyed it so far and hoping for more to come. Thank you. Yep, more to come. Just everything takes so much time, but there is more to come. Mark three miners. Yeah, we built our first Mark three miners on the previous stream, actually. I've never built them in the video yet. I didn't actually think of it. Someone pointed it out. They were like, hey, I needed more Caterium. And I was going to tap the ore that was across down here, across this little bridge thing. And they were like, oh, you don't need to do that. Just upgrade these to Mark three, and you'll have enough then. And they were right. It was a really good idea because it saved on a lot of time and logistics to do that. Hmm. I'm looking for where this cave entrance is. I'm after forgetting where it specifically is. Oh, there's a lot of coal around here. Didn't remember that. I have a feeling it's not this far down. No. Yeah, I must have just literally just walked by it or something. I'll just climb up there and I can probably get a better view. Ugh. Spiders, yeah. I've got my gun. You're right though, my health isn't actually the best. I think anyone playing Satisfactory knows how time-consuming this game could be. More often than not, I catch myself with, just fix this really quickly, <laughs> yeah. That's why it's all about good planning. And you don't have to fix any- oh, I found it, found it. There it is. Alright, here we go. Yeah, my frame rate's already gotten way better. Just, that area is just rough. And I can be in really big and busy factories and it's not as bad as that. We have any scary music we could put on. The soundtrack's actually almost over. Uh, I can't find anything. So I, I don't want to look for too long. We'll just play regular music. It's all good. This is a super big cave. I've been in it before. They say don't build in caves, but there are resources in here, so I feel like we have to. Don't build anything complicated. I'll just put a miner down and drag a belt. I mean, that's that's all it's going to be. we will be tempted to have a little vehicle drive it, though. but Because um, caves are unstable, I would say, in terms of development. Dragging a belt, I think, is probably the safest thing to do. Hey, friend. How big is he? He's actually pretty big. Oh my god.
Okay. <laughs> I think we're good. Two hundred and forty per minute. That's pure, is it? Yeah. All right, we just drag this all the way out. We'll connect it into the copper bridge thing, and it'll just travel alongside that, and we'll bring it in. Am I going the right way? <laughs> Did we come this way? I guess so. Is that the exit? Yeah. Oh, this place is such a nightmare. Is this the right way? No, I must be heading a different... Yeah, I'm going up the northern uh, exit out to the seaside. I haven't forgotten power. We'll just have to... Do, I'll just bring the belt back and then I'll just run in and do power separately. All right, let me just... I'm obviously gotten distracted or turned around or something. I just took the wrong turn, I think, yeah. Okay. We come around this way, yeah. Okay, fair enough. it sounds like there's another one ah uh, spiders gross I hear him I don't see him whatever all right come with me Wrong turn at Albuquerque. You don't need to overclock it? No, I actually only need like a hundred. So I don't need it much. I don't need much at all. But if I do, I'll just go back. I'll, I'm bringing power back in a moment anyway. So we'll get to that in a bit. Yeah, I mean, if I don't make the other ones Mark three, I feel like I should make the other ones Mark three. Uh, so doing that, if we make the Mark three, then... We only need, I'm only short 200, so literally the amount that's on this belt will be enough. But obviously in the future, yeah, we'll have probably need quartz or need to bring this in somewhere else. Or need more of it. I turned that music down, actually, it's just a little loud. Alright, so... This is where it's heading. We need to bring it into this spot here. So let's just create a slot for it. And then get it to travel along this area. So. I'll have to just do this temporarily. Otherwise, I can't really put the belt down. But it'll be fine. We can fly alongside it. No problem. Suggestion to make a giant tunnel connection between the uh, between two factories one day, if possible. Unfortunately, you can't, like, tunnel through the ground, but it would be cool if you had two factories and you could connect them up that way. I wouldn't be against it. It's just that you can't tunnel through the ground, so... How could I connect anything, you know, at this point? You just need to find two factories that are at kind of the same height, or you maybe go underneath the water. That would work, kind of. Like, layers of cable, belts, trains, trucks, pipes, etc. Hmm. That'd be cool, yeah. I know what you have in mind. Hey, Joe. All right, so. Hmm. It's interesting to see what's in here. All right, if we make this a wall with three holes in it, like so, and then we just change it back to metal. 
Oh, why do you do this to me? There we go. Uh, we could probably find a way for the belt to travel along here, so let's just get this one. Yeah, so even even just if it came in this way, it might be okay. Not gonna look the most elegant at the beginning, but I'll probably make a bridge with it or something in the future. But for now, we'll just drag it quick and dirty. Wanted to get it at work. I'll be able to get out of here now. Okay, you didn't see nothing, alright? As far as you're concerned, it's just a hole with a belt coming out of it. That's all that matters. Alright, we can run down here and just basically get it to go as far as it can and just bring it alongside this other one here. So about there, just rotate it. Can we get it to not sp spasm on me? Yep. I actually have a blueprint with this bridge where there's three belts in it, or two, or, or one. But I never thought I'd have more than just the one I have now. Anyway, uh, what am I building today? I'm just updating my crystal oscillator factory. I'll do another bit of a recap in a second. Just once I get this belt to the other side, I'll do a quick recap, and then we'll catch everyone up who's maybe just joined or wants to know what's been going on. I was kind of waiting for the nighttime portion to be over as well so that we can actually see things. So I'm just dragging a belt here of raw quartz out. It's the last missing piece to get this factory uh, imp upgraded, I guess, is that we're just not bringing in quite enough raw quartz and make it enough rock uh, quartz crystal Dude. oh no damn it all right I'm just bring this all the way down as well so this will be traveling alongside its buddy and it's got to find a way in somewhere here I uh, actually haven't really thought that through. <laughs> that might be an issue. I'll have a look at it now in a second. Let's just get the hell out of here. All right, so just fly back up here. Looking a little cleaner, a little nicer from out here. And now that it's in place, we can get rid of the concrete I built on the bottom. That was just to actually put the belt on. That's all good now. Alright, so that's what we got. We got two belts running next to each other. We still have to feed power into the cave. And then this is going to go into this building. The lighting is hitting quite nice. Even though we've got a giant hole in the building at the moment because we just upgraded it. Uh, so yeah, the missing component right now is just really getting this belt to find a neat and nice way in here somewhere. So the way this was done was quite messy. There was actually two floor holes. I think there is an entrance in here. Yeah, here it is. There we go. Yeah, so there was a gap left here. I wonder could I shift it over? I feel like I need to, right? If we want, there's not really much room on this side. So maybe this belt. Yeah, this belt can take the position of that one. That one can move over a bit more. I think that would probably work. Didn't know I was clipping through concrete. It's probably. Oh, I think I just put that in just now, didn't I? Yeah. Alright, yeah, let's try that then. So, 
Let's get rid of this foundation just for a moment. That's the, the hole we're aiming for. Yeah, that's okay. We could put a wall around this and then it would look like it's more continuous. Okay, cool. So, give me that. Mark three belts. Grab it. And maybe get it to come down to about there. Okay, and now the new one will have to do that other curl. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll clean it up, <laughs> cause it, I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but it, I'll have to just tidy that up somewhat. Cause the height, the height just wasn't quite the way I wanted it to be, and I don't like clipping through things, so I'll try to find a way to fit that in a bit more neatly. But just in the in the case of time, you know, I just want to get this up and running, and actually see the output properly. So it's just gonna have to be the way it is. Uh, what we could do just even to maybe cover that up even slightly, although I don't even think this will look quite right is we could make it a concrete wall. And then if you just had floor holes or uh, wall holes on that, then the belts would just go in there. But from a distance, it looks okay. If I copied that and put that on that side, then you, it would it would look a bit better as well. Alright, anyway, sorry, I got very distracted with that. Make it work, make it fast, make it pretty, that order. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, what's happening? You finally able to catch the stream? Hey, Ben. The thing with planning ahead is often that you... Is often though you think about all the eventualities, you'll still forget that one thing that makes you... Yeah, no one's perfect, right? You can't plan for everything. And plus, eventually you just always end up needing more. <clears throat> So the current situation is I'm upgrading a crystal oscillator factory. So this factory was making 60 oscillators per minute with 32 manufacturers at the end, right? So 32 manufacturers being fed from all of these water extractors, refiners, all these kind of things. The recipe I've gone with for my crystal oscillators is this one. This one here using AI limiters. So we're making AI limiters by making copper steam sheets, combining it with quick wire, getting an AI limiter. They're one-to-one, -one, right? It's 1.875, 1.875. So for every one of these that goes in, you get one of these out. So we needed a hundred, we currently had this built to 60 AI limiters per minute going into 60 uh, crystal oscillators per minute. We make rubber in a different place that's delivered here and we make crystal uh, quartz crystal here. Um, there's two nodes up there making quartz crystal. We're just after going and getting another one in a cave because I'm bringing this place up from 60 to 105. So 105 is the target number at the moment. Everything is now in place for that 105, except for the raw material of quartz, uh, raw quartz and quartz crystal. So I'm being a little lazy, a little quick and dirty with this one, but we'll put in my blueprinted bridge here in the future, just to extend this across. And we just have to bring power in now um, to actually power the cave. And then we should see our stuff flowing back out. I'll have to also update where that copper is going. So those are the two things that I have to do. Let's just grab this. What am I missing? Regular wire. Okay, we can go get regular wire. While it's bright though, I think we should just take a break and maybe have a look at some of the things I've been doing in between episodes for those who haven't been following or who've missed the previous series. We'll walk out to Big Shell. I've got to go get some stuff over there anyway. Uh, which isn't too far. Are you going to make a video going over all the stuff that you've done upgrading this factory? Uh, nope. Because it's just the exact same as what was here before. It's to my own detriment, no doubt, but... With my Satisfactory series, I think it's best to always be showing new stuff. As I can see from the views, if I show stuff, if I'm doing stuff, that's stuff that I've done before. Just doesn't seem to view very well. I, I was saying it earlier, not to be negative, but the views on the series are really falling off a cliff. Like they're going pretty, pretty bad. So I feel the need to make it, make the next video like new stuff that people haven't seen that looking really good. You know, finally make those supercomputers in Big Shell, for instance. So these streams are a way to help me. Well, I'd be doing this stuff anyway, right? So it's a way to show you guys what I'm doing in between episodes and also just get your ideas and stuff like that as well. And also just, you know, have some content in between while I'm doing the in between the big thing, the, the bigger things. Uh, so after supercomputers, I need to do batteries. And then after batteries, I can do nuclear. So that's still not going to be for a while. I need drones to do nuclear, at least the way I plan to do it. And if... To get drones, I need batteries, so I have to do that. And that'll be something new. I haven't done that yet, so... As long as it's something different. 
I'm just trying to think, what did I need again? Uh, it was wire and stuff. Yeah, okay. All right, let's just quickly make our way over to Big Shell. Is my car here? No, it's out there. Maybe we'll drive back. Okay. Right, so, if you haven't watched since the last stream or the last episode, which is episode 60 as of this video, uh, the stream, I've put in these little oil mining enclosures. So people know me for my blueprints where I like to have that little mining enclosure. Uh, one of these here somewhere. I can't even remember where I put these things. Cosmetics. Yep. So minor enclosure. So it's a, a self-contained box with some windows and some lights and a belt and power ready to go. And all you have to do is put this on top of a node and then build the miner inside of it. That's the idea. Did the same now for oil. So, and obviously I did it for the theme of fitting this place somewhat. So then basically every oil node now has one of these on it. One of these little enclosures. They have lights that come on during the night and then they all connect to the... Uh, hey Jerry, by the way. They all connect to the blueprinted kind of connection bridge that I have. So again, another blueprint of mine is uh, in cosmetics. I have the connection bridge, right? So it's just a standard bridge. This is the corner variant. There's the variants that have pipes within them. So some have like three pipes within. Some have two, some have one. Some have belts within. Some have a mixture. So it's pretty standard. It's just, you know, railing on top with a little bit of metal trim to it, and then the steel frame running throughout with the belts ready to go. That's all it is. It's very simple. Uh, so I've just done that to connect up all of these oil nodes together, put them onto the, either the same pipeline or to have multiple pipelines running inside of them. Then I've cut away the vegetation that was in the way of the bridges, but not too much. You know, I try to leave it hanging over if I can. It always looks nice doing that. And then these kind of come into here. And this is our central pump strut where we've now got, you know, a series of... The water isn't hooked up yet, but the oil is all hooked up. So 666 oil all going there. So 612, 1800 oil. And then there's room for six more pipes of water to travel up. This place gets lit during the evenings as well, so the signs can be seen a bit better. Uh, it's still sort of, you know, not fully done yet. Not all the wiring has been tucked away, but we've got 600 there, 450 and 600 coming from this direction. So that's this pipe, this pipe, this pipe. <clears throat> And the rest are water. They're all being pumped up to the top. Take a very quick look at that. If we just make our way up really quickly. <clears throat> you shall look so big even from where you are. Yeah, I know. It's awesome, isn't it? I love it. The scale of it's great. All right. So, um, we have these pipes here. These are the first batch of nine, and then the other batch of nine. So in the next video, I'll be breaking these out and making, dedicating an entire strut to power. So this is a strut. A strut is basically going to be doing plastic. And now it's also the strut that handles fluids coming up into the place. So all the oil does need to go here anyway, so that's fine. But the water will need to go to other places. So it'll be sent out to the various different uh, chambers, if you will, the different struts. So those are the distances of the struts that we're dealing with, by the way. They all have their central marker now. <clears throat> if we just hide the resources, it'd probably be better. There we go. So these are just the oil extraction little places that we've set up. So we just came from that one down here. There's another one over there, et cetera, et cetera. Just wait for this autosave. In fact, while it's autosaving, just got to run to the bathroom. I'll be very quick. I can just one sec.
All right, I'm back. Did you put water collection down already? It's still just oil. The water is not actually there yet. I won't actually need the water for a while anyway. The first strut we're going to build will be power, so it doesn't require water. But the infrastructure is obviously going to need to be there, so might as well do it if we're doing all the pipes and pumps anyway. Good thing to put it there. But yep, just the oil is hooked up so far. So I'm not sure, but if we check these pipes, we'll see it in some of them. I think. There we go. Yeah. This is the way to check the inside ones. Can't remember. This, this one should have it, I think. Anyway, I don't want to get distracted with that. The, I probably just haven't powered the pumps since uh, hooking them up yet. That could be it. Um, right, so... That's just kind of what I've done since the last episode. I did want to show just one other thing really quickly. If we just hop out to this one, maybe jump down from up here. Could be fun. There we go. So F is going to be the power strut, strut. So all the the excess oil from heavy oil and from regular oil would flow this way. We'll just hop down. So I wanted to clean up the pipeline. So effectively now the only oil that travels in travels along that bridge there. And it travels along this bridge here. So people had pointed out in the comments of the last episode, I think, that there was more oil to be had out in the distance, out this way. So the power strut is actually going to be more powerful than I initially anticipated. So we've got oil extraction happening out there. There's just a very long bridge that goes out and connects this area now. I'll just take a really quick look at it. But it's as you'd expect, effectively. Just this little bridge with a bunch of these little oil mining... Sorry, I always say mining, but these oil extraction hutches. And, uh, yeah, they should have their lights come on during the evening and stuff. And this is just one pipeline. I think this is 600 straight up out here. Yep, so we just have a little stairway that gets us down. This is 150, so for instance, this could actually be a Mark 1 no indicator, couldn't it? There we go. Um, yep, so yeah, just curls around, and that's the final one just over there. So that's kind of like stuff I did in between episodes, or since the previous stream. I was like, just not happy with how I was tidying up the oil, or how all the pipes were feeding into the struts at the base pillars, and I was like, it just looks weird, so I'd rather put them on, like, bridges that go in. Um, so I just think it looks a little bit better that way, and it's a bit more tucked away. Multiple pipes are now flowing under the same bridges, rather than lots of separate pipes all going into the bottom. Yeah, the place looks nice, doesn't it? I've never been over there yet. I haven't gone into the desert yet. Like, I actually have not explored this part of the map. I think I saw the desert once before because I had spawned there. But other than that, I actually haven't been there on my save. So that should be fun to go to. You currently have your new crystal belt connected to the copper line. Oh, yeah. I know what you mean. Yep, yep, yep. I was just thinking, like, what does he mean by that? Yeah, no, I haven't forgot that. Don't worry. Uh, good point, though. We should fix the belts before we turn the power on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's still so much to be done in this place. All right, I think that is pretty much everything I wanted to show to do with this. Um, there is actually no way to travel between struts easily unless you you just have to... Oh my god. You just have to go upstairs. But we'll just jump across. I came here to get the vehicle. That was one thing I came here for anyway. Hello, your channel. Thanks, Alex. Uh... I was curious about the object limit. You were worried about it, but I never have... Yeah, I don't know how close I am to it. I don't know how you can check. I don't know if there is a way to check. Um, the only bit of oil, by the way, I haven't got yet is there's a patch here and a patch there. So I just need to get those two and put them on this pipeline. And then it's all ready to go already. So they just need to be hooked up. All right, let's just I look forward to clearing this area as well and decluttering it a bit. Once the construction site is gone. So... K 
came here for a reason. So what am I going to be building? We have our miner in place. I needed wire. That's what it was. Okay. Well, hopefully that's enough. It was just for extending power, wasn't it? Yep. Got everything I need. Okay, cool. Let's get moving. Where's that vehicle? There it is. I showed it actually at the beginning of the stream, so sorry for people who are maybe watching the VOD that have seen this bit already, but I thought I would just show how it looks on the other side. Because um, I like how it looks anyway, I just think it's kind of cool. Yeah, so that's the other pipeline, right? It connects into that one. And that's where we'll be getting a lot of the water from. So I had to get kind of creative with it. Make this make sense. So, as per usual, this bridge just travels straight out and it goes into that strut, and then we have that big pipeline there that carries it over into this one, right? So those two do that. But because two of the oil nodes are up so high on this, I mean, and it all fits onto the one pipe anyway, because it's 600, I have to like cut away the trees really carefully here and then build this weird stilt thing. Um, and there's our pipeline traveling down. So it's two impure nodes, I believe. So it's 150 each. So I've been a busy boy doing all this. For what reason? Who knows? <laughs> um, also didn't want to cut down the tree, so I left some space around it as well, which I think looks kind of nice. And that's basically it. So yeah, those are the other oil extraction areas that I thought I would just show off. Obviously pretty similar, but yep. I think it looks nice. I'm happy with it. Struggled for a while coming up with a good blueprint for it. All right, and here we are, right at the back of the uh, Crystal Oscillator Factory, straight up. In update 8, you will. Darren's still on update 7, which has a 2 million object limit. All right. What do you think of City Skylines 2 Dev Diaries? I think they're great. So far, everything looks really good. I, I gotta say, the one thing I don't think looks very good is the graphics when they zoom in. The game looks awesome from a distance. Um, I don't mean that in a bad way. Like, when you're up high, which it'll be most of the time, I guess, it looks really good. Improved lighting, better vegetation. It looks really good. Like, really, really good. I'll just show you what I mean, because no one else... I feel I must be crazy, because it seems to be just me. We talked about it in my Discord a little bit. Let me just grab the City Skylines channel really quickly and I'll show you what I mean. Only 2 million objects? Yeah, 2 million, because remember, a foundation has like 4 objects. So, I worry with all the little pieces I have in Big Shell, all the one wall segments, that it would be kind of bad. Uh, that I'll hit that limit early. So this video, I was like really surprised when they zoomed in. So when they were here, I was like, yeah, this looks great. Looks cool. I'm really looking forward to it. And I am looking forward to it. But I'll just show you what I mean. Like that. Not that, but this bit. Is it just me or does that like look really bad? Um, let's see when they show it. this bit as well. It's like, what's up with this? I'm not expecting... I know the game is obviously big at scale, but what's going on? <laughs> like, I just feel like this looks... Re How has no one said this? It's just, it seems to be only me. Maybe only I care. But I think this looks... Like, I'm playing modded City Skyline, so I do get that. But unmodded Cities 1, I feel like, looks better or close when zoomed in. The models of the vehicles and people are certainly better. But the terrain and the blending of, like, grass into pavement and stuff is worse. Vanilla, in my opinion. Woman doesn't even have any hair. <laughs> Not that I'm really picking up on that. I'm only joking about that. But I just thought, like, yeah, the roads and like the grass, really, I guess, just looks really bad. Why do people's hair keep disappearing, actually? So, I don't know. But you can tell the vehicles look good. They have like little reflections and everything. The vehicles definitely have more detail. But the roads, there's something about it. I was just like, what is going on? 
And maybe it'll get improved, but I'm just surprised that nobody, literally I've seen no one in comments or anything say anything about it. So, don't know. But you can tell me, am I just being picky? You know, it is a game at scale and you're zooming all the way in. But they make a point of showing it so much that I just felt like it was hard to ignore. Like there, it looks amazing, right? It's like, yes. Fantastic. The water, the lighting, buildings at scale, looks great. Very much looking forward to it. This, no. This situation here, not really, no. It's like nothing has any shadows or something. Maybe in engine video. In engine normally it looks better. It's it runs in Unity either way. But I don't know. Anyway, feature like I was just like I was almost like laughing. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, but I'm blacklisted from Paradox. So I doubt I'm ever getting this early, especially since I've been negative just now. But who knows? But um, like I said. Maybe it doesn't matter, and I think modders, this will be the first thing they change if it is an issue, right? The kind of flat-looking grass and flat-looking tarmac and stuff. But feature-wise, and I had complimented the marketing earlier, that I think feature-wise, the game look is looking really good, and their marketing, I think, is really good. These dev diaries are awesome. I'm paying attention to them. And, uh, yeah, I think they're doing a great job explaining the differences between the two games, you know? Which is a great... Obviously, it's, it just feels like... You sort of expect, there's one aspect I think people are upset by, which is that there's no bicycles. Because um, I was going to say, you sort of expect that, especially when it comes to Paradox a lot of the time, that their sequels are going to miss a lot of features that their previous games have. So it's like, oh, you know, are we going to get like, is there even universities? Like, is there going to be these things? And then like, they're just banging it out saying like, yes, there is ferries, there is cargo trains, there is all these things. There's like uh, terminals between linking these two things together. It's like, oh, cool. These are some of these things where DLC. So it's nice to finally see like, not everything is being rewritten from the ground up. You know, it's like, yeah, you've made DLCs with some of this stuff and now it's included in your base game sequel. And that's, I feel like a l it can't be done for everything. So I'm, I'm okay with that. But it's nice to see that a lot of it seems to be there uh, from the beginning. So I'm, I'm happy about that. I'm looking forward to it. I think so far everything they're showing is great. They have sort of modular industries and stuff. So you put down like a cargo terminal. It's not just set and forget. You kind of have now extra modules you can add onto it. The SimCity game from EA actually in 2013 kind of experimented with that, which is cool. Um, and I think it's a good idea. So you're not redeveloping or just putting more of the same thing down. You're kind of expanding what's there already. So that's kind of kind of neat. So I'm looking forward to it. I think it's good as long as it, as long as it lives up to the potential of the previous game and what they're showing. Well, not the potential. Sorry. As long as it lives up to the standard of the previous game now, and then just kind of builds these few extra things on top. I think it could be awesome. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. My only fear is like it's kind of like built for console a little bit, and I'm a big console fan. Love console games, but I do wonder how there if there are sacrifices we haven't seen yet somewhere under the hood. But I don't know. It's made in Unity, so probably not. All right. Anyways, um, so that was the tour of Big Shell. Just what the differences I made. So we're upgrading this place to do 105 crystal oscillators. Um, done the belt work. We need to do the power. We need to do the belt work downstairs, just down here because we're changing how this line moves in now. Yeah, so this is a Mark III belt doing copper, and it doesn't need to, where does it have to go? It has to go into here. And we're shifting it further over to the left. All right, just gotta think about where the, the hmm. Okay, yeah, I know what to do. All right, let's get rid of this. I'll put some music back on. Hey, Jerry, thanks very much for the gifted membership. Shout out to the support today. Really do appreciate it. Dropping fat stacks, uh, dropping 10 gifted subs. Now Jerry's here with another one. People are resubbing themselves or recommitting to being a member. So I appreciate that. So thank you. It really, really, really does make a difference. When these streams end, I go and tell Rosie. I'm like, yes, we got some channel memberships and stuff. So it's really, really nice. <laughs> it means a lot. Um, Sometimes my mouse does this crazy thing, so I have to turn it on and off. It's only with this game that that happens. Right, so I want this to actually go this way, if it can. It's got to get... No, sorry. Oh yeah, I'm a bit confused. 
This is the belt that's going to be doing quartz. The quartz has to go over that way. <laughs> so maybe I'll have to swap these back around. Yeah. Okay, I know what to do. Unfortunately, they will have to be swapped back around. Alright. Here's what we do. We kill the Batman. Now, putting it quite simply, what we have to do is actually just upgrade the belt and switch it on its way out. So the copper is going to flow on this one. We do that though. If the copper was flowing on that one, how do we get to this one? I don't know. The belts are just going to cross no matter what. Hang on then. On the road to CS video day. Yeah, so I actually teased people. I said, if you can get me to 80, what is it? 85,000 subscribers by the end of the week. I'll do a video every day for City Skylines, as well as all the other videos I do anyway. Because um, I just hit 80,000 the other day. And... Um, yeah, a lot of YouTubers say this, but you can see kind of like, oh, a lot of people aren't sub that watch regularly. So I was like, maybe if you just tell people, I never ask people to sub, really. At the beginning of series, I usually mention it, but I don't really say it during videos. I just don't think about it. But um, maybe a little reminder out there might help. Who knows? It's an ambitious target, though. 5,000, I'd say. So copper and quartz. Oh, I'm just trying to think of an easier way to do this. All right. This should work even though it's not very elegant. You're going to explode in me. These bees, I can hear them hovering around me, buzzing. Oh, I'm so kind of confused. Where is this thing, by the way? It's freaking me out. I don't see it. Anyway, okay, I guess I'll leave it. Alright, so here's the issue. If the belts are going to cross and I don't have room to kind of move them up and over each other, at least not in this floor, right? So that's kind of like what I'm trying to solve. So copper has to go along this way and quartz... Quartz ultimately just has to go over here, like pretty close. So it would be ideal if this was the quartz and if that was the copper. So I guess we could do that, and maybe I'll just sort it out then behind the scenes later. We'll just leave it the way it was. Wait. Yeah, so we'll just switch these back around, leave them the way they were. And I'll have to just tidy it up myself. I'll need to put some foundations in. I'll have to redo the bridge a little bit and move the pillar, but it can be done. So yeah, quartz going in that way now. And copper going in that way. So the belt's just going to have to clip. I can't even get through here. Why won't that connect? Ooh, a smart splitter. That would be... Uh, no, the volume is too high for one belt. Yeah. Well, I just need to move... I just need to rearrange these. Uh, that's what I'm thinking anyway. If this was doing copper and if that was doing quartz, it would work way better. And that can be done. It just means that instead of bringing in the quartz from the right side, I just wrap it around the back of the building and bring it out the left. That's That's... Ultimately, what I was thinking and what I'll probably do, and that'd be much easier. And I'll be building, this will be a bridge, it won't just be a belt. So the bridge will be at the back of this building, going straight into the back of it, like the way this is. And then from the center out of it will come the uh, raw quartz. So it'll, it'll be fine. I'm making it sound like a much worse problem than it is. It's just, here it's a 
flipping mess because of the way this place is built just on this on this specific area but i'll fix it it just it takes time it needs um a foundation there for, so i can get kind of do things i need to also just kind of delete these put down the belts first nice and smoothly and then build the bridge over it and that will kind of hide it away just don't want to spend ages doing a little cosmetic thing like that i'd rather just get this up and running we've only got like an hour left or so so i'd like to just get that done yeah, people like their ceiling rails. I don't really like them, to be honest. I mean, they're okay. I just I find I just don't, never really need to use them. I've tried to use them multiple times. All right, so. That's back where it was. We'll just reconnect this just as it was, and things will get flowing again. Okay, so that's the copper continuing back on. Right, so the quartz needs to go over here. Alright, good. Alright. Um, finally caught a hey, um, tab shift escape. Tab shift escape. Hey, Swifty. He's back. Alright, cool. Uh, so yeah, like I said, we're just improving crystal oscillators. I've been really, really slow with it because I'm indecisive, but we're making some progress now. So effectively, we've just drawn a line of raw quartz from over that cave along the bridge that we've already got established it's coming in here now underneath the floor and the raw quartz needs to go join these machines now to do this correctly how many do we need so according to my little chart thing here we need 46 47 constructors now previously i had 32 i'm just looking at my excel sheet so currently we've got 26.6 .6 constructors so we've got 27 constructors And now I need to add a further 20 constructors doing the same thing. Now, I had said, actually, that if I don't stack them on top of each other, I could just push the building out further. That would actually alleviate a lot of the problems I have with that bridge, thinking about it. Because the building could just come out further. Whoops. There we go. Or I could stack them on top of each other. I'm thinking on top is probably better. Let's do that. All right. Yeah. Okay. Could maybe go a little higher, actually, considering the height of the ceiling right now. Maybe just one higher. Don't worry about the power. I'll readjust that, but we'll latch on to the same nodes. And then I'll build nodes underneath that look in the same position. If you leave the wires in place, that way it's easy to know where to put them. Makes things a little easier. Ate some biscuits and sausage. Biscuits and sausage. Are you, what is a biscuit to you? Out of curiosity. Is it a scone? Or is it a cookie? Because a biscuit to me would be like... Well, biscuit. I don't know how to describe it. But it's very unusual to have that with a sausage. I'm thinking maybe you had a scone. What I would call a scone. Ah, these are constructors doing quartz crystal. I wonder, do I have that? Silica? No, I don't know if I have it um, blueprinted, excuse me. Let's see, undefined blueprints, maybe? There we go. Got him. And this actually has its... Oh, yeah, it, ha it comes with its uh, power baked in, but I actually don't really want that. 
I might open it up in the blueprint designer and just switch that out. Bread? Yeah, that makes a bit more sense. <laughs> I don't get how critters respawn for you. The only places they have for me are... Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea why. It might be because I've switched version from update 8 to update 7 back and forth several times, so maybe they just somehow they respawn? I'm not sure why it is. Um, Alright, we need to go for another floor. All right, my blueprint designer is up here. We'll just load up one of these blueprints. We can just edit it really quickly, and then we just need to put down 20 of those machines. All right. See if we can do this hopefully easily, I don't know. I just wonder where the actual start is. I'd like to line it up if I could, you know? Blueprint mode won't do that because we're encroaching on it. I suppose I can line it up by the power thing. That would probably give me a good indication of where it was. Does that line up right to the edge? It seems like it does, actually, so this would come right out to the edge. And then it's in just a bit. Yep, that seems to be it, actually. Yep, that's it. All right, once one's down, it's easy from there. Easy breezy. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then we need another row of ten, and that's it, in theory. Right. Seems right. <laughs> okay, there we go. Twenty constructors done. Love your content, thanks, Pratham. I do think it's a good idea to go swimming after just shaking off swimmer's ear. <laughs> You're so strange. Uh I haven't got swimming in a long time. Really want to get back into to, to do that at some point, though. I feel like it's really good exercise. It's easy. I feel like it's like enjoyable exercise. Um, so, one slight issue here <laughs> is that these are all facing the wrong way now. In a way, is the extra ore. Well, I guess actually the extra ore is coming from both places at the same time, so that's fine. All right. So the quick fix. I suppose here would be just connecting these to the power node that's right next to them. That one's already full. How come these don't have a... Oh, I came over too far, did I? I have many. Just one machine. Well, it's even this way, so I'll leave it the way it is. The way it is. Connected to that one. Um, okay, so there we go. My mom gonna give me earplugs. <laughs> good. That's a good thing. Alright, um... Let's see. So we have to get feed these guys their quartz ore. What kind of belt are you rocking? I suppose Mark V is a good idea. Get them what they need quickly. An auto save about to hit, so let's just take a break. Wait for that to be done. All right. Again, sorry if I missed any uh, chat. If I've missed anything, just write it again. I'll catch it now. I pretty much promise. <laughs> They should respawn if you don't build anything near their spawn point. Oh, you th oh right. Yeah, that seems to be the case. It seems like a, I, if I'm not in the area for a while, they'll just respawn. 
And if nothing new has been built in a while, like you said. Alright, autosave complete. Okay, they're all hooked up. <clears throat> Just gotta hook up these ones. And then the outputs. So, I remember this. Yeah, there's a weird smart splitter thing going on here as well. In case there's like overflow issues. I'm playing Geodash on my Chromebook. I don't know what that is. Jesus, I thought my autosave was long. Yeah, this is really long during streams. It's not that long normally. I don't know. Like, my frame rate's a lot worse during the streams as well. So that's why. I mean, it's it's getting pretty long. I think the save is up to 11 or 12 kilobytes now. Um, uh, 12,000, so 12 megabytes. But, um... It's really not that bad. Even just while recording, it doesn't seem to... Recording takes nothing from my frame rate, but streaming does. I suppose because it's compressing and s deli sending packets at the same time. Because it doesn't really do that when it's recording. It's just r using a lot of write speed. Um, Alright, so these are all hooked up. So it's just these then. The outputs. What's the total output of the quartz crystal? It's going to be 1,050, so it does need its own belt. I want this to stay as 3, so... I'm just trying to think, where can these go? You could go out to the right, actually. I mean, removing a lot of these. Um, let's see... What's down below? Alright, let's do this. So we'll just tuck this in a little further. That's our target. We're aiming for in there. And we can have both belts go into it, actually, thinking about it, so that's good. So we'll need a double wall hole. I'm gonna go with this. Where does this come from? Oh, that's fine. That's never gonna change, so that's okay. Yeah, we'll just stick with the double wall hole then. I was thinking it's a bit close, but it's okay. It truly is never gonna change. It's coming from the train station. I don't know why I can't think straight at the moment. Okay. I guess that works. It seems that's not really, it doesn't look right to me, but it is going to work. It just doesn't feel right. <laughs> Ever thought of playing any other game on stream? On Steam or stream? On stream, not at the moment. Probably Anno 1800. I plan on only ever streaming games that are continuations of series. I used to stream on Twitch. I streamed for five years there. I played different games almost every day. At least three times a week, anyway. It used to be five times a week, and then I changed it up when I'd come back. But yeah, my streams are always... They were fine. I usually had about 100 viewers. Kind of the same as they are now. But now I just do it really in service of videos. Uh, worth picking up a cheap ARC card for AV1 streaming? I actually have one built into the computer that I don't use. Um, 
It, I can't actually remember what it is. And I have an Elgato Pro 60 thing. The problem is you often need a different computer for that. I don't know. I could, I'll could. i look into it, though, actually. It's a good point that you bring up because I do have one something. I can't even remember what it is, but there is something that is built into the computer. A capture card was... They basically... My computer had a lot of issues when I bought it, and they custom built it for me. So I went to it like a, a manufacturer that builds PCs for you, you know? And it had tons of issues. And one of the things they did to kind of apologize for it, I suppose, was added in a capture card thing. So I've never used it. It's baked in somewhere. <laughs> but I don't even know how to access it, to be perfectly honest. I've never seen it come up like in any file systems. or It's probably in the device manager somewhere, I, I assume. So what I was thinking is this. Instead of that last one just on the end. Well, that could be there, but it needs to face out that way. This can still come in this way. That can still go in this way. But then we hit a floor hole here. And then that'll go down, and there's room for the second line now next to us. Now, it looks like they line it up really nicely. We could push it out further. But it might not want to do that. Let's see. No. Need to use road anarchy to make that work. Um, hmm. Okay. Change this one then. There we go. Let's just reconnect these. All right, so now everything is flowing this way, and this one is flowing this way, and then they go in, hit into this, and then we bring this down all the way to the bottom, and we feed it out towards our exit point. Now, the only th issue with this is that um, I was going to do the same up ahead, right up here. But that, of course, would mean that I guess the placement would be slightly off. But if we put it somewhere like there, it could maybe just join into it, I think. We could try that. Yeah, that goes really tight on space. Because I've made it, so I guess. All right, let's try this again. I'll just con connect these up, and then we'll readjust them if it needs to be. Home stretch now, really close to the end. It's almost like building this upgrade has taken longer than just if I made the factory from the beginning. But I don't know if that's quite true. What company did you commission for that? Well, I, um, it was Cyberpower. So, cyberpower.co.uk. All my PCs I've ever had have been from them. But, I gotta be honest, the last time I was worked with them, it was so... <clears throat> my PC broke five times in the space of the first two months. Um, they had a custom water cooling in there. I basically got the most expensive thing I could get. It was like a 5,500 pounds. I wanted all the bells and whistles. It was from a job. And then I was like, yep, give me your best liquid coolant. That was like, like one of the things they sell is like, we do this custom tubing and it's supposed to be great. And I was like, okay. And I watched reviews and stuff. I was like, all right, let's do it. And uh, yeah, it just, it just wasn't working. Every, I don't know if it was, you know, in transit, it got broken or something, but it would be making a really loud noise or it just wasn't working. The PC was shutting off because it was overheating. It just wasn't ever working. Five times it went back to the manufacturer of that PC. And uh it cost me a lot of money. Not the PC. The time away from work at the time. Really, really, really frustrating at the time for me as a content creator. So, um, I don't know if I'll use them again. I mean, they ultimately built me a PC without the water cooler in it, and it works fine. Now I have an all-in-one cooler. And it works great. There's no problem. If that was just the case from the beginning... Then sure. So I, I'm kind of like to myself, I'm like, well, I might use them again. Just never buy water cooling again from them. But at the same time, I kind of think like, I don't know if I should really reward the experience. Because not only that, like the customer service aspect wasn't the, wasn't the best. It wasn't like the worst, but it wasn't the best. I it certainly did not feel like a priority anyway. That's, yeah, it took a long time to get responses and stuff. Uh, and considering the amount of money, I, I just felt like... I deserved a bit more, but at the same time, they were kind of saying, like, well, you know, we treat all our customers the same. It's like, I guess I get that, but I don't know. I'm worth 10 of your cust your normal customers almost, so... Well, not maybe that much, but, you know, worth maybe 5 the average customer. 
I'm not saying I should have a priority, but when the when the PC breaks the third time, maybe then look into it a bit more. When it breaks the fourth time, something seriously going wrong. <laughs> when it broke the fifth time, and I still have to wait like a week to hear a response, that wasn't uh, that wasn't something I enjoyed. Putting it mildly. Build your own? Nah, no way. Dude, I swapped out a graphics card once and my PC breaked itself. I'm not touching these things. These things are stupid. <laughs> and so am I. So that's why I'm not doing it. But now it's not worth my time to do that. I don't get any satisfaction from it. I don't like PCs. I don't like PC building. They always break for me. PCs always break and I don't do anything with them. That's weird. All I ever do is play games on them. That's it. I don't download any weird stuff. I've got nothing on this PC except Steam and Premiere Pro, and that's it. That's it. <laughs> There's like nothing else here, and obviously the browser. And they just always break for me. I got a Steam Deck recently, broke. Just broke, it broke within two weeks. So it wouldn't run Octopath Traveler, and they were like, it's the game. And I was like, it's not the game. Everyone else says they can run it fine. And they sent me out a new deck and it works fine. I don't do anything weird with these things, but I have a very bad reputation with PC stuff. Consoles, on the other hand, I still have my PS3 launch day, 60 gigs, backwards compatible and everything. Perfect. PCs? Every PC I own breaks. Fucking sucks. <laughs> Sorry, but anyway, I'm very passionate about how disruptive they've been to my life, so I just, I will not build my own. No way. And why did the, I don't know why the PC broke when I swapped, swapped a graphics card. I think what happened was I had it on its side. It wasn't turned on while it was on its side, but I think the, the AIO was getting old. It was five years old. And typically all in one coolers, apparently that's their kind of lifespan is about five years. So I had it on its side, maybe air moved around it a bit or something and then it wouldn't turn on anymore. So that was actually what instigated the buying of a new PC in the first place, thinking about it. And it led to not having a PC for nearly two months because of all the issues I ended up having that time. And Jackie Fish was the one who sent me that graphics card. He actually sent me one. He's another content creator. And I really appreciate him, but we were joking. He's like, he actually like cost me so much by trying to help me out because it took my channel down for like two months. All right, anyway, we are linked up. So that's the raw quartz all linked up now pretty much. So they should be flowing along there. Two separate lines, not in each other's way. I just now need to give them the, the actual raw quartz. Sorry, that's the quartz crystal that'll be coming out. I almost commissioned Digital Storm for my current PC, but I ended up building it myself. From what I heard about Digital Storm, though, they're pretty good. Yeah, see, I'd, I wouldn't mind doing it. I, I don't mean to be so passive, uh, aggressive almost. It, it's, you should build your own if you have the time. If I was doing this as a hobby, I would totally do that because it's so much cheaper. You save half the cost if you can just build it yourself. And there is a satisfaction in building it. If you're someone that likes satisfactory, you probably like building your own PC. Things can go wrong though. So it is it is a balancing act. It's not like you, you could break your own CPU if you don't apply the thermal paste correctly or if something goes wrong, if, if you got a little bit of electrostatic on your hands or something, you might break your RAM, anything could happen. So you also have to be very careful and read up on what you're doing. You need to have the proper case. You need to know the exact power supply you know that you're going to end up needing the space for all your components to fit within that how it's all going to be you know cable managed and moved around and stuff airflow making sure you keep the thing cool it's not easy if you really want to do it correctly so i kind of thought look i'll pay the premium it's for my job it's a big expense technically so i'll pay the extra and that way it's their problem it's their warranty if it breaks they have to fix it you know Whereas for a job, I, it's just a little risky saying like, I'm going to build it myself. And if it breaks in two months because of some unknown issue, who knows how long it would take me to identify and then fix and solve that. And I'm out of work for those two weeks. So it's like, it's just a bit more important in, for me as a non-hobby to make sure that that's just all taken care of. You know, for someone else is effectively has to worry about that. Oh, this wasn't the way it was supposed to be. Sorry. I don't know if this is going to work, we'll see. This is supposed to come down like so. Uh, 
That merger is supposed to go right there then. So it's on the line. Okay. Don't know if this will work. It might. Sometimes they just, yeah, they slot in anyway. Good. There we go. All right. Okay, so crystal quartz crystal is flowing again, so that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so it's just all the last thing to do now is just feed these machines their raw quartz. That's it. Well, there's two things. We got to make fresh turbo motors to make Mark III minor. <laughs> um, it's either that or how much do these consume? 37.5? Seven fifty. Okay, yeah, we could do this. Let's get this done quick. I hate the fact that I've left crates down there. I'll have to get them later. Okay. If you live in rural Africa, then you just have to learn how to do certain things, like building your own PC. <laughs> Next time I'm going to get, like, server-grade quality cooling for my PC as well. Recently built my own PC. Oh, also, just recently I heard, like, my PC is making all these noises again, so I bought a cooler in anticipation of it dying. Um, but it actually, the noises went away. <laughs> so, it seems like it was just, uh, apparently, people had said, like, it was just air bubbles trapped in the AIO for a bit. Just jiggling it around a little bit, while off, obviously. Uh, seem to clear that right up, so not a big deal. All right, so we're extending power into the cave network so that we can get this quartz to flow back. And then we're going to overclock it. First rig is a P2233MMX. I don't speak in Chinese as far as I'm concerned. I've never heard of any of that. Yeah, I, I'm not much of a PC gamer. I was a console gamer pretty much up until 2013, so very late. I had played PC games a little bit. I used to play Age of Empires 2, played a little bit of The Sims. I played, weirdly, I played Oblivion on PC because it wasn't on PlayStation yet at the time. It was only on 360. Um, so Age of Empires 2 would have been like in the late 90s I was playing that. Rome Total War 2004. I found that game. So I, I had dabbled in PC gaming, but it was kind of like our home PC that did all the stuff. You know, it's not like I was really invested in it as a gaming machine. And then I kind of fell out of PC gaming for a long time when I wasn't interested in Total War for a while. Because I, I like Roman Medieval, but I wasn't really inter interested in Empire and Napoleon. And then when Shogun 2 came out, I was like, oh, cool. I'll get a PC. This game seems cool. But uh, I didn't have any money. I was in college, so I got a laptop, and I played it there. And that was when I made my first Steam account, so that would have been like 2012. And then in 2013, they announced Rome 2. And I was like, okay. Got my first job. I was an intern at a games company. And I was like, let's fucking go. And I spent all the money I earned on a PC. It was about three grand at the time. 3,000 euro. And I built, uh, or didn't build it. I bought it from CyberPower, my first gaming PC. For Rome 2 and then Rome 2 came out and it was a massive disaster and I lost the ability to smile for about 10 years and be happy and then uh made it my job <laughs> started complaining about Rome 2 in videos and uh not just complaining about it but I started uh doing like video essays type things about AI and games and stuff and um while I was studying that stuff in college and then uh yeah basically became a full-time YouTuber and then I decided to join Creative Assembly for a couple of years, and then I left and decided to continue doing YouTube on my own. The rest is history. So since 2013, I've been like pretty much exclusively a PC gamer. Hey. No way, is there quartz here already? Oh, sweet. That was pretty quick. I thought I beat it to it. So the quartz is coming in from there. We have to send it into somewhere up here. So maybe I'll sh ah yeah it's flowing the opposite direction. This is annoying, but I feel like it just it does just make sense. It's either that or run the line underneath. 
and bring it out here. Could do that, maybe? Let's just see if it would work that way. I feel like stuff is probably... Oh, no. I was going to say stuff is probably in here blocking it. But nope. We're actually... We're clear. Lost the ability to smile. Dude, I've been thinking about it. It's like I used to be a total fanboy. When Rome 2 was announced, I was telling everybody. I was like, this is going to be the best game ever. Like, I'm so hyped. I really was. I was like, I even just recently I saw, uh, it was like a Facebook memory thing. It was like eight, uh, nine years ago you posted this and it was like an update of my cover photo and being, it was like Rome 2 and I was just like so happy telling people it just got announced and stuff and it's like, oh my god. It's like embarrassing to look back on because it's like, I can't believe I was so hyped for a video game at that, at that stage. And I was, I was 21, you know, it's not like I was a baby or a, a teen or something, which is a bit more acceptable. Anyway. What am I looking for? It's Splitter, right? Actually, I actually don't even need a... Oh, no, I do. Splitter here. Yep. Anyways, where I'm going with this is basically since then. And I'm not saying it's because of that. It's just somewhere around that time. I think I just lost the ability to get excited for anything. Because I've I'm never excited for anything. Like, at all. So it... I kind of joke, but I do think it actually killed a part of my personality. Because <laughs> when you are really, really excited for something, and it just, and you're totally, you totally have faith in it, and it just become, it just turns out to, hey. What the hell? Alright, how did this get warts on it? How did that just happen? I built a lift. The lift is not connected to... These are the inputs, not the outputs. How did that just happen? I have no idea how that happened. That's weird. That's really weird. What's going on? Where is this coming from? <laughs> it's not connected in here. I can see. Wrong direction, though. It can't be the wrong direction. It's, it's like, generating... Like, this is flowing that way. This is flowing that way. <laughs> so, what... I don't understand. I've connected to the splitter. You think it's connected to this? I mean, it has to be, right? Let's get rid of this. Dun, 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 dun. It's not. Not connected to it. It must be getting it from there, obviously, but I, I mean, it's the only logical thing, but it clearly shouldn't be, right? This is coming straight out, but it's almost like a little bug. It's like, because this is next to it, this is getting some quartz. Isn't that weird? That is weird. I think I found a new little weird quirk in the game. I've never seen that before. Very strange. So yeah, we'll have to... Um, reverse that so this needs to be reversed because for some reason it's not but it the, here's the weird thing it's pulling from there as if it's like facing into it or something it's not even connected to it you know it's it's back was facing it so it's just a bit weird it is but it isn't a glitch that is a glitch hang on i'm not gonna let this slide so let's reverse this right so that's it's heading in okay fair enough this is now an input that's going in that way even though the belts are yeah, going, going in. They're going in. Away from here, right? They're going away from here. There's no way that this could potentially send anything down. Okay, we all get that. That's fair enough. That's an established lore rule. So here, I'm going to pull an elevator down with an output, right? It's coming out. Something is coming out. What's coming out? Nothing, because nothing is going in. Yes? We'll leave it here, okay? Let's just put it there for a sec. Nothing, right? That's what you'd expect. Nothing, because nothing is coming out of the elevator. Nothing crazy about that. It's exactly what I'd expect. What I wouldn't expect is for the same elevator to have its back facing a splitter for stuff to come out. And yet it does. So that is a weird, weird thing. Okay? But don't say it's not a glitch because it is. Jeff. <laughs> that is not supposed to be happening. You are not supposed to be able to transfer materials through the back of a lift. Okay. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. But we found a new glitch. It's a fun one.
it begs the question, what else could you do with that, you know? If this was a, a merger, could I send things through that and up at the same time? I, I actually want to know. I need to know this now. This is now a merger. So I've not connected anything there. Give me that. So there's nothing in that machine anymore. If I was to now have, let's say, just give me some sort of box. Yeah, because that's where I'm aiming. Whatever. And I put this in it. And I bring this down into there. Felt is too steep, of course. Jesus Christ, nothing is ever simple in this game. Okay. Okay. Well, it's not too high. What do you think? Will it go into the machine? Logically, it shouldn't, right? It's going into the elevator. But no. But what if we put this down second? That's there now already. We'll reverse it in a second as well, just to see. Okay. Very last thing then would be reversing this so it's the opposite direction. Oh yeah, I see. Okay. Yeah, I guess not then. So it doesn't really matter then. Hmm. Interesting. Well, anyway, it's still an interesting bug. We know it works one way, so it doesn't work where you can send things through it. But it works where you can get things out of it. From behind. That's weird. But yeah, kind of fun to see a little glitch. Okay. Anyway. it's Well, that was a different test. So that test was just to see like... Oh, so I can pull a lift down. And I can get things from behind the lift if it's placed next to a splitter. That seems to be what the glitch is, yeah? There's a lift and a splitter, and the lift is acting as if it's connected to the splitter, even though its back is facing it. So that's the glitch. On a merger, it didn't seem to do it. Do it. So it didn't merge with it. It only split from it. So, I don't know. I'm just kind of curious to see, you know, how that actually worked. Anyway. So let's just fix this. Put this up the right way now. All right, good. Pull this down. Now we're facing the other way, so it shouldn't send any, spit anything out at me. Good. Understood. Fixed in update eight, you think? <laughs> Maybe. I'm gonna say not. That's a very obscure one. Although, the way how creative people are out there, I would actually not be surprised if people have done that many times over. It might be on the QA site. You can always see those things anyway. All right, let's just connect this bad boy. All right, so there we go. Finally, we have raw quartz from the cave flowing out. Now, I actually forgot to overclock it. It needs to be overclocked. We'll have to do that. That's so coming up to here. So the last thing then would be to get this and bring it into there. Let's cut that because it's clipping the machine a bit. So we'll just go like this. All right, there we go. Let's just top this thing up. Nothing goes to waste. Okay, so they're all doing their thing. Everything's all hooked up now. So that's the extra 20 constructors doing quartz crystal. Uh, these need to be overclocked and increase their speed because the one miner in there isn't going to be enough for everything. What's going to have to happen is this splitter, when it hits overflow, is going to have to come up and merge into this line. That's the only way it's going to work. But we have the technology, so this will be doable. Bonk. I'll just connect that up. No, I'm not ready for the autosave. I'm not ready! No! Okay. Um, I did overclock the cave, did I? 
Why don't I remember that? <laughs> but okay, that's good. Then we won't run back in. So it is three times boosted. That's good. So 600 per minute. We needed something like, was it 750? Yeah, it was 750. So there's 150 that's missing for the top row of machines. Just 150. Um, and we can get that in in just a second. And just throw it up here through the over um, overflow. All right. That should be fine. All right, so um, got to fly up here, and we'll just overclock these. They're already overclocked, but there's some room for more. Do we need an extra 150? Oh, sh oh yeah, that's okay. So five. Let's do 575. Just trace that line really quickly and see what that one's doing. Okay. So we now have five seven five plus five seven five plus six hundred. 1750. My Excel sheet says we need 1750. So there we go. That's an even amount. Now we could, you could just bump it, right? Just to make sure. And that should definitely work. But I'll leave it. I'll leave it. It's supposed to do the rate we set. So it should work eventually once it all gets manifolded out. And these are Mark 5 lifts. So there we go. All the way down. Now, the last thing with this then is all this quartz gets made into quartz crystal it all flows out and down yep so it'll take a while for these to get to full capacity but they'll both fly along and go into here hmm? they both go in here both lines and then do i have these both going out yeah this is already done actually so they're both going out totally fine they separate they're Mark V belts the whole way, as far as I know. Both travel along, and then they both go up. So yeah, I think that's it then. I think we've done it. I think this place is now operating at 105 per minute. I think. I'd have to, whoops. I'd have to just leave it for a while and check the machines and see if they hit 100% efficiency, you know? But it seems, I think that's it. Uh, one thing I'll just check on, just while we're here, is the... Ever played Minecraft? Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> I love it. Big Minecraft fan. I haven't played it in a, in a while properly, but um, I used to play it a lot. And I love it. I think it's a great game. It's one of my favorite games of all time. 100%? Uh, 100%? What about this one? 80%. You a little low on copper sheets, buddy? The things like that I might have to look into, otherwise we not we need all these machines to be at 100 for us to truly say that we've had 105 per minute yeah what's going on oh we did cut off copper for a while that could be why actually yeah because we stopped copper flowing but it's it's back up and running now so it should be okay i think that's just the reason the copper starts this journey down here and it goes manifold all the way down to the very end so if we just check this last machine this is probably the one that's the least efficient i would imagine 92, so it's getting back up there. Actually, the one before the last one, usually. 89. Yeah, so that, well, at least we found, found the culprit. I know that they have enough copper. We just cut it off for a while, so that's okay. So once they get up to 100, these will get up to 100, the steam sheets. And once they're up to 100, uh, we should be good. Although apparently they are. Which ones aren't at 100? I wish you could see this at a glance. There's a mod that lets you, like, just check the machines, I think, by looking at them. They all say 100, so if they're all at 100, they should have enough copper sheets coming out, I think. Oh, I think we feed this from the opposite direction, actually, so that would make sense why it's not. And there's all these ones, too, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot. We've actually added a bunch more, right? That would be the reason. 81%. Okay, cool. Are you, are you okay for water? Yeah. All right, good. So, TLDR. Big summary of the whole thing. In the last stream... I added all of the extra refineries 
to do the extra copper, right? So basically all of these refineries, all of these ones, and a few of these, uh, those ones over there have been added in. So that's an increase the copper production and an increase the Caterium production. To get extra Caterium, we went out and we created Mark III miners for the Caterium extraction down this way. These went from Mark II to Mark III. So got enough, we, I can't remember the amounts, but we did the, uh, the numbers and the calculations and we got the right amount out of there. That, and that didn't have to change because there's a, a vehicle that kind of does that route automatically and it just goes into a truck station. There's two belts that can obviously go in and the trucks don't really obey. Like they can carry like and transfer loads at a time, so there's no issue there. They should be getting the right amount, so the Caterium should be okay. The Copper should be okay. They get made into AI limiters. The AI limiters go back into this room, the central storage room. The belt's been improved from 60 to now be able to do 120, so now we're potentially doing 105, which is what we should be. They all go out, they go to the same place, and now we've just added the 22 extra manufacturers upstairs. And at the beginning of the stream, we hooked them all up to all the logistics. So we can actually take a little look at that. It's going to be a while before they hit 100% though, but it'd be nice to see how they're doing. So they're traveling up to here. That was the old system, right? They, they go into that floor, but then some of them split to go up further. I feel like if there is issues in this place, it's going to be the way I've split things because it's not split evenly anymore. We're just, I'm just adding on a splitter sort of to take more stuff in a different direction, except for the quartz line. That actually has its own purpose-built line now. We'll just go up again. When will the stream end? I'm not sure. 30 minutes or so, probably. I don't know. Right. So, yep, the rest of it came up here. So originally, this place was designed where everything just came out facing right in front of me. But conveniently, we were able to expand the place out the back and just add the belts onto the same splitters. So that worked out really nicely. And now these places seem to be pretty full up. I'm seeing stalled belts everywhere I go. So that's good. And they have their quartz crystal now here at the bottom as well, which is great. So this would mean, if all things are working, that all of these manufacturers are powered on right now. We can check that with the lights. See, do we see any flickering yellow lights? Well, there's two here because we've we've turned those off on purpose. So forgetting those, everything's green right now. Yeah, so those ones are powered down on purpose. I built I only needed 22, and I built 24 by accident. So we did it. That's it. 105 crystal oscillators per minute. Maybe not 100% efficient. I don't know just yet, but at least all the manufacturers are getting all their bits. A flickering yellow light in there. What the hell is that? Mm -mm. I do not think so. Back in quartz crystal. And you as well, I bet, right? Yep. That's what I said by splitter issues would probably be the the problem if there is any. So, we have two separate belts. This belt is split twice. This one needs to send its overflow to there. That's how that will work. Okay, so you're going to have to send your overflow. So let's get a smart splitter. There we go. That little overspill, that means that nothing should really go to waste with the quartz crystal and it should um, go out there. And the ones downstairs shouldn't have any issue. I don't think so. Not to be that guy, but happy Independence Day to all my fellow Americans. Hey, that's no problem at all. Uh, and yeah, happy happy 4th of July. Happy Independence Day. Good for you guys. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind people saying that. People were saying it earlier. It's totally cool. Nice to have a little celebration. Bit of a holiday. Why the hell not? All right, looks like we did it. So is there anything people would like to maybe have a look at before we wrap this stream up? 
We could take another little ga gander around Big Shell and have a look at what's needed actually up ahead. I can talk through the problem that I'm going to have up there and I'm not sure what i got to do yet with it. Also, one other thing is just toss a bit of this into the recyclers. I was going to do train station stuff, but no, that's it's too annoying. <laughs> I'll do it myself. Um, but also, we'll have to. I need to move the stations slightly. But then I have to set it up so that they take out the crystal oscillators that come back in here. Which you can see are just all going into the overflow right now. Uh, they need to go up to the railway and then they, you know, 80 of them per minute have to go over to Big Shell. Big Shell, did you solve the two yellow light issue? Did I solve the two yellow light issue? I can't remember what that issue is. The two yellow light issue. Yeah, you'll have to refresh my memory. I started this game today in the Northern Forest and I'm already six hours in. So addicting. Nice. Yeah, it's great. If you have any uh, questions or whatever, feel free to ask. Be around for another little bit. Or you can join my Discord. Some people are in there talking about it. Discord.gg slash WDP. Go to the Satisfactory channel. Get chatting. Not many people in there, so we need to get more and more people in. I mean, there actually is a decent amount of people in there, but not everyone's like talking all at once. Um, oh, two of the machines had yellow lights? Yeah, yeah, the reason for that... Oh, in that place? Yeah, well, actually, we could check on that. It'll take a while to work itself out, but I think that overflow fix should fix it. So the two that are yellow here, they're just powered off right now. I'm surprised they don't have red lights when you... I flick the switch, like, they're off. So they're not receiving materials. I've Flick that switch. They're not supposed to, anyway. But anyway. Um, so yeah, they're purposely off, so just forget about those. They don't count. These ones are all good so far. So the two that were just in here really quickly, it won't be an instantaneous fix. It'll take a while. But I imagine the issue is fixed. We're seeing all green lights right now. But, you know, we might see fluctuations. But now that we're sending overflow in here, it should just get divided up. Like, we're seeing it fill up, actually, so that's good. So it'll just take time before you notice the percentages gain. They have to do multiple cycles, but they're at 78 now. Once this does another cycle, it'll go up to maybe like 80 or something. We'll see if it has enough before the next cycle. It does. It went up to 79. Now, it seems to be getting enough. That's the important thing, right? So everything looks okay there. If I want to be really diligent, I suppose I should check downstairs. Just There's a floor manufacturer's one level down. One of the new constructors isn't powered. Okay, thank you for that. I'll have a look now in a second. Oh, sorry, I need to go into the floor down. Aha, we have a row of yellow lights. Oh, just because they're totally full. Oh, they must not have a way out, actually. What the hell? Oh my god. This has probably always been like that. I didn't cut this belt. <laughs> I haven't used crystal oscillators for anything, so it's very possible that this has just always been that way. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Well, now they're rolling again. That'll add a little bit of congestion, but all those machines should start up again. So what else did I miss? The stalling manufacturers are fixed, yes. According to Shimo. The assembler showed the name of the alternative recipe you used. Yes, machines show the name of alternate recipes. The encyclopedia does not. Uh, in your opinion, what's the best biome to start in? I have a good 200 hours in the game, but I've always started in the desert. Wondering which of the two immediate starting areas is better. Um, hmm. Well, I gotta be honest. I did start over in the desert once before. I know there's tons of iron out there, so certainly for iron, it's a great start. I started down in grassy fields in this playthrough. Uh, let's see. I mean, ultimately, you could always go to satisfactorycalculator.com and look at the resources in a given region. So, you've got grassy plains, so you start roughly around here. You've got everything you need, but there's not much of everything. It's like kind of like lower quality ore. But I think grassy plains is good because it is, it is an easy start, generally speaking. But it desert is a harder start but it has the volume you need to just stay in that place for a longer part of the part of the game whereas in grassy fields i feel like you kind of need to move around earlier 
you need to get out of there earlier. Um, but you do have everything. So it's like once you get to tier 4, tier 5, you sort of have to leave that area. Um, yeah, I don't know about out there. I've never really actually really been out there properly. So there's Northern Forest as well. Northern Forest, I would say, might be the best because the terrain is awkward, but you've got tons of oil. Although, I guess you don't have oil for a long time. Well, there's lots of coal here. This this particular area where I am right now is amazing. There's quartz, coal, iron. There's tons of iron. Copper. You've got two Caterium nodes. Sulfur. Um, there's even a ge uh, geyser. I feel like it's got everything really close, like this area here. And then if you just start to branch just a little further, you know, a bit out here, you've got more quartz. Um... Ultimately, you're always going down here to get your bauxite, I suppose. But yeah, I would, I would say Northern Forest might be might be the best start. But I don't know exactly where you spawn. I'm just saying that this area here, for abundance of resources, you can make anything here, you know? Yeah. I started in Northern Forest. It starts slightly harder, but it has everything. Yeah, yeah. Northern Forest near the location of the oscillator factory is the best. Yeah, starting spot. Mm. Yeah, I'm glad to see I'm not off base with thinking that then. <laughs> I defer to you guys normally for these things. Uh, I was just going to go check those machines just one last time. Just see how they're doing now that we've unclogged that belt. Seen some green lights again. Seen some yellows over there. Oh, short on quartz as well. Oh yeah, we said that the some of the machines aren't powered on though, so let's fix that. You have a battery factory? No. After so, I'm building a supercomputer factory right now. It's that's part of it over there in the distance. I'll show you now in a sec. Um, once I do supercomputers, then I'm automating batteries. After batteries, then it's nuclear. That's the plan, at least. So some of these aren't powered, so they're all green lights, which looks good. A couple of yellows on the end. Oh, I think they're not hooked up correctly, actually. That should help. And same with this one, right? I guess... I thought I already did that, but... I guess not. Okay, good. So they're working. Uh, you said they're... Yeah, this one's not powered. Okay, cool. That temporarily. Just get it going. Make sure stuff comes out of here in a sec. All right, cool. So we'll let that run for a while. That should be it. Okay, so we'll we'll go over to. I'll, I'll monitor these things as well, you know. But we'll head over to Big Shell one more time. We'll talk through current situation, the plans for the future. Is my buggy over here? No. I'm gonna turn off the uh, resources on the map as well. Clean things up a bit. Not to get those crates. I hate leaving crates behind. Alright, so just to give you an idea of what this map means, this is my big shell construction site for my supercomputer factory. We'll talk through the modules in a moment, I've talked through it on video before. The little black icons are oil extraction setups. So there's oil, obviously if you go resources on, oil all over the place up here. Uh, there's two actually I need to grab right now, we might do that actually right now, that could be fun. I'll show you how I build these modules. So the forest has a lot of uneven land and steep drops. Yeah, yeah, totally. I agree. For new players, it might not, it, it'd be awkward to build in, especially if you don't have all your tools available to you to build around it, you know, and get around it. Although, I wonder when you get the zip line. Zip line's a really great underrated tool for going up and down cliffs and stuff as well, if you don't have hypertubes and stuff. Alright, here we are. Big shell. We put on the Metal Gear music. Why the hell not? I'll catch some of the chat I've missed as well in just one sec.
Um, I spawned near the four iron nodes, pure and three limestone. Go northeast, four major crystal nodes there. Yeah, I haven't explored out that way yet. I still got to do that. Do you use compact coal in your factory? It's always a question. Use coal for power or steel. Um, I do. I use compact coal for turbo fuel in my oil processing plant. That's where I use it. Not that much, though. I've got a little bit of sulfur down here. The sulfur refinery down here. I can't remember how much. It's been a long time since I built that place. Very long time. Like, first 50 hours of the game, I think, probably. Um, and that gets shipped up here. So the compact coal comes up here, it mixes with oil and or fuel, and that gets made into turbo fuel. But I don't use sulfur anywhere else yet. I plan on making a little ammo factory, just for fun, and then also, really, what I'd like to do first is a battery factory. Anyway, welcome to Big Shell. So, basically, where's the thing? This is how it works, or how it's going to work. This is the overall layout. This is a supercomputer factory and a circuit board slash high speed connector slash computer factory. Okay, so it does everything, a bit of everything. Effectively, we have all these different struts here, right? That's strut F. So F is there. F is power generation. A is plastic production. B is wire, cable, and steam copper sheets production or copper sheets production. Uh, then we have copper ingots, quick wire, and caterium ingots, right? Simple as. So the way this place basically works is a strut hoovers up all the oil around the place. Every bit of oil in Spire Coast flows along large pipelines and small pipelines into A. So we can see that out here. These pipelines are carrying all the oil, and some of the oil nodes are right there, so they just go straight up and connect in. And they go along into a strut where they're going to be made into plastic. Some of the excess oil is going to then filter over to F and some of the excess heavy oil will go over to F as well. Um, so F is going to do use all that residual oil and make um, power, just power the place. It should do about 9,000 megawatts of power, I think. I, I think so, 9,000. Anyway, A is just largely going to be doing... I, I should just open up... I'm guessing these numbers. I should just open up my thing that tells me what it is all going to be. Just bear with me. Yeah, I've got it. Got the real numbers now in front of me. Anyway, so we'll just hop back over to this thing. This is all mentioned in a video, by the way. You can check out those videos on my channel. Satisfactory playlist. Satisfactory what darn plays. Hex build. Be a good search term as well for it. Um... So yeah, it's something like 2,200 Caterium Ore has to go into E. And the ore, I'm just trying to remember. How does that work? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I remember now. So before building this, I made these things. Transport hubs. So we have two big transport hubs on the map that take in material from all of these mining extraction operations, right? So we have copper extraction, iron extraction, Ethereum extraction here and here that all you see all the little trucks going around that one's a separate truck on a different thing It doesn't matter. Don't worry about it um, But all these trucks that are busy, they're getting refueled and they're fine They're getting everything and delivering everything to the transport hub grassy fields And that has a railway that connects all the way up to the other transport hub And that's connecting all the way up to the crystal oscillator factory and will eventually connect up to here as well I haven't just I just haven't done that yet. So effectively the raw materials are all in position ready to go We just have to bring the train line actually in they're gonna be bringing in Caterium ore roughly about 2300 is needed to make 11 uh, 1100 Caterium ingots They then get transported along E into D mixed with copper ingots from C into D to get refined into quick wire of which we're gonna be making 8,000 then 8,000 quick wire per minute travels down into the core uh, where they get made into all manner of different goods when combined with plastic and combined with some of the other things we need here, such as copper sheets, wire, cable, etc. So some of this copper is going that way, some of it's going this way. We've already done all the bridges out and done all the amounts out. So it's all configured and it's been done on streams and done in videos. So it's been taking a while, but I know where everything needs to go. It's just a matter of getting it all up there. Um, that's the plan. So there's only two oil nodes that I haven't tapped yet. So we've got one here and one over there. So let's just get doing that now. Why not? Just making sure I didn't miss anything in chat there. All right. 
the way I do this is we have a two meter foundation. One, two, three. Hmm. Just thinking actually, do we want to get rid of that bit? Some oil clipping out on this side and oil lightly on that side. Let's just see where the actual thing is being put down. Oh, it's actually really central, so that's that's great. Uh, yeah, we'll go there then. Uh, I might just bring power over here so I can kind of hover for a bit. Alright, so the next thing then would be to go foundation... Half foundation, but metal, two meters. And then we get the sides in as well. Something like this. It doesn't always want to play nice. There we go. Okay, so that's pretty much what we got. Now we get our blueprint out. We go to the oil pump house. What am I missing? Silica. All right, we'll just grab some silica. Came from your City Skylines video. Hey, Arif. How's it going, man? Have I decided what you're doing with the train station? Um, I can't remember who suggested it. It may have been you. The suggestion was to, instead of building the train station into the core, because I was thinking of putting it, like, underneath the core. It might look weird. But someone suggested um, actually having a station, like, kind of out to the side somewhere like over here or something that you can't really see it's kind of a little bit hidden and then running uh underground belt into one of the strut legs or into the core itself into one of the, the core's legs and just elevating it all up then so that could be an option something like that and that way at least the train doesn't have to be built super high up or anything it can just be at the same level my train line is currently at and it could just be off to the side as its own sort of standing thing in the water that then secretly kind of funnels its stuff hidden away up up into the core. So I like that idea. I think that would look the best and keep the kind of integrity of the, the build intact. So I'd like to try try that if I can. I haven't decided where it's going to go or how we're going to hide that stuff, but it can be done. That was you? Yeah, I like that idea. It definitely can be done. So I'd like to try to give that a shot. Um, I came here for silica. All right. Oil pump house, all right. Onk. I'm gonna be clipping that thing a little bit, I guess, but oh well, whatever. Whatever, man. And there we go. That's one. should be okay, but just in case it's not, we could raise this. Well, let me see, actually. Hmm. Yeah. Alright, let's get rid of that. Yeah, that's still fine. Okay, good. Um, I was just making sure it would fit without clipping through the ground too much. Now, the pipeline that has to join into is there. So I was thinking of just bringing this along and turning it down this way. That would seem to make the most sense to me. What are we missing now? A little bit of iron plates. 
Are you going to make any other big structures? Um, probably not. <laughs> Doing this actually, like, kind of killed the momentum of the series, and... I was talking about it before, again, I don't mean to be negative, but it, it kind of halved the views of my, like, I was getting doing it. It's funny, because a lot of people were like, oh, this is going to, like, well, not a lot of people, a few people were saying, like, this is going to be, like, tons of views doing something like this, especially when it's done. It's like, I don't think so, but we'll see. I mean, if you make a good enough video going through the bills, sure, maybe. I might be able to double, double dip on it a bit or something, but as part of the Let's Play series, just hitting the autosave right now, by the way. But as part of the Let's Play series, it was definitely like a momentum killer. And the game is just getting so big and complex now that it's really difficult to... Because um, I don't just put a video out every Monday. It's like, I try to put a video out when I've got something new to build or show. So, there's so many components to this where it's like, it took me a long time to do every fucking pillar leg, you know? <laughs> that one needs six hours of video of me doing like every leg of the pillar or then deciding that one of them was wrong and redoing it and redoing the pipes or redoing the oil. I've just redone the oil in between episodes because it, it looked really messy, actually. So it felt like it had to be redone. Anyway, so it's, you know, it's it's a problem I'm giving myself for sure. But uh, I'm, if I, I don't think I'm going to build any other bigger structures. I, like, I'll, I'm going to make nuclear power and that's going to be a big endeavor, but I don't think I'm going to make a super massive structure to do it. But it'll be a complicated thing to build for sure. No getting around that. But I just don't think I'm going to make any super structures like this. Because I can't do it in a timely fashion, and it just kills kills the momentum. I'm not like if I had the views of someone like I'm Kibitz or something, you could go a couple weeks without it. Not that he ever would. Why would you do that? But I could. I don't want to get rid of that. Actually, I could reasonably say like, oh well, that's fine. But you know, my videos are getting like, I don't know, maybe ten thousand views. Ten thousand views for one video. You're looking at maybe twenty, twenty-five dollars. Uh, not really, just not really enough um, for the amount of time it's taking. I was saying at the beginning, it's like there's a, a problem. The curve is inverted. The time it takes to do each episode is getting longer and longer, and the re you know the results of each episode is getting worse and worse, <clears throat> or the revenue. So it's like, oh damn, it's making me, it's putting a pressure on me to go finish the series. Otherwise, it'll become like like impossible to do basically uh, i normally put a light there but i guess i don't have the quick wire on me right now this is quite over to the side but i think it'll be okay anyway i'm looking forward to you getting nuclear yeah same i'm looking forward to it too the progress really slows as you get deeper into the game because the builds get bigger indeed for the tier four parts they take a lot of resources yeah so i've heard yep i haven't looked into it yet i actually have no idea what it's going to take um all right so yeah we need to combine this Ooh, I'm just trying to think, does it... Is that good enough to go straight over to there? Yeah, that's probably fine, actually. Go straight across. Alright, we'll do that. This is where I can get a little messy, though. This might not be high enough to get my blueprint to work, so sometimes I just have to build the bridge manually. Uh, what am I looking for? Cosmetics. We're looking for a bridge with one pipe. Yeah, so unfortunately the way I built this... Oh, there we go. It does fit. Good. All right, nice. Get rid of these. I'm gonna mess things up. Almost done. Simple enough. We just have to like connect these in. So that's the pipe there. Oh, uh, sorry. What about after you complete the game? Then doing like factory facade like kibitz? I don't know what that means. Facade? Um, yeah, I don't know. 
I, I don't know. Like, with new updates and stuff, it will be tempting. I have an idea for a series um, of just doing, like, a, a, a series where I, I don't know. See, once I'm finished the game, I'll know exactly what it takes to make everything. And I almost feel like you can work backwards then and start a new game and go, well, I know I only ever need this amount of things to do things. And I'd love to make a series where it's, like, a lean, satisfactory playthrough. where you... Because something I found that was I didn't expect when I put up my series was that people were... A lot of people find the game for the first time and they say like, oh man, I kind of stopped watching around episode 9 or 10 because you started skipping showing everything. And I, my answer to that was like, oh, well, I just didn't think people needed to see everything because it takes so long. Like I've got, think about this, I've got 445 hours on this save. And that doesn't count all the times I've reloaded or done other things, which is a lot. Um... So that would be, you'd be 440 episodes deep if I had just kept going like normally uh, without any, without deciding that, no, you know, I feel like this would be better in viewers' best interest for me to cut some of this repetitiveness out. So what I'd like to do though going forward in the future is like if you had all your blueprints from the beginning of the game, from the beginning of the series, you had a bunch of blueprints and then you knew exactly where you're going to go, what rates of things were there. Because I was also playing the game kind of for the first time. Like, I'd played through the first few tiers, but it was a very much a let's play. I'm going through the world, you guys tell me what to do kind of thing. And I was amazed that some people were interested in watching it that way. Because um, I was able to guide people through the first bits, but once it got to tier 5, I was like, this is new territory for me now. And then I learned a bunch of stuff. Now I know all that stuff. I could have blueprints from the beginning of a series and go, okay... If you want to follow along and you want to see pretty much everything, we could do that. Because now I can tell you the exact dimensions of every build we're going to make. If you know what I mean. It's like, I'll, I'll pre I could pre-plan everything. Throw up literal blueprints on your screen. Not the blueprints in game, but throw up blueprints and be like, this is going to be a 10x10 build with this many machines in it. These are the materials you need. Here's the exact location we're building it. And this is how, you'll, how we'll do it. And it's just the minimum requirements you kind of need to get through the game. Now, I will always encourage people to play it at their own pace and figure some stuff out themselves. That's the fun for me. But for some people, for whatever reason, they kind of want that hand held sometimes, I guess. And they want to be shown how it's done. Because maybe they just don't have the time to kind of figure it out themselves. Anyway. It's a long time. It is for the game, yeah. Hey, Bitmark, by the way. I heard something about you're setting up a dedicated multiplayer server. I would like to join. Yeah, the plan is to... Do, well, the plan was to do that for Update 8, but Update 8 doesn't run very well. So we have to wait. Probably when Update 8 becomes not experimental, then we'll set up the multiplayer server. I, the, the plan was to do it as soon as it was ready, but it unfortunately, I can't run the game. Um, some people can, and I heard multiplayer is quite unstable in Update 8, even more so than usual, so... Unfortunately, we kind of have to wait. Almost got it lined up. Let me put this here. <clears throat> no, build some other way. That's the fun new creative way. Well, I'd be building entirely new things. I wouldn't be building the same stuff, but I... It would just be... It would be like a tutorial series. So for people who are familiar with the game, it probably wouldn't have much value, but... It was just something I thought about doing, but I, I don't think I'd be doing another series in this game. I mean, maybe. I'd, I'd never say never. Maybe when 1.0 happens. That might be it. Maybe it might be a thing I do. Ah, that is unfortunate positioning for this thing. But whatever. I don't mind if this clips it clips in other places. So you're coming out right there. I'm not tilting it either. I want it to be straight.
don't know why it's doing that. It's supposed to do that kind of thing. Horizontal to vertical shouldn't be orientated that way. It's weird. Could maybe manually make it do it. that works. Alright, so what kind of power does this do for output? So it's 150, so it only needs a Mark 1 belt or um, pipe. Update 8 stutters randomly for me. Not sure how it'd handle me trying to stream. Better get ready for a pool party. Have a great day. See you later, Swifty. I like your neat, complete designs. Yeah, I don't know if I'm do it yet. It was just an idea I had. Coffee Stain said multiplayer has always been experimental. 8 ex is experimental as well, so it's... Yeah, exactly, yeah. Multiplayer hasn't been stable. I played on a multiplayer server before, and it was totally fine for a very long time. But, um... I know it's considered less stable, just generally, anyway. You do get weird weirder bugs in it for sure uh, but I'm sure now with update 8 it's just yeah it's crazy right corner bonk Okay, so, uh, my stairs are probably going to be here. Ooh, barnacle sticking out there. Okay, and then we could just have a little corner thing at the end here. The reason I brought the bridge out that way is because I thought maybe we'd come down that way, but I guess not. Alright, reinforce the concrete. You gotta do it. We gotta put this back on and this back on. Are you going to build the train station today? No, not today. I know it's there on the um, to-do list, but that was for something else, actually. I'm just adding two final oil nodes, uh, resource nodes, and then that's kind of it. Basically, today's stream was all about getting crystal oscillators up and running, and they are they should be running now up to 105 per minute. So up from 60 per minute to 105. So that's what today's stream was. Kind of a two-parter, because we did a little bit of it on the other stream as well. And then I thought I would just show off how I did my oil bridge type setup thing. Because, yeah, it's a new way that I'm getting all the oil together and pumping it up to the various struts. Yeah, if it was just stuttering, by the way, for update 8, I would totally play it. But for me, it's, um, the frame rate is a third the frame rate I'm used to, so I just can't really handle it. It's like 20 FPS. Uh, and then in that factory, the Crystal Oscillator factory, which is for some reason the, my most lag-intensive one, even though I've got bigger factories in other places, uh, that one runs at about 9. <laughs> so it's just... And it's setting, like I, I don't want to be redundant, but settings do not change anything. So um, It can't be improved. It's literally just the way the game runs. Uh, because my save is complicated, I guess, or it, it thinks it is. So I'm sh I have no doubt it'll be fixed. It, it needs to be fixed, otherwise I won't be able to play the game. It'll be done with the game if it never gets fixed. If they just port to update 8 and that's it, well then I won't be able to play. I'll be able to start a new world, get to about... Mm, maybe a tenth of the amount of stuff I have in the world now, and then that'll be it. How much is coming out of this one? This is doing 300, I think. 
Okay, so we need to do the same thing here. Do about there. Hey, Etheric Bar. Appreciate the super chat as well. Thank you. And see you later, man. See you in the next one, indeed. And thank you. I don't know what's doing that. It should just, when you pull something down like this with horizontal to vertical mode set, it should always just be like a straight L shape like that. Or J. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not doing it for some reason. <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, there we go. Again, this only needs to be pipeline mark one, new indicator. And so does this. All right, that's that. So now we can just paint it. And that could be Mark II, because it's taking 450. This pipeline's already in position now, I think, so I don't have to do anything else with it after this bit. Other than just paint it, I gotta do that at some point. It's supposed to be orange and black, not orange and blue. But my color swatches are also bugged, so I can't really do anything about that. Now, I was missing quick wire to get the lights up and running, so let's just try to get that done really quickly. It is nighttime, so we'll actually see it. One of these has quick wire in it. A mom on that extra bridge segment by the oil extractor might look cool as a monitor for extraction. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah, I tend to dot little uh, crafting benches and equipment workshops around just to look kind of neat. Uh, it's maybe a bit too big for this. Only slightly, though. I'll just leave it there. Why the hell, why the hell not? Yeah, it's fine. We'll end cap to the area. Alright, so we need a light. Organization, want the wall-mounted floodlight. Pop that there. We'll grab the floor. Bring the floor up. Up there. Up there. Fly up to it briefly. Wanna get even higher. Get the light control panel. Put it in that way. Look up the light. Tell the light to be night mode on. Down to about 40. Okay, and then we need to power this real quick. We connect to there, connect to there. Um, so the way I've been doing this, I'm trying to go across this way. In all my builds, I actually never clip wires through anything, but this is the first one where I've been doing it. I messed it up. Usually I power it first so that I can fly it. So we need to grab the power that's in here. That's working now. All right, we can put this back. We can get rid of this bit. Dude, here we go. All right. That's it. <laughs> so the thing is now on, it's running, the oil is flowing, our light is in place. Okay, that's the idea. 
the, the only wire we see is just coming out of the pillar itself and it obviously all the wires run underneath the bridge that's the idea so we can get rid of these other ones do not need it anymore and we'll just have to do this one last time and that's going to be pretty much it can you have a quick, quick tour uh yeah i could do it in a moment i mean a tour of the entire map might be a bit much uh, we could look at maybe one or, more, one or two of my most busy factories. It's been a while since I've even been there, and I kind of want to check the numbers anyway, so that could be fun. The Heavy Modular Frame Factory slash Fused Frame Factory is a good one to look at, so we'll go to that one. All right, so last thing, just need to connect over to this area. This bridge is actually further out than any other bridge I've ever built for this place. A bit too high up? That's a bit too high up. Hey lady, huh? Is that a goodbye or a hello again? <laughs> Alright, so that's active now. So we just need to put this light in as well. I'll just do the light first. Planted floodlight. Needs to come up one one tier. Alright, night mode, beige color, bring it down to forty. Click the switch just so it says on. And then you need to do it a second time because it actually bakes in the light. Yeah, there we go. To the object it was looking at. Now it'll come on at night time. Alright, there we go. That's the end of that. So, that should be oil flowing now. All the oil in Spire Coast is now basically flowing into uh, strut A, this one. So this one takes a weird journey. It goes out that way and joins the other thing, goes into here, and then flows along the big pipeline. That pipeline there that goes into here. Let me pop in and see if everything's working as expected at the CEO factory. Yeah, we'll head there first. Alright, there we go. Alright, that's nice to just know that all the oil has been grabbed. There's no oil left in Spire Coast that we haven't tapped. All right, let's get a move on. This is going to be the the cap to the stream. We're wrapping it up. Let's see that back open. All right. So yeah, the, the quick tour of this place is just basically that these little oil hutches are all obviously prefabs of each other. They all look pretty much the same. They all connect into pipes that lead underneath these walkways. There's three more out there that all connect into another walkway. That walkway ends pretty much over there, feeding into this strut that then gets piped along into here and water is going to be piped with it and then we can take a quick look at what that looks like inside some of the pipes actually just are merged onto right here so for instance this one is built at a weird angle because it kind of had to be it's probably the most odd looking one part of the roof had to be cut off some of the power poles and stuff are temporary of course um, yep, then in here we have these big loads of pumps, big sets of pumps that pump all of our liquid all the way up to the very top. So this is our grid shape, right? We've got nine pipes, six doing water, three doing oil. And this is a similar situation. It's six doing water, three doing oil, but in a different configuration. So in total, we've got six pipes doing oil. Six times, well, it's actually five times 600 plus 450. That's what we're getting here. 3,450 oil. And I think I only need about 2,800. So all the extra oil is just going to be used for fuel and power. Anyway, so there's nothing in there in any of these places. They're all hollow. Um, so there's no point really going up and showing you. I've showed people before. Let's just get on to heading over towards the crystal oscillator factory again. 
Um, it's a hello. I've just been lurking a bit, even though I've been here since the start. <laughs> nice. Uh, plus, I really didn't want to take up chat space from the other lovely peeps on here. No worries. I'm really, really bad at reading my chat. I'm actually not that bad at reading chat in certain games, but in this game, games where I'm trying to hold information in my mind, it's very difficult to look over then and read things. <laughs> I can play like a sh like I could play like Call of Duty or something and, and read more of my chat. It's so funny in this type of game, you think you'd be able to read it more. Anyway, are all the oil pipelines connected in the bridge? They're, well, they travel on separate lines, but yes, they are all connected. Provided they don't go over the max limit of 600. So a lot of the oil that we have, you know, the pipelines do 150, another 150, another one's doing 300. So that's like perfect. They can all merge onto one pipe then, can't they? But for instance, this is one pipe, but it's connected to three deposits. So here's one of them here. This one does 300 per minute. So that's a 300 pipe that goes on. And then in here it merges in. Merges in, just continues on on a Mark II pipe then. But the other Mark I pipe comes from this area. We had a look at this earlier. This leads back to the Crystal Oscillator factory anyway. So again, same sort of bridge the whole way. Containing a little pipeline. And just connects to two other mining hutches. So these are doing 150 each, I think. They're impure nodes, even overclocked. 150 and 150. And that's basically it. I guess that's no worries since I do it myself, YouTube. Yep, no problem. Do you play this game? Alright, here we are. Crystal oscillated out of our minds. So, this is a Mark II belt. And remember, we're supposed to be doing 105. And this belt is capable of, what, 120, is it? So the fact that the belt looks pretty full, with gaps every now and then, that seems pretty good to me. Maybe slightly under? Who knows? Who knows? We can check it though, we can go up to the machines and just have a quick look. Yeah, I'm seeing some spotty slash sporadic crystal oscillators. Why would they be traveling out? Less. It doesn't really matter actually, if the bottom line gets I'm kind of confused about that. Is this empty? Oh yeah, it's like not, it doesn't even have a chance to fill up. Hmm, that's not a good sign. Alright, we'll start with the base of where everything begins. Okay, so do we see any yellow lights here? Being blue all around. Or sorry, a green all around. This one just went yellow, didn't it? 59. Yeah, they're not getting enough. So they're getting 600 from here, right? That's 600, apparently. And that's coming up and then splitting here. So 300's going that way. Yeah, that's fine. And if it stops here, obviously the rest of it should be making its way down. Any overflow from this area... Hmm. See, I'm seeing this line stopping. If this one stops... It's almost like it should go over to this side. Start adding lights, especially on the corridor. Yeah, it needs lights in, uh, along the hallways. The hallways are pretty big. I just wasn't exactly sure where the ceiling was going to be, so I never added lights to this place. I've got lights in some other ones. I'll definitely do it, though, in the future. Are you using blueprints for any parts of your build at the moment? Yeah, I just showed using a bunch, so I just built a... This kind of enclosure for an oil pump house. Obviously, that's just like a small little self-contained blueprint. But then other times I do link them together. So I just built a massive area. So it's made up of like all these different parts. These parts all connect to each other. That's it's crazy amount of modules. Um, 
also been experimenting around with just other weird objects that I've been trying to make. But um, yeah, I've got um, machines that stack on top of each other and have all their uh, belts and stuff included. They're, they have spacers on them so that they get evenly spaced. Don't have too many modular machine builds. I had a few before, but not really anymore. My truck stations have all been built with blueprints as well. So yeah, I use blueprints all the time. Using Science for Lights in Update 8 is the way to go. Yeah, I went into Update 8 and had a look at it. It looks good. Yeah, it looks really nice. Although, the disappointing thing with that is, in some ways, the lights don't light things up at a distance. The signs. You have to be pretty close to them before they light things up, in my experience. They look super cool when they do light up, though. Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to think. So, does anything ever get stalled and not get passed to anything else? Yeah. We're gonna just need to change where the overflow direction is going. I don't think it needs time to fill the lines up. I think it's had enough time. I think so, anyway. It's that I've just... See, when I built this place, it was doing 60 per minute. Everything was laid out per, like pretty much perfectly. I do say so myself. Like, all the, all the belts carried their specific amounts into the machines. Nothing was really an issue. Then I just tacked on another floor and I'm just sending a belt in and trying to send some overflow over so it's not really like adjusted correctly anymore. So all the overflow that comes out of here can only go into these machines. It can't go into those. But my thought was that 600 is more than enough for these ones. Let's have a look. 37.5. Alright, 37.5 times... 10. There's just 10 in a row here, actually, yeah. I don't understand read. Well, I kind of do. Hmm. Maybe you're right. Maybe it does just take a while for the machines to fill up. I'm just worried about this line, right? So this line here, it goes in. It's, you know, let's call it 600. It's just under, actually. 600 feeds down that way. It goes along here. And then it attempts to feed down that way as well. Now, I knew it would never be enough to feed that line, so I thought, okay, the second line will, if it hits overflow, it'll go this way and feed the rest of it. And that did work, but now I've tacked this on as well to say, like, when you stop, more of you go this way. That should work, though. I don't see an issue with it, really. Obviously, something wrong. Maybe you're right. Maybe it is just taking a while to get there. Longer than I anticipated. 97. Yeah, because they're pretty full. This, this one's not getting... It seems like it's really... I think you're right, actually. I think it is just taking a while. It's just the last two that are struggling, right? I don't know why that would just be those two. It feels like we'd see it in a few other places. What about here? They're fine. That's expected, because they've got a helping hand in the overflow thing. They don't ever miss. Okay, I'll leave it for a little while longer, because I think that could just be it. It could just be that case. The other thing I can always do, I mean, it's not really a problem, I shouldn't have to, but I could do it, is just increase the amount that's coming out of here, just a little bit. Now it's doing 600. It was doing the exact amount before, but now it's doing slightly more than it needs. So that's extra for the overflow, which means this gets backed up quicker. Meaning that gets backed up quicker. <laughs> Oh, actually, I think I just realized what it could be. Who gets priority over these two? If this fills up and backs up, does it let this one go through first, or does it let this one go through first? I'd want it to be this one. Yeah. I don't know if that makes any sense to you guys, but like... This is overflow that's coming along and then going this way, yeah? The idea behind it was that this lane would actually take priority, but I don't think that's the case. See the way this is stopping? It's almost like that should be the one that's always stopping. I don't know if there's a way I can do that without just having to... I could just move this down, really, and fix it at a lower angle. 
but I think that might be what's happening. It's like, this is actually getting backed up. That should never get backed up, really. That could be it. But anyway, I'll just leave it. I'll think about it. It might just fill up. If it doesn't, it's probably just to do it the way I've, where I've positioned the overflow. I think that's all. Anyways, um, so this is the, yeah, so this build was like, it was finished at the time, but now it's like exposed again to the elements because, um, like I said, it uh, had to expand. So basically downstairs, this place receives in through trucks. So just doing a little mini tour basically of this place. Uh, trucks bring in Caterium ore. It, I never needed the other bays, so I never used them. And I never finished the end of the factory, so it's just open-ended at the back. Um, and then in here, this is the water extraction basement, I guess. And then some of the ore flows along here to be fed up to the machines along with the water. So the water is being fed up to these refineries, and so is the ore. It's been pumped up there, so all of it's just on one pump generally. Well, each row of machine is on one pump, I should say. And that seems to work pretty well take this this will take us all the way to the top actually so that's the refinery floor you can just see the refineries in there and there's manufacturing one and manufacturing two so manufacturing two they both look pretty much the same they're stacked on top of each other it's 16 manufacturers all getting their stuff from downstairs and then we have the logistics floor that's handling everything going up to it you know that's that's really all there is to it with this one. Another floor again, just hiding all that stuff, looking the same. And then another... That's ventilation. That's just hiding chimney stacks, basically. And they do go out. There is actual ventilation here. <laughs> they have a way out. I mean, there's no fans turning or anything, but I like to think there is. Um, but yeah, so this would be the actual logistics floor again. So it's very much a mirror copy of the one that we just looked at. And the one above is the one we just expanded. Anyway, this is our train station floor, and that's where all the goods go back and forth. So everything that's coming into all the manufacturers flows along these belts. And everything that comes out of the manufacturers goes along here. Let me go to maths to come up with a formula for estimating manifold saturation times. I bet it grows geometrically because it's always a surprise how long it takes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I've built a lot of manifolds in my day. I'm just surprised it's taking that long. My gut would tell me that it's not the manifolds. My gut would tell me that it's most likely the overflow is placed in the wrong spot. It's not The resources aren't being evenly distributed to all the machines, and that's why one row of them has a manifold issue. Um, but anyway, yeah, so this factory, because it's not really finished, it's just like it's a hard one to tour because it's like, oh yeah, this, you know, it's just not fully done yet. It needs its roof on it, needs its train station um, repositioned. These aren't stalled, by the way, they're just, they're turned off on purpose. We're seeing green lights across the board up here anyway, so they're all getting their stuff just fine. Alright, let's go on to um, a factory that is largely finished. And it's that one over there. My fused frame factory. You have, may have a balance issue on the manifold. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> yeah, the building looked much cooler before I had to break it open. We could put the shell on it again in future and it'll look nice again. It looks great at the back actually on that side. Do I have what I need for a vehicle here? It'd be nice if I could just drive. I do. Uh, you can take my fuel, why not? Alright, gonna drive to my fused frame factory. We'll take a quick look at it, then we'll go to the oil factory and that'll be it. Those are the ones that are probably most interesting, I think, to people. So the fused frame factory, I think it's doing... 16 fused frames per minute? And 20 heavy modular frames per minute. I think that's what it makes. And it has everything. There's no issues with it, as far as I know. But every now and then, there's a few belts that seem to be lacking something for some reason. But generally speaking, it has all its resources. You know, it's not waiting on anything.
Drive on the bridge? I can't drive on that bridge. That's a train bridge, a railway bridge. I'll get hit by a train. Plus it's too bumpy anyway. Alright, so just super quick, um, this is the transport hub. So this whole thing was largely blueprinted from modules. And because once I built one, I kind of hand build things the first time. And then I look at it and I go, okay, how could I like break that into pieces and reconstruct it in the future? Not the best way to do it. Really, if you're trying to build things, it'd be good just to plan it out and then know that. But I feel like I need to see it in the world to kind of work that stuff out. It's too difficult when you only have a 4x4 grid to really get a bigger picture. Um, so effectively what this place is, it's, it's I call it a transport hub. So there's something like 12 vehicle bays. And... Uh, they can have all these different goods assigned to them. And then I have information about how many trucks are visiting this particular bay and how many mining like extractors does it pull from. So this is nothing on this one, obviously. Um, and this is a double transport hub. The other one I have is only a one way. That was 14 in total. So this one has one and one. So this truck is obviously going to come in here. They stay on the outer lane until they have to come in to their specific bay. And then they slam into the wall because they're great, aren't they? Even though I didn't do that when I was driving, obviously. Yep, so they take their stuff, pop it in into the back, and then all of this is fed fuel. So every truck station here gets its fuel, so they can all refuel. Turns out you don't really need to do that. Uh, if I was redesigning this, maybe in the future or something, I would just put a truck station on the way out, and as they drive through it, they would get fuel. That's a probably more elegant way. But, I mean, all trucks are stopping in here, so it's not really a big deal. It's fine. But yeah, with them uh, all coming in here, so we have this place to walk in between, so all these truck stops have their belts that can carry everything up to the floor above us and it just goes all the way down basically as you'd expect and we have a way to get upstairs and up here we have the drone ports so there's several drone ports then that are ready to take the connections of any of the stuff that's in here this place is empty nothing is coming in here really it's for future use um but for now we just have you know everything's placeholder there's dro drone ports all here ready to go and if we want to get up the floor we can just climb up through here we're up to some of the drone ports then the train station is here as well so i'm really proud of this build i think it's quite nicely put together it's fairly compact for what it does and all the belts are like assigned like for what's going to come in and what's going to go out uh, so it's a good little place good little place to have next we'll head over to the transport hub oh, sorry the um fuse frame factory so it's a giant office block it's not the most visually creative looking um that's my aluminum factory as well never put a roof on it a lot of my projects you'll find i get 90 percent of the way and then i just walk away from it <laughs> um oh my god i don't uh, don't have my fuel of course You don't need to connect fuel to the other truck stations? Yeah, indeed. You could just have it in one station, and if you drive through it, even if they just drive through it, they basically get fully refueled. Uh, so that, that'd be the way to do it, I would say, in future. But it's... I like it the way it is. It's fine. But people just pointed that out. They're like, you don't need to feed every station. You could have just fed one as they drove past it. That's a great point. But I like the guarantee that they're all getting it, no matter where they go. So that's one of our extractors out there. I can't remember what it's doing. Iron or something. Oh no, it's limestone. Limestone is then flowing along underneath the floors. Uh, I normally actually pop little glass flooring in every now and then. I guess I didn't do it at this place. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So you can actually see where this stuff is going. So there's another belt. I think it's taking, yeah, limestone from there. So both of these are just going along this way. They're traveling through. Underneath the floors. Uh, and along into this area here which sends everything up goddamn aliens yeah it sends everything upstairs so again there's just little miners in here in these different rooms doing their thing it's not fully finished not everything is the back of this place isn't fully finished but the front pretty much is so very last thing then i guess i would show so this is a fused frame factory and heavy modular frame factory so it takes in quite a lot of stuff we have the heavy modular frame imports line so this is the import line bringing us aluminum casing and it's bringing us a lot of petroleum coke which i use for steel then there is the export line 
So this line is just there and ready for if we ever want to send the heavy modular frames and the fuse frames somewhere else. Currently, I do not. And then just because there was nitrogen gas here, I made a gas line just in case I ever need to export or move gas around to somewhere else. So this place is getting full of, um, pumped full of gas. Yeah, it's my favorite build as well so far, except for the Big Shell. Big Shell will really be great, I think, when it's done. But this is a good standard satisfactory build, nothing like not imitating from another game. Uh, so we'll look at that area in just one sec. So effectively, the other part of this place that's interesting will be out here. These are all the water extractors that are needed. So the water extractors are out there. They go along my little makeshift bridge that we've just kind of shown, and they go into here, and they get pumped vertically. And they have to get pumped again vertically, even further up. I don't know why I did that, actually, thinking about it. Why they didn't just continue up that way, but I can't remember. I'm sure there was a reason at the time. Um, so, yeah, so this is like one of the outer little conservatories type areas. It just juts out a bit to even out the ground floor, but it's not needed upstairs. So I kind of cut it off to break up the building, give it a bit more variety. Then we have the hypertube network to get around. So basically, they all just go up to their various floors. So we're on floor one right now, train station. Uh, we can go to every floor from the bottom floor. Not every floor has access to every other floor. Uh, they typically have access to the one above it or below it or the bottom and top. That's typically the way it's done. So at the moment, we're on the train station floor. If we looked at floor two, so blue floors are everything's color coded, right? We've got blue for things that are coming into the factory and red for things that are going out of the factory. I don't know why I made this floor red. I guess it could be purple anyway. So blue would be refinement and construction logistics. So all the logistical floors are, the, are, are what floors are below the machines. So I always like to hide away the logistics as much as I can. I just think it looks nice that way. Not all the time, but sometimes. Most of the time, I guess. And I call it a blue floor because it's like, well, these are the things coming into the factory. They're going into machines from these floors. And the red things are where things are coming out of the machines, right? The mach it's the floors where the machines are. So things come out of machines. Things go into machines on the logistics floors, and they go out on these ones. So uh, we're on floor one. We could take a look at the busiest logistics floor. Actually, we'll take a look at the machines first, and then we'll work our way down. That can always look nice. So we'll go up to blending and man manufacturing all the way up to the top. All right, so this is blending and manufacturing. This is where we don't have a roof yet. And I'm out of, um, I didn't bring my fuel with me. So we just have a series of blenders here. These blenders are doing the fused frames. They take in heavy modular frame. They take in the aluminum casing and nitrogen gas. So the aluminum casing and the nitrogen gas, effectively the aluminum casing is made over there in my aluminum factory. And the nitrogen gas is brought in from over there where there's a nitrogen deposit. So there's a bridge that brings us all the way in. So they're easy to make, except for, of course, the heavy modular frames. So everything else in this factory is for the heavy modular frames. So we have heavy modular frames. Their machines are numbered. They're all manufacturers. Nice to see 100% at least. So modular frames in case beams, steel pipes, and concrete. Um, so let's see. We can work our way downstairs now. We'll go the other direction. We'll just slowly go down. So this is the first logistics floor. So we can see, well, it's the third one, really. Uh, yeah, so the aluminum casing is coming in from the train station. This is a bit of a temporary floor. I just have temporary awesome sinks in there just sinking some stuff. There's actually room for it to be built properly, especially downstairs. So I'll do that at some point, but it's not done yet. Um, but in terms of everything else this place makes, and then these are just overflow containers. It's, it's all going to be removed. That's nothing. But everything else is set. So again, keeping with the color scheme... We have blue, meaning things are coming in, and then red, meaning things are going out. So if you don't want to confuse your belts, this is really, really helpful way of doing things. Now, you might ask, what if this is going into another machine? Well, then it turns into a purple line. So it'll stay red, 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 until maybe the one junction before it goes in, it turns to purple. And that way you can kind of identify it and go, oh, yeah, this is where an output of mine meets an input, you know. Um, but this is all looking fine, looking pretty good, pretty happy with it. Seems like the belts are all full. Generally speaking, steel pipes actually did have an issue here. I'll get to that at some point. Anyway, we go down a floor and we're into assembly. Uh, so assembly is just list uh, like rows of assemblers. So they're color coded based on what they make. So for instance, these are unnumbered EB. Any idea what it does? It makes encased beams. So EB 
etc etc numbered all the way up and then one of them will be overclocked and one of them may be underclocked depending on whatever the needs of the belts are below so there's 30 of these i think in total and that one's just overclocked to get the numbers balanced i know there's some flickering lights so there could be an i guess we could check what's the issue you know there's probably some sort of issue going on yeah the, I'm aware of that. Steel pipes are having an issue. I'll try to fix it. I think I know what it is. Anyway, then we've got um, MF, so modular frames. Not the other MF that you were thinking with your dirty mind. And then lastly, we have blue ones here that are doing reinforced plates. Reinforced iron plates. That's that. We'll go down again, and we can see all the logistics then that goes into this. So progressively the logistics floors get more and more complicated as we go down yeah massively so so much so that i needed signage to kind of let me know what is carrying what and to where so we have rp 12 to 1 and the reason it's listed that way is because the sign starts here so counting this way 12 11 10 etc so reinforced plates machine number 12 to 1 you know it's doing 213 this is the requirement not what the belt is doing it's like what it needs 239 plates, 426 wire. And this is all per minute, of course. And then the output of this would be 64 reinforced plates from machines numbered 1 to 12. And the reason I do that is because sometimes things get complicated where the output, for instance, of steel pipes is something like in the thousands. So one belt can't handle it anymore. So the machines need to be numbered, right? So we have machines 1 to 8 do these ones and 1 to whatever do these ones and so on and so forth. And that lets me keep control uh, or recognize when there's an issue, I know where to look. I'm like, okay, upstairs, I'm after seeing a yellow flickering light from machine, you know, number whatever, eight. I can go downstairs, look at machine eight. Is it getting its stuff? Is the belt correct? Is the elevator correct? Yep, that's all good. Trace it back, you know, follow it to where it came from. And that's how I find issues in this place. It's really good. I'm definitely going to use this going forward no matter what all the time. It's great. What does this say? 1 to 12 produces 64. This is split four ways, starting here into MF 1 to 32. Well, thanks for the tip. Yes, yeah, so this is where it becomes purple, right? So red goes to purple. 64 in, and then it's split here, obviously just one way, and then it's split here again two ways, and then I'm guessing over there it's split again two ways. And that allows me to keep track of it. And I can see then from 1 to 12, and the asterisk sign is a sign to let me know that it's been split. So that's all that means. So it's been split. This belt, you know, MF 1 to 12. Well, I'd be like, oh, that seems low. 16 coming from 12 machines. So it's like, yeah, but it's been split. Somewhere along this line, it's been split. And that's how you keep track of that. It's a good convention. Everyone should use this convention. <laughs> all right, let's get more complicated, shall we? Let's go down another layer. So now we've got refineries. And they're taking in the water. And they're taking in, like, the iron ore, whatever ore. Limestone, I guess make concrete then we have wire machines right constructors making wire we have foundries making steel steel ingots there's 24 of these now to make steel this is the actual issue right we're out of steel pipes the reason is that i'm low on petroleum coke and i don't, I don't actually know why because we shouldn't be but there must be something wrong at my oil plant because that's where we get petroleum coke from and the deliveries seem to be not enough anymore and it should be it should be way more than enough but it, something's obviously wrong so i'll have to go back and trace that at some point i mean it's it's totally fine i'm not using these things for anything yet the fused frames and the heavy modular frames so it's okay but there's a you know we're running at like 90 95 92 percent or something efficiency right now there's something wrong anyway so there's a lot going on in this place these are all the steel pipe constructors there's a lot of those they're all in a big group themselves and then there's the other founder. These are just uh, smelters, I should say, doing iron. Pretty standard. And then we have constructors doing iron plates. Pretty standard as well. Now, this is where it gets really crazy. Oh, yeah. I didn't look at it, but all these, you can see everything traveling up, so you always know what's going where. Or just have that nice feeling that, like, things are being made. All right, one layer down. This is where it really gets mental. So you can almost barely even see anything at this point. I'll try to stay still in a sec. About here. Probably is a good spot to look at. Have fun with that. Uh, so this is when the sign convention started because it became so crazy um, to manage where everything was going. I was like, look, I got to figure out a way to do this. <laughs> and that's what I did. I, I made this little signage system. I fix it employee guide. 
is our example sign and what it means, right? Those are the labels. So R13 to 17, 480, that's the machine ID and the optimal input. The flow direction of the belt or the pipe and the resource type. Blue labels are inputs, red are outputs, purple is output to input, and symbol, the asterisk, belt has a split from its original. So if I was to give out this save to someone, they'll hopefully find that guide and understand what this place means. Yeah, I was doing a lot more labeling with these as well, and then I kind of stopped. People were scaring me. They were saying like, ooh, too many signs can cause frame rate issues. Now, I never had that issue, so that didn't seem to be a problem, but I kind of stopped labeling the rooftops because it didn't really seem like it needed it. So anyway, if you wanted to follow an example here, this is a, an X symbol, right? Meaning that the belt ends here. So it's obviously flowing from that direction. We can see here, flowing to the left, it's copper ore. It's doing 85.33 per minute, going to refineries 1 to 6. And it's as simple as that. And then the outputs come down this way. So our outputs will be 213.33 copper ingots going this way. We can follow it along. Watch your head. See where this goes so it goes from red to purple because it gets used into another machine it's going into wire 1 to 15 213 that's what it takes in or sorry that's what it takes in that's what it also puts out i think uh yeah and then there's concrete there's a whole weird concrete setup thing going on here to get some even belts r14 to 17 produce 304 40 of this is split away from this belt so you know because you're ever looking at this and wondering what the hell's going on but there's a complicated splitting thing going on here it splits 40 away from 240 and then adds 64. <laughs> the 40 is sent to a belt of 560. So obviously, the 40 that's sent to a belt of 560, that becomes a nice even 600. And then the remnants go to something else. You know, so There is a reason for all that. Because I probably needed 64, yeah? At some point. Anyway, so yeah, this is... um. This was my hell for a while. And then we have these two main buses just doing absolutely mental numbers of things moving all the time. But it's satisfying now, looking back on it. <laughs> but yeah, it was, um, I can't believe I did it actually. Looking back on it, I'm like, holy shit. But it was all just added to bit by bit. Uh, anyway, so I guess that's pretty much it. I would just like to go to one last place. We're going to go to my oil facility. Going to go to the oil facility and just see what the hell's going on. Why is there... Ah, oh, damn, there's no fuel here either. I was hoping there'd be fuel there. And just see, why the hell is there a, a lack of petroleum coke? Because effectively, this is the import station, right? Oh, nice. Train just arrived. Perfect timing. So petroleum coke, it's empty here. And it's empty there. Three thousand two hundred and seventy-two, and then the six thousand four hundred. So this one's full. This one's not. I wonder is it just the time to get here is too long? Yeah, there's still petroleum coke in there and still in there. Oh, there's something weird going on. Yeah, I'll have to check that then. All right, we need to catch that train. Okay, good. <laughs> Just right here on the back. I mean, I guess we could just hop in, <laughs> thinking about it. Oh, yeah, and I needed to kind of tidy that area up there. That's it. That's your, uh, that's your heavy... What is it? Heavy modular frame and fused frame factory. The office block, is what I call it. Because it looks like just a skyscraper of offices. Alright, this will be the last place to go to. So I wasn't really reading chat there because I didn't want to interrupt my flow. So I think I get the idea of that they look better if they're connected. This is my favorite factory build you've done. I love it. Time to make some food. See you later. Uh, it's obviously way too late, but thank you. See you. Oh, I'm so sorry that your message was deleted, Arif. Sometimes, if you'd write in all caps or something... Oh, yeah, you wrote DAMN in all caps. Holy call, this took all those minions working. Yeah. Sorry that you got... It was just stream elements as an automated thing. I need to... I always say it. I need to configure that. It's way too strict. It, it just sees someone writing all in all caps. And then it basically... Um, just times them out. But I think you should be back within a few minutes. Uh, 
WTF, darn. Anyway, here's the oil processing plant. Oh, wait, we'll let this train pull in naturally. Yeah, I guess, I don't know. It's not as complicated as it might seem. I mean, the belts do seem like they're complicated, but you're doing it one group of machines at a time, so it just kind of ends up stacking over and over and over each other to look more complicated than it is, I think. To an extent, anyway. Because I, I just work it out like, oh, okay, like, um... I normally just pick a number out of thin air, and I'm like, okay, let's make 20 heavy modular frames. So what would that take? And you just work backwards from that. That was my old computer factory. It's so small. The new computer factory is the one that's taking up this size of the map. <laughs> oh, God. And this is the old one. That's so funny. I decided to leave it there. There's nothing inside of it anymore, but it's like our old abandoned factory. It's just like an empty shell. I still don't make any computers, though, because I'm still waiting to get the new one up and running. And this is the old facility that's just modularly grown over time. All right, here we are. Oh, I think we had an autosave. Or I've crashed, one or the other. We'll see in a second. I was hiding the UI, so I can't tell. It feels like tea factory I visited in my hometown. You mentioned tea earlier, I think, as well, actually. <laughs> yeah, I think we're just in autosave mode. Just give it a sec. <clears throat> Come on, game. Power through it. Are we building this? Yeah, so... Well, this place grew over many episodes. I didn't build this all in one go. This one, anyway. Oh my god, why are we going so fast? <laughs> okay. You're picking up your petroleum coke, right? 9,684. So that's so much that... Yeah. I don't know. It still arrived at the other factory before it had run out. So I'm a bit surprised that it seems to be low. Because that's going to be 6400 now, and that's going to be 6400 once this thing moves again. Yeah. Hmm. Strange. This, uh, I think this place, it does go to one other station, doesn't it, first? Maybe that's just the aluminum factory requires petroleum coke. Maybe it's just taking a bit too much, and I haven't worked out my rates correctly. So that is the HMF train. Yeah, it goes to aluminum ex exports. Exports. Oh, to get the aluminum casing. Oh, so it doesn't send its petroleum coke anywhere else. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm getting really confused. So there's an aluminum factory train that does also come here. The oil plant exports, and it picks up petroleum coke. I think what's happening is sometimes... Is that it right there, actually? <laughs> it might be. Is there a way to check? Yeah, this is it, actually. So this is the aluminum one. So this also just picked up petroleum coke. And I guess, depending on which one gets here first, probably is the reason it's running out or something. Something like that, anyway. Alright, so just to show this place really quickly, there's not that much to show. There's just train stations up here. This is my oil, my crazy oil train. There's, uh... 13 freight train uh, freight carriages on it pretty crazy i move oil from is it coming now no that's the turbo train blue crater oil there it is slowly plodding along actually um it comes from all the way down here so oil extraction happens there there's like 3,000 oil per minute and the train makes its journey up here it has to make that journey in less than nine minutes otherwise power will shut down <laughs> everywhere um but yeah, that works. It works pretty well. It's never happened, so I assume it's all working fine. So just downstairs, station logistics is in this little side door. So we've, this is what I came here for actually. Some more fuel because we'd run out, and my jetpack has fuel again. And these are all the, um, the buffers for all that fluid to go into for a little while before the train gets here again. You need those buffers, otherwise it runs out. But it get it runs. It starts to run. Oh, it's actually filling still. Interesting. 
thing hasn't actually arrived. I don't even know how it's doing that. How it could possibly be filling, but okay. What about this one? This one's just full. Anyway, yeah, so I guess they have enough. So all of this travels downstairs. I don't have an easy way to get down there. We can walk around. Out this way, I think there's actually a door. And this is where the petroleum coke goes. Yeah. I guess it is kind of impressive looking back on all this. I've forgotten how much is actually involved with doing all this. Alright, so. Polymer recycling. We've got all these refineries making rubber. But the new factory we're building requires a lot of rubber. And this is where it all comes from. One of the many steps that was required before setting things up. So all this polymer is a byproduct of fuel. These are where all my fuel generators go. It's all my turbo fuel. It goes into all these. Yeah, this facility is huge. It just, it modularly grew. So I'd put down like 10 machines and I needed like 10 more. So the cool thing though, really, it would be that oil train. So there's four active pipelines. This pipeline is not active at the moment. There's extra oil if I need it. Why not multiple trains? Just fun, fun to have a big long train. Not efficient, no reason for it, just cool. I thought it'd be cool. Why would you ever move oil at all? Just build power right there, you know? You should never really put oil on a train. I don't think there's any reason to do that. Just make whatever you're making there and then move it if you want to move things. Um, because pumping liquid up to a train or moving it via train is just awkward. I've seen some people say, actually, one of the reasons you can move liquids via a rail is if you want to bring it up somewhere really high, you can put it onto a train and then the train can drive it up, thus saving the need to pump individual pipes. Now, I don't know how much you're really saving because a train takes power to move but I guess if you've got enough pumps you could save it by using a train instead anyway I just did it because that'd be cool so anyway we've got these four pipelines they all pump oil they're all the same amount of oil down we've all got valves to keep the direction going correctly and then yep they go into these things so this is my old signing system where I have this block of machines they're handled by pipe a fuel is being made at 400 polymer at 300 is the output uh, do I have... Oh yeah, it's on the other side that you see the number, the things. So that's pipe A, B, C, and D, and E. And then basically there's just four rows of these machines. So there's one row there, one row there. I think each one's doing 10. They're all doing the same thing. Which is 400 per minute, 300 polymer. Anyway, all this fuel that comes out of these basically just flows along to a very large area of generators. I was going to stack this place initially on top of each other, but people just said, why don't you just overclock the machines? That's what I did. So they're all overclocked to 300% or 250. And they're doing just fine. Although apparently they, this one sputtered not that long ago. But generally speaking, fairly consistent. It should be consistent. I mean, just, they're all handled the same way. So I don't know why one would stop and one wouldn't. But fluid is a little bit tricky. Sometimes it just isn't balanced correctly in terms of the game's logic. Um, but it's pretty rare. Anyway, so yeah, so that's kind of it. So I think that's really got to be it for this entire stream. You know, those are my best builds, the last, these last few. Everything after this is pretty basic stuff, I would say. Everything I made before it, I should say. Go back up to the station. I was going to see if we could see the long train. I think it's already gone, is it? Yeah, it's actually just arriving down there. Blue Crater Oil is pretty cool. I like that place. These other places aren't that interesting, though. The uh, transport hub is good, but these are my old factories that I've just left standing from the beginning of the game. Uh, yeah, so not much else to see, really. All right, that's going to have to be it for me. Um, so I'll be back again each Monday. I stream Satisfactory, at least currently. I'll let people know ahead of time if that ever changes. But right now, every Monday, I know today is Tuesday. I missed yesterday, so that's my bad. Um, I unfortunately had yeah, like a doctor's appointment that just took way longer than expected. Or d it wasn't even the appointment that took longer. It's just delays, you know, delays at the, the doctor's office. Um, what else? But yeah, that's it. I was just going to say thanks for all the support. Really do appreciate it. People dropping some fat stacks in the stream. So I do appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate people just being here, chatting with me. 
as well. Sorry, I don't get to read absolutely everything all the time. If you are unaware, this is part of a series. So this is episode 60 in the series. I try to make the episodes flow pretty well. So unlike my streams, I've got a bit more of a plan. I know what I'm going to show you. We have a problem at the beginning. We solve it in the middle. And by the end, you know, we see the results. It can be fairly satisfying that way. Most of the time, anyway. Some of these builds are getting so large that it's taking a little bit longer. But recommend checking out the series if you haven't seen it before. Streams are every Monday, as I mentioned. Appreciate the support. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Fast track into 85k. That's the next goal. I've never set goals before, but I'm setting a goal for this one. Because if I hit it at the end of the week, which is uh, very ambitious. But if I hit it at the end of the week, or let's say the end of next week-ish, you know, middle next week kind of territory... Uh, then I'll be doing daily videos for City Skylines, as well as all the stuff I do currently. So that'll be it from me. So thank you very much for watching. Remember, you can always join my Discord. If you want to chat with me, I'm, all, I'm, I'm in there, honestly, a little too much. Um, but I'm always there to respond to people and just chat with them if they have questions or they want to know how to do certain things for City Skylines, Satisfactory, Anno 1800, etc. Um, so yeah, that's it. And thank you, Ewar Enav, for becoming a Tribune channel member. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, that's it for me. Thank you very much. Goodbye.